The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app is coming soon. Star membership, high analysis, blunder database, private games, coin games, rating games, and much, much more. The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app is coming soon. Star membership, high analysis, blunder database, private games, coin games, rating games, and much, much more. The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app is coming soon. Star membership, high analysis, blunder database, private games, coin games, rating games, and much, much more. The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app is coming soon. Star membership, high analysis, blunder database, private games, coin games, rating games, and much, much more. The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app is coming soon. Star membership, high analysis, blunder database, private games, coin games, rating games, and much, much more. The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app is coming soon. Star membership, 
high analysis, blunder database, private games, coin games, rating games, and much, much more. The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app is coming soon. Star membership, high analysis, blunder database, private games, coin games, rating games, and much, much more.
mic too, making sure that I still have my voice meter set up. Cool. Looks good. At 11 o'clock, before we start play, I'm going to make an announcement about the structure for the quarter, semis, and finals. And that mark is out, and we're just going to have uh, David substitute. So I'm going to put the, the last one.
Testing one of the mics. Testing a mic. Testing a mic.
Yeah, that's. <laughs> <laughs> The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app is coming soon. Star membership, high analysis, blunder database, private games, coin games, rating games, and much, much more.
The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app is coming soon. Star membership, high analysis, blunder database, private games, coin games, rating games, and much, much more. The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app is coming soon. Star membership, high analysis, blunder database, private games, coin games, rating games, and much, much more. The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app is coming soon. Star membership, high analysis, blunder database, private games, coin games, rating games, and much, much more. The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app is coming soon. Star membership, high analysis, blunder database, private games, coin games, rating games, and much, much more. All right. Uh, hello, guys. Uh, I'm Michi Hitokageyama from Japan. Uh, so uh, after finishing the second days, uh, now my point is, I think, 11. Yeah, uh, after uh, round 10. So yeah, my position is OK, not great. But uh, at the same time, uh, my PR is not bad. So I'm going to. Uh, uh, want, want to get into the uh, quarterfinal with, uh, also with PR. That's what I'm thinking. And today's my opponent is ooh, <laughs> Zenik Zizka uh, from Czech Republic. Uh, he, he's one of the best players in the world. So I'm really, really excited to play with him. And I'm excited as well since last time we played was in Dubai, I think and we always get exciting matches so i'm looking forward to this one as well uh, regarding the, my results so far i've got 13 points also okay pr so worst case i will qualify for pr unless something really weird happened today uh, i think i've got 13 points i won all of my pr matches so was very happy about that and of course, there were some mistakes uh, I just could avoid, but now I can just still easily sleep. I mean, if I make them in the quarterfinals or semifinals, that will be difficult for me. But yeah, so this is it. Should we say it? And now, no. are, are you, you ready, ready to, to roll, roll the, the dice? dice? <laughs> Oh, 
All right, everybody. Nick Blazier back here with day three of the qualifiers for the 2022 UBC Contender Tournament. Uh, we've got here on stream Michihito Kageyama and Zdenek Ziska. Should be an exciting matchup. You just got to see them do their interview before before playing here. Um, original plan was to have Mark Olson and Ito play, but Mark has accident, uh, gotten sick, so he's not going to be able to finish out day three, unfortunately. First time we've had something like that have to happen. So we have an alternate filling in to play those matches to make sure they still get played um, so that we still have point results and PR results and things like that. Uh, David Klaus has taken on that duty for us today. Um, but yeah, so we kind of looked through it and decided we do a little bit of cherry picking with matches too, though, and uh, yeah, found this very nice matchup to play instead. So I'm excited to commentate this one. Um, they, they shared some of the point results with you already. Uh, looking over it, Wilson's working on the graphic for that. But we have three players on top at 14 points right now. Umur Aras, Ali Chatin Belin, and Sander Lyloff. Sander just dominating this tournament with a 2.21 best PR average overall across 10 matches too. Nine matches for him. He had a bye. Um, so he's showing up great. Um, filling out the points leaders are going to be Denyak actually at 13. And then Aikut and Ozan are hold 12 points. And currently the... PR results getting the wild card are Michihito Kagayama with 2.9 and Sebastian Wilkinson has a 3.29 squeaking in there. Um, so of course, uh, a lot can change over five more matches today. So nothing certain here, but some of those PRs too. Sander, I mentioned at 2.21, Ali playing out of his mind at a 2.25 average across nine matches as well. So some of those points leaders are winning all the matches and doing great there too. Stenyak with a 2.91 overall. Lots of great results so far. Um, so I'm excited to see how this last day plays out. I think the fatigue starts to set in quite a bit. See who we can get on commentary, if anyone. Um, I always like to have people join me over here, too. I'll keep looking for, for people with buys and such to come help me out. Uh, actually, I think Spence off next round. So maybe I can bring him in here, too. I guess Umur is off, too. So both of those are good options. I got, yeah, we're playing on the void board today as well. If you haven't seen that before, uh, this is the standard play too. You can get some different color options. This is the nice original black and white checkers on the dark black and gray. Um, Cause I think you're going to get started whenever they're ready in the room. Oh, they're, uh, I just can use catchphrase in there too. <laughs> I did share what the format's going to be for the finals. I posted somewhere maybe, but okay, here we go. I'll share that later. Some lull in the match. And we're opening with a 4 3 for Michi. Okay. Michi playing the bottom white checkers, Denyak playing the black on top. 2 1. After a down play, we're going to make an offensive play as well. 3-1 tends to be better to hit on your opponent from realizing by making the five point as well. At least you certainly have three checkers back to your two after the hit. Um, they're close though. And 4-6, that's going to hit the checker in the outfield. Of course, an option to hit on the 5-2, but better to send a checker back. A-6, that's going to hit on the 14, sure, sure. Lot hitting contest for now. Five two. Zdenyak doesn't miss yet. Okay. And we'll see who escapes this sequence with the tempo here. Four two. Looks like it's not. Oh, it can hit on the five as well. But oftentimes making a point is better than hitting loose. It does strip the midpoint here, so it looks like a little less value. Um, that's tricky. I guess Zdenyuk has quite a few. The the eleven point builder isn't the best builder. If you switch that to the nine, it would favor hitting to keep him from having productive rolls. Um, but so when we don't hit, then then we're going to get returned with. Yeah, that's this is a tough decision. They must be very close. This is of course the lower ply's preferred play. Six one is going to make the five point. 
definitely prefer having hit after that that roll. Three one, nice. Also going to make the five point. Two one looks like it can. All right, he got pointed on. So he's got to come in and splitting the 22 doesn't look like it accomplishes much more than making the 23. Um, so yeah, this looks pretty reasonable. We can't, we'd like to clean up the blot maybe. I guess it's only challenged by a strip midpoint, so you'd have to break his mid to hit. And also we just can't afford to have three checkers. Anymore. Uh, double twos. Okay, that's gonna solidify the prime. And now Michi has a pretty dominating position here. I think even with three checkers back, a cube should be incoming. And we'll see if Stenia can afford to play it. And Alice is showing us no already. But so I think what he's probably gonna spend time here tends to take a little more time finding the play number when you think what's gonna allow me to take. You know, I, I think he's trying to figure out what looks like a, the most playable position from here. But he's probably already got that in his mind that he's potentially done with the game after this roll anyway. Oh, asking about the format. Yeah, first three days are just five rounds of matches each day. And uh, you get one point for winning the match, one point for winning the PR battle in each match, and we're totaling points. So at the end of today, we'll have 14 matches for everybody and a point total and an average PR across the entire uh, entirety of that three days. The top six point leaders will advance uh, on to Thursday. And the two best PRs outside of those six players uh, will advance as well for eight total players for quarterfinals to be played from there. Good morning, everybody. Yeah, well, he thinks about this cube decision too. Let's see, what are, I guess it's just three checkers behind a prime. We don't have as much priming as well. I think I think he's feeling like he has um, life in this game because he still has, uh, Michi still has three checkers to escape. There could still be a priming game plan, but I feel like the five prime is just so much stronger of structure that you have to give it up here. Yeah, okay. He must have some bad rolls too. Wisely passes. He's going to point, okay. X1, okay, it's going to make the bar standard opening so far. Double fours, yeah, after he primes us, we love to step up and then 13 to nine on stacks, looks very strong. I guess uh, when you've already made your three point, the nine is less than you go. Um, so it is actually kind of closer to make the But, but it's the stack on the on the 13 is just so important to develop. It, it almost makes it tempting to just make the five instead of stepping up with the anchor. But okay, he goes with this to avoid those points that don't communicate well together. Five, two, I think Michi really needs to split now as soon as possible, but can't with that roll. Uh, once there's a few more checkers in the zone, it's gonna be very scary to do. And so, yeah, Zdenyuk does have quite an advantage here and can think about, do I have enough to cube? If he brings two checkers down from the midpoints and Michi is not able to do anything about that, has he lost his market? Uh, sixes don't play so well. So two down just slots back, okay, it's reasonable. And, and if he can dodge a six from Michi, yeah, this feels more natural. I'm a little bit scared to leave the direct six. Um, but he has the better board and can afford to play purely like that. The upside's very big, interesting and difficult decision. And, and so with only one checker in the zone, I think the urgency to split, especially now that the checker's up on the four, I think splitting back past the 20 is pretty essential. Um, oh, this is an interesting play to make a little bit of board. I was assuming that just two blots behind would be the best six to three, but I guess he thinks that it's Denyak is unlikely to want to hit with the two, but with the better board, I think he's hitting. Um, so I think this is a little too loose, maybe. I think, yeah, okay. And he's just going to make the board because um, 
It's too scary to split there because it's three so bad. That's interesting. I certainly would have, I think I would end up splitting and playing six to three. But I guess this is with that, that dilly builder on the four, maybe that just activates threes with that checker, creates too many good numbers. And this has turned into a little bit more of a blitzing uh, formation than a priming. Um, since that 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 dilly builder on the four is only likely to make the two right now, can make the ace as well if he splits. Another awkward six for his Deniak. Um, and look at this, now that he's kind of built this, this attacking structure, um, and doesn't have the spares on the mid as well. It's it makes more sense to continue than to slot the bar this time around. Okay. Three three. Looks like it's gonna block, create a ten point. That's a blocking point, and yeah, you can make a board point. So that's pretty nice. Why not? And okay, so he's gonna choose to keep his mid instead. It makes sense. It's difficult to release the mid, but I think blocking the it's scarier to release the mid when when your opponent might use the midpoint to to prime you in the outfield. But Zdeniak's position has gotten pretty stacky and unlikely to develop that way. So I think it's safer than usual to give it up and better just have the blocking point in front of his anchor. Uh, five four is awkward. Oh wow! I did not look at the back checkers. I thought with eleven in the zone, that's getting to be too much ammunition. But we have to give something up otherwise. So running out now keeps all our structure in place, only leaves a single shot in the outfield. We have a three-point board now like our opponent. Uh, this feels like a pretty natural play to do something like just clear a point in front. I think it's going to be tough to find, find better here. Oh, thanks, everybody. Hi. Yeah, understandable mistake there. Okay, fives. Those are going to be uh, a nice racing win pretty much for Zdeniak every time. So he's just going to do his best to break contact, whatever looks like it accomplishes that easiest. And with so much ammo in the zone, Michi can't really afford to split, and he can't really afford to sit back and play a 24-point game either. So the cube's going to come, and wow, it's pretty close, actually. It's... um. Zdeniak's position is awkward enough, but yeah, it looks like a pretty intuitive pass to me as well. All right, six away, six away. Five, four, splitting down. Ooh, nice response with the five three hitting two. Double four should be a nice entry. It's gonna make an anchor for sure. And then what can we do? We can make the two point, we can make the nine point. Um, yeah, okay, I see the top play there is switching up to the 20. It feels strange to do, but it does freeze all those checkers. Nothing else is so productive. We don't have time to sit back on on that 24, of course, either. Um, I'd almost be tempted to just run one, but I guess you prefer to have this anchor and then come off the 21 later, possibly. It just looks very strange to have so many checkers committed to that this early and just to tend to leave it. So we would have trouble not finding some sort of offensive play here, but we can see how stripped this is. I, I don't really know how he follows up after this play, probably by breaking the 24. So Maybe the best thing to do is to break that now. Um, yeah, for whatever reason, 24 to, to 16 feels like it accomplishes more in that goal. But okay, makes the nine very reasonable. Three, two, looks like it's going to hit. And then the two can step up instead of creating another blotter, it can come down and help build. Okay. Yeah, I guess the two is still blocked by the nine when you step up. You give sixes to attack a little weaker than usual. Uh, four, three. What are we doing with this? We can just come out to the bar. 
Yeah, everything's very stripped on the front side, which was the issue with the double fours play. So I think we just have to play with our last checker and back now. 3-2 probably makes the 11 twice. Oh, asking about the, the cups they're using there. Well, I mean, we I think we have the regular cups out there, but those blue ones you see are special ones that got printed with the UBC logo on it. They have each player has one with their individual name on it. Um, and yeah, it's 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 so we can rig the dice by players, of course, and make sure that the ones that we want to get to the finals make it there. So I'm glad to see them using those cups instead of the ones on the board. Ooh, wow, so many things to do with aces there. You'd love to hit two, but I think making these this perfect prime in front of four checkers is just very strong. And Michi's gonna have a cube to think about already, I think. Uh, what is six two gonna do? You can cover the five. We'd love to get a back checker moving maybe. Um, we're not down in a race and enough to, to hold both the ace and the four. So we've got to do something to improve that. We don't particularly want a fifth checker behind the prime. So it is tempting to do something about the blot on the 15. It's also very difficult to release the midpoint and, and potentially have another blot there to be hit back. But, but the gain of making the five does seem pretty big. Maybe an alternate safer play is to make the three, but I, I think the, the purity of the board here is just very nice. Or can you order your own design cup? I'm not sure we're actually like selling those or if FM is or anything like that. And look at this, this is uh, just a borderline cube for Michi. The, the strength of the position looks huge. I, I'm surprised this isn't bigger. And so by the numbers, you'd think that Stenyx is gonna snap this up, but I would find the take side to be more difficult with four checkers primed like this. But Stenyx does have the rack, the best three point board as anchors. Uh, if he's missed here, things are looking pretty good too. Uh, unless he makes the nine point, that looks pretty rough. I'm surprised it's only winning two thirds of the time with that much structure in front of all four of those checkers and no timing really for black. Um, but he hasn't solved the problem of escaping the back checker. Um, wow, and look at that, making the nine isn't even the best play. So you should just try to solve that now, keep all the structure in place and not make sure he doesn't run out of timing on the front. Um, if he is hit with a three or a one on the midpoint and has two checkers back, then there's definitely ways for this, this structure to crack on the front side. Um, surprising play to me, but he's looking at it and considering it. This feels like the natural thing to do. How do you pass up on a five prime? Very difficult plays. Uh, double fours. Okay, this is going to be too fast and nothing productive enough on the front side for Zdenyuk. Um, attacking looks, I'm looking for some sort of alternative because making the ace points looks very unattractive when you have four trekkers stuck behind a prime. Not sure that buys you enough time. Um, but everything else is going to place everything very deep too. So what is, we can slot the bar or the three and then come to the nine or the five. Then as soon as your opponent just rolls a six out, you feel very dead. So, so yeah, maybe your bet is to blitz, hope to roll a six and reestablish some outfield presence. And if he fans, he might buy a little more time by hitting on the midpoint too. I think, I mean, it's it's not a good situation for Zdenyek, but this seems like the best of bad options. Two one, two one hits and splits so that he has more checkers to get up to the side, okay. And so the plan is kind of working for Zdenyek so far. I think you have to come off the anchor, the 15. And then the four, I wouldn't necessarily be thinking about hitting, but maybe you need to buy the time again. You have no covers. Um, hearing probably hurts a little worse than, than being hit, as you can just jump out to the outfield. That's tricky though. Continuing makes some sense too. Outfield covered rolls like a two, five, two, six, three, four, three, five. Probably just wants to come out with one of the back checkers and now he double covers that.
This is a complicated game that they've gotten into. All right. Stedniak really wants to hit. 5-1 is not going to do that. I think, oh, there's a lot of aces that you'd love to play here. You can anchor. You can play 12-11 to to make sure you don't get hit with that double shot. So if you if you make the 12 to 11, where's the five? I don't see one. Um, so 22 to 11, at least you could play 11 to six and only deal with one blot in the outfield there. Um, it seems like the best option. I like how Zizi always like likes to put his head on the board when he has to think really hard. Very much see visualize the position. <laughs> Everyone's got their own unique character if you've ever like played any of them live. Okay, what is this game option gain? He's seeing that it maybe duplicates two, so it hit off the edge of the prime. That might be the idea there. Looking for for some class of numbers that he can gain on. Um, you know, this doesn't duplicate anything, but it, it does create a pretty nice asset. Um, make sure that you're not gonna get gammon quite as much. I think it's the just a prudent defensive decision, but but some of these other plays that he was looking at are are coming in pretty close, and they don't win more either, huh? Okay, they do lose more gammons. Surprised they're so close in a sense. Um, clock on the wrong side of the board. I don't know why. I've never had an opinion about that or understood how there could be a right side of the board. Wouldn't it be better to not be on the bear off side so that they can put their checkers in the tray over there? It seems like a good side of the board. Prefer it to the underneath side of the board for sure. Fives. Oh, and he doesn't anchor and he's going to be punished pretty poorly for that. Needs an ace to save a lot of gammons here pretty urgently. And he's going to get it. Okay. Five three is gonna hit in the outfield there. Okay, send a fourth checker back, and making the deuce point as well would be good. Um, might actually be a nice way to roll to do it. But yeah, Michi's gonna fight for that anyway. Make sure that he wins as many gammons as possible. Five one, I believe, is gonna cover. Yep, and then our ace. I don't know. Not sure which one makes most sense. I guess I don't think we need to have the bar point anymore. So seven to six bleeding seems pretty reasonable. Why not just start bearing in? That's what Michi's gonna find as well. No way to get off all the double aces hits. Maybe there is, but it's not worth it. What is this, five two? Yeah, my instinct is both from the back to get off that. Past the last point, why not? Oh, Michael's on the wrong side of the screen, yeah. Oh, this is against EU BGF rules, interesting. Why do you guys have a rule for that? That's wild. What is this, 3-1? Okay, stacking up the six is a little bit awkward. So he's gonna look for some distribution plays. Okay, six to three and five to four. It starts the nice mountain structure that Michi has written about, of course. Presume everyone's familiar with that book by now. It's most recent is back checker strategy, but all of his, they're great. I think books for all levels they just really clarify some concepts that even like top level players probably understood in some intuitive sense maybe but gives a lot of good rules in there and of course written in a way that's entertaining and digestible by by like beginning players too looks like the mountain it's pretty nice I like this back checker strategy too. I think I mentioned that earlier in the streams that uh, 
just class fines, like game plan decisions based on back checker status really helps out. It's a like, nice way to think about it. Uh, just finished uh, Zdeniak's book finally too. It was really useful in the sense too. I still, I really love that concept of, uh, calls it free, like running a back checker. That there are like a lot of situations where you feel odd about running a back checker and leaving a direct shot in the outfield, for example, because you might end up with a, the checker back again. You can't do it safely, but but there's the upside of sometimes it works, you know? Um, so choosing to leave a back checker back while you safety the outfield checker instead guarantees that you have one checker back. So it's, it's an interesting way to think about it. Obviously it doesn't apply to all situations, but um, his storytelling principle of just looking at where the match might go from there really helps you find those kinds of things. Uh, yeah, I think four to three seems right. Try to start to clear from the rear. If we have three checkers on the four, of course, six, five, six, four, five, four are the shot levers. Um, so if we advance, then six, three, five, three, four, three are the shot levers. So I'm not sure why he prefers this. He's going to have way less rolls that clear it, though, this way. I think it's kind of a big, no. Doubles is going to do, though. That transposes. All right, and he creates the odd checker distribution that uh, in the game in the end tells us makes it worthwhile staying back. Of course, it's score dependent and things like this. And also, Zdeniak doesn't have the perfect board. Um, so he might be more inclined to run off a backgammon, but gets the ace shot here and hits it. Okay. And now he has to play a tricky containment game with the ace point made already. That's going to be hard. Yeah, the two. So he brings another checker in range of making the three point, but he's going to leave the cost of a three six possibly. But happy he did it now. Because he's def desperately going to want to knock Michi off the edge. Now, do we have to, yeah, I think, is it loose hit six to three um, to keep the purity there? Or do we just switch shot at all? Um, I know if we had a prime developing, I'd feel like the loose hit was very clear, but this is strange with the, the ace maiden. They're very close. Okay. Nine to eight to avoid double shots. They're going to lose too many gammons, I suppose, by too much tempo. Five covers. Very nice. Okay. This is a huge step towards... Uh, towards the closeout and at least getting to bear off and stuff. <laughs> what do we have going on? I had Peter Hallberg just uh, uh, drop in. Tried to talk him into talking with us, but says no. Five one. Okay. Michi just trying to get get away with running around still. That's a great role for that. Oh, what do we do here? I think we probably I would be inclined to cover that checker actually and maybe step pass 24 to 22 or something like this to stay out of direct range but he's got a good idea there he just gives up sixes or sevens and eights with no real returns not great returns when he does hit it um cool the problem when he makes it he's still gonna give up eights and if his opponent gets by he doesn't have the additional contact to potentially staying on the 24 so it's Like, at least it communicates with that checker that might be hit on eights. Um, probably going to have a direct shot if he does happen to get by the checker eight, eight away. So it feels like it sees the most of the board right here. 
but all very close and valid options. It looks like it would be interesting to see what they are on plus plus. Oh, I missed it. Two by ZZ. My bad. Okay. So the checker on the eight is going to get hit, and the checker on the ace is going to get hit too. Okay. So you could add one in the air as well. That's an interesting little swing. Uh, misses the ace. Now there's going to be back in. He's going to have to dodge a set now and then also roll a set. Well, I guess Michi could just not roll an ace and leave a double shot, um, but he doesn't. And a set's going to be, okay, so he gets one checker out, and now he needs Michi to roll an ace to avoid a backgammon for the match. What a sequence this is. Rolls it, and Michi is going to win uh, a match point on that one. Wow, what a crazy finish. Uh, on the lower analysis, Zdeniak looks to have won the PR points uh, with the 3.08, but of course that can change quite a bit, especially in a short match with few decisions. Um, wild that's the first exciting bg i've seen joked about it all match but but real risk after that but that's, that's crazy stuff pretty solid match by both i felt like michi got uh situation very understandable mistakes both played the cute perfect good match to them okay we're going to sign off a little bit and we'll have our next match at 1230. That is, we'll have results on that by then. Ash playing, and I think we can probably get Simon and on commentary for that with me too. So we'll be back soon.
Ja. ja. All right, I'm here after the match with Danik Ziska and Michi. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, that was a wild way to finish. I don't think that's my first of the weekend that I've saw a backgammon decide it. Six away, six away, very efficient. Well done, Michi. Um, but I, I saw you two, uh, and well done on the PR point for Zdenek, we think. You know, we'll see on the plus plus rollout. Um, but yeah, I just figured it, you guys saw you guys discussing positions afterward, wanted to get your takes on some of those. What were some of the interesting decisions in that match for you that you were reviewing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that match was too difficult for me. Yeah, yeah I made a couple of mistakes. Yeah, yeah. Some of those holding game plays I thought were very tough, the split or not kind of decisions and when to run. Um, yeah. That's correct, yeah. yeah. I had the anchor on the opponent ace point. Yeah. And I couldn't leave it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Very tough one. Um, I thought there were some very interesting cube actions for you, but um, I don't know, what stuck out, stuck out for you in that match? Yeah, uh, well, cubes were in super interesting. Since the first game, Mitch actually told me that he was thinking about too good, and then I was just rechecking it. It's a really fast because it was just so complicated, and I know from my previous matches, I have had the similar position where I just acted quickly, and it was like a hundred blunder, so yeah. just wanted to make sure, and yeah, still wasn't sure, but well. Seemed like a pass, and then that bad game. I actually thought it could be. It was a good cube, yeah. which you gave me, and yeah, I would have probably waited, which would be a mistake. But yeah, uh, that bad game was just crazy with the checker play afterwards because <laughs> I chose to not to make the anchor, which was weird, but at the same time, kind of thought it made sense. It was a small mistake, I think, like 30 or 40 or something. But uh, I mean, because I just had so not that many decisions, I figure it will it will be either over 10 or or well, just like this, something <laughs> like that. So happy at the end, and yeah, just fine, feeling fine. Yeah, that anchor play was a very interesting one. Just uh, then the the follow up with the fives to really punish yeah. it right away. Right? <laughs> what a nightmare! Um, but all those plays were close too. But yeah, that was. Very exciting games. Thank you guys so much, and good luck in the rest of the tournament. Cheers, right. Nick. Thank right. you. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. <laughs>
Hello, <laughs> welcome. Uh, I'm Sebastian, playing the UBC. Very much looking forward to next round. Things have not been going so well so far, but delighted to be in Istanbul. And I've just had the pleasure to meet this gentleman here. And uh, yeah, excited to be playing. دوستان عزیزم وقتتون بخیر در مورد امتیازها شرایط خیلی خوبی رو ندارم ولی خب سعی میکنم به حال این چند تا بازی باقی مونده رو به هر حال بهتر بازی کنم این فرصت رو هم دارم که با سباستین بازی داشته باشم ایشون از بهترین های انگلیس هستن و برای من افتخار است که باشون بازی کنم He uh, says hello to everyone and uh, says that uh, I'm, uh, I'm not really in a good shape and couldn't uh, make uh, enough uh, points. But actually, it's my pleasure to play with Sebastian, one of the strongest players of the UK. And I hope I, I, I uh, make uh, a good game. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.
Oh, I was muted. I said some absolutely ri ridiculously wise things. So this is Simon Barquette, just taking over from Nick, who's going to be back in a second. Um, I was talking about Seb having an anchor. He loves an anchor. Um, double five, just come all the way around because you want to keep the eight points. So you don't want to do, mess, do, do anything that messes with your structure. Um, He plays it. I get easily confused. It's a tiny screen that I'm looking at. Five three is like eight to three, probably. No, it's not. Wow. Okay. I would have played eight to three. Yeah. The, now I look at eight to three. I don't, just don't like the look of it. I mean, rather, aside from being able to give you a a logical explanation it just doesn't look right to have these three three stacks of three so i would take that back and play 13 8. i think there's a strong likelihood that seb's going to hit the clock no oh he likes it good okay so the man on the three is like a bit burnt you know you can only use him to to hit on the deuce the ace or slot the deuce or slot the ace Okay, so Arash has obviously got an advantage. You shouldn't double. Okay, you should double. Why? Okay. Why is this a double? 70% wins, 40% gammons. So like market losing theory, if he rolls a 6-5 and then 7 rolls a 3-1 makes the 5 point, presumably that's a pass. Okay, so it's the loveliest cube that you can receive as white here. Very easy decision. And what you want in the UBC is easy decisions. You don't want to have to be struggling with 6-3. Uh, Ido Levy has just walked in. Are you going to join me on the... Uh... Ah, you can join for a bit. Um, I think you just have to unmute it. Yeah, there you go. I think everyone can hear you. All right, Nick's in here. We were wondering where you... Oh, he was just outside, so he'll be ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that was short-lived. Short okay, Ido joined me for a bit, but Ido is like, was the number one. This is mine, this is mine. Yeah, 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 you do it. Thanks for Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that, everyone. Where the fuck were you? Uh, what was that? Where were you? Having some sort of political discussion with the. Yeah, so, well, I mean, there's some concern over having to swap the button parts. Ah, that's why Ali was putting on his, like, serious. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, look, zero, one point. Okay. That's about your average, right? <laughs> like yeah. somewhere between one six and zero. <laughs> the cube has been turned. I mean, it's an easy game. You love this kind of game. Just clear the nine. We'll see. On here, Nick. What, what microphone's talking about here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, uh, I was no swear is on the galaxy, Genital Simon. <laughs> it's not set for children. Sorry. Yeah, and he loves a simple game. I mean, he, he we, we've we've set up all night because we're sharing a room. We discuss what kind of backgammon game he wants, and he wants a.
He's number seven on Gat. We can check, I can check this now. He's like Arash, Iranian flag. Must be him. Arash, Arash F. So he's like number seven on Galaxy. But I was thinking this guy's going to play two in the match, you know? And then he doesn't. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, maybe you've got difficult decisions. I think he's come out as a 5.2. Yeah. I've already memorized the entire list. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think, I mean, a big thing too, I, Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if they can. I mean, maybe they're going to both play under one here. This could be. So if I. Maybe we've got it now. Um, I will. Let's see. Can you guys hear us? Yeah. Let's get. Uh, we'll get some feedback in the chat as we go. But I think we're good now. I think I see. I see the voice bars going when I'm talking. So I'm going to pause. You yeah. talk now. Okay. I will talk. I think that's. I think you fixed it. Heck yeah. Man, I am a wizard of uh, of technology. I don't know why it Did always sort of why it breaks. <laughs> why it, it's like there's always a, an issue that has to be because I use OBS as well. Yeah, it doesn't not... seem like there should be, and then suddenly right. it's sort of this doesn't work or that. This is uh, by the way, like levels different than we're using a Zoom call, and so I needed a way to get pipe two microphones into that. So I have to use voice meter to control that and create a virtual audio input. How do you like that? So who's the, the Zoom call is, is uh... Wilson. Ah, OK, right, 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 right. I get it. No joining our, uh, our video. Hi, everybody. Cool, we got it fixed. Thanks. Sorry, y'all. All kinds of things. Uh, now that we have it fixed, I'm going to take a quick break. <laughs> OK, really OK. This game, but I'll be right. So Nick has, uh... Nick has got some really important business to attend to. Why are there only 135 people here? This is Sebastian Wilkinson we're talking about. the top United Kingdom player by a country mile. Backgammon impresario, former magician, former um, Cambridge punt man. And for those unfamiliar with what with punting, it's uh, it's like you have a big, large stick and a canoe kind of thing, and you push the stick on the bottom of the little river that you're rowing on. Well, you're not rowing, and then you punt along. And Seb used to do that a bit like the uh, the gondolas, the gondoliers in Venice. Uh, no, Arash isn't Arif. Arif is Arif. Arif is Arif, and Arash is Arash. James. Mm. That's very clear to me. Arif, <laughs> Arash is. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad taking I got a, back in time Taking for a that direct stance. I take a very no-nonsense <laughs> approach on the mic today. Um, I'm going to be tough with you, uh, James. Arash is Arash, and Arif is Arif. Um, Arif has actually got like five or six usernames. Just sort of... Oh, he hasn't got six. Okay, so <laughs> two nil. This is the new earth board, by the way, with uh, slightly different wood, a little bit joint, different joints and a different a little, hinge pattern. Is that a little plug? You, is that a plug? Someone asked about this. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Oh, also, I'm sorry, sorry. Also, absolutely. <laughs> I was like, sorry, I'm engaged with our users. Sorry, I thought you had <laughs> to, like, every few seconds. <laughs> I didn't... 
required. So are we anchoring and hitting or hitting? And he goes with anchor right away. Okay, seems reasonable. So Arts is, I'm not sure who you are, Arts. I recognize your name for sure. So it'd be nice to see you. Yeah, he'll see us, but we want to I see just him. registered for so the I tournament know. as well. Which oh, is cool. cool. Yeah. Okay. I'm excited to play that too. Well, then you yeah. better not make the finals of the UBC. No, no, no. I won't be making the finals. <laughs> okay. Hi, Oliver. Okay, so sixes. This is going to even out the race, but not need to leave. So he needs to keep some sort of presence behind, I think. Um, interesting. Yeah, the, the first option of yeah, keeping the 15 right. and the 17. You're right, but he went. Yeah. They look pretty close. They're though. playing a point eight and a point six. So I, wow. Okay. Yeah. Sixes is. So what's the race? Okay. Seb's going to be up in the race. So this is definitely a contender because if you stack them all on the eight, you're going to have six men on the eight. You don't want that. Yeah. It's going to be hard to come in. So is there, if he counted the race and found out he was down or up significantly, would he make a different play here? Because if he was down, he would keep the anchor, but he can yeah, probably yeah, see yeah. that. Yeah, but he's, he's 22 pips up after the roll. He's so just he's, visually he's looking. Just gonna... This is tough to do because we don't want to leave a shot when we're leading in the race. We just want to come home to a easy cube, hopefully. So it's, it does look awkward in that kind of position to make the deuce, though. So he's looking at make, leaving a shot, which I don't think he will do. Yeah. Simon Berry says uh, is asking how 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 I am, <laughs> and yeah, Istanbul is lovely. We haven't really seen much of it. Re literally been in the hotel, which is next to the old airport. We went to the market that you guys didn't. Ah, uh, yeah, we went old. to the market. <laughs> um, I don't know if Seb has a nickname on Galaxy if he plays on there. You know? Yeah, my I don't know if he wants. He's very quite sweet. So it's uh, okay. It's Wilco. And he plays under a, like a Panamanian flag, flag, or a Costa Rican flag, or something. To okay, but I guess from you can figure out Wilco from Wilkinson. Oh, I actually thought I might have thought Wilcox Snellings. I don't know who he is. Ah, yeah, yeah. Wilcox plays under Wilkes. Ah, okay, clever. I wonder if I ever played him on there. I probably didn't know if I did. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now that we've made the deuce, the eight doesn't communicate with it as well, so it feels kind of nice to break and make a point. Uh, leaving the fly shots is scary leading in the race, though. Um, so prefer a safe play, but there just isn't really anything. Yeah, out there. exactly. What, it was exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. And now, is this enough to cube or think about? You've got a shoddy, like gappy board, but you're two nil down. Yeah, but if it's in the race, it feels like for money. Would you send this cube? Ah, is he that far up? Yeah. Oh, I think probably has to double, seeing that most of his roles are going to play fine without yeah. even looking at them in detail. Sure, just the race is fine, and I think okay, um, it's not a double. I don't. It's super see. close. I'd be happy to send it, and I think I mean the take feels fine with the better board I, on Arash's side yes. and enough racing chances, but it I, feels like a nice one to send. I don't in. fully understand. I mean, I, I I see the strength of Arash's home board and the nine and the eight points kind of all in a row. Mm -hmm. Um. So is that, you reckon, maybe it's not a double because it's dangerous if you leave something, the likelihood of leaving shots against the strength of the opponent's ball? Yeah, I think it's not completely resolved. There's still, it's hard to imagine too many market losers. Maybe his sets don't really play all that cleanly here, you know? It's not like, a, I think actually a big part of it is having the 14 point in, in addition to the 13 midpoint. There's still a little work to do to clear that too. Um, oh. Go ahead. No, I just remembered. Um, <laughs> I did this in Marbella. So, uh, yeah, can everyone just go over to Backgammon Academy and subscribe? That's it. Thanks. Oh, yeah. And then we'll start talking again. We'll wait. We're going to watch. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been telling people to uh, like and like the video and subscribe to the Galaxy channel either. That's always a good thing to it's do. It's just phenomenal, the, like, the production, the... Oh, thanks, man. It's phenomenal. Yeah. No, it's not. It's, you're not responsible. Oh. Thank <laughs> no, you, Wilson. <laughs> no, I'm being, yeah. The commentary is on point. It's, it's average, but the production is really there. <laughs> the, the, graphics, the play has been pretty good, Simon, from what I've seen. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm a, I'm a steady... You refer, I don't know if you're referring to me. Or other, the, other, the thing is, I looked at the list today, and I noticed that like the PRs aren't really, really low. They're like... Some of them are. There's, it's an outliery kind of set. I yeah. mean, it's pretty crazy to see Ali and Sander at 2.1. Yeah, think, it's averaging. beautiful. Yeah, I love yeah. to see that. That's wild. Um, 
but yeah, we are seeing quite a few people up in the four to five range that maybe usually average a little lower. Than yeah, that, yeah, so. yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I don't know when people start thinking about stuff, whether or not they're thinking that they know they're going to pass, but they're just checking. So mm -hmm. I don't know this guy. I can't, obviously I can't see his, well, I can't see his body language enough to be able to judge. Yeah. Even if you could judge from someone's body language, whether they were committed to passing, but just checking. Yeah. Because this can never be a pass, right? Even though obviously we've got the down eleven pips, it can be for sure. If like the it, you just need if white's board is better than greens, then I think it's uh it's probably like borderline pass, uh, and at the score maybe more clear because of that, you know. Right. So um, I think seeing that takes a little bit of time. I guess the surprising thing to me is like you're you're allowed I to figure that get... out on on your turn too. You know, uh, yeah, I so. guess I take back what I said because he is two nil up, yeah. right? And that complicates mm -hmm. complicates it a lot because you you do want to. Yeah, I think this slotting wanna... play I like better. I guess he's worried about wanting to take advantage of fly shots next roll. Uh, so he, he plays tight. Was, was it a good play? He could play thirteen to ten, nine to four instead. They're they're close, of course. You know. Okay, so that just makes the bar. So every yeah. everything is going. And I think making the five point and then Arash not doing a whole lot was probably enough for market loss. So I think Seb is probably glad he sent the cube at this point. The five point was a big roll though. Yeah, that really filling in that gap is huge. And then of course the, the bar behind it, it's gotten tough. Um, the two six now, so we can step up and park there. We can run out. I, I don't think we want to run given the race, um, but we are suffering more from priming and running out of time on the front side. So it feels like yeah, like this is more of a priming position a tricky, than an attack position. Sometimes this two up is like when you go to the gap towards the gap in the in the home board. It's tricky for the brain to yeah because you're like always committed to staying back. I'm behind in the race, so I stay yeah. back. You're and certainly you going to lose more gammons by stepping up, um, but you put some pressure on the outfield. The next roll for Seb is Wait, very likely sure to clear the fourteen that? or the are thirteen. Are you sure about that? Yeah, you're right. That I'm going to lose more gammons by stepping up? I'm pretty sure, yeah. I mean, we, oh, we invite no, 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 being no, no. attacked, right? So I, can't I, I, read think the, I honestly can't read the figures. I th oh. Yeah, you do. Yeah, I think you do. That should be the risk of it. Um, also, we're not doing as much with the but back checkers it. to take crossovers, but he finds a play, yeah, very good. Did and it. look at the pressure it puts on this play. Now he has to hit loose when he yeah, probably would have been more comfortable to, just playing two again, down from the 14. Like, of course we would all make this play, but it's not... You don't want to have to take a risk here. Yeah. It gives them a lot of winning chances too, right? You can just throw, oh, sorry. Um, Seb, yeah. One, two is a nice shot for now, This is the only way you lose the game is if you have to hit. But mm -hmm. you have, clearly you have to hit because you can't play safe. So. It's probably the only way you win a gammon too. Exactly. Yeah. Four seems like it must be a nice response. Okay, we fixed that gap on the 3.2. Uh, the four, I think, just comes around. And Seb is back in the driver's seat to win a gammon, even after that little bot hitting contest. Entering with an ace is nice just to be able to safety that nine point blot and start getting checkers closer to home. Uh, of course, if Seb can, can close him out before he can move the outfield checkers any further, then should be a big favorite to win a gammon. Picking up another checker is nice too. I presume this just comes into the five. I'm not really ready to leave four blots all over the place. We can still be attacked and run into trouble. Are you, are you so I have to ask, are you looking at the panel before you? Uh, typically, no, it depends. Did, I don't know if you noticed this. We have dice rolls on the bottom. In the yeah, 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 yeah. You can't see them. But... We want to know if you're cheating. <laughs> That's what I... <laughs> <laughs> it's easier to just look at the board and try to like talk about what you'd be thinking and then it's look over fun. there. It's more fun, yeah, 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 because yeah, otherwise you spoil <laughs> it for yourself. Mm -hmm. It depends, though. Eventually, I want to look over at the answer and and try to understand why that would be the play if I wouldn't have intuitively looked that direction. You know? Yeah. Stays out again, so we could look at. Okay, what did he? He broke the midpoint and left blots around. Okay, so. So even this, I wouldn't really know how to play. Threes are slotting the back of the prime is a theme. Getting the back checker moving seems like a theme too. I'm no, it's not, not sure even if we're in the top six. Yeah. Um, I would be scared to stay in there, but I 
it, and then I tell myself, it, I would think about playing to the 18. But 21 to 18 doesn't really reduce shots from the bar, though. I mean, I guess when they hit, you have more returns. See, he but, does it. At seven, I have, a, I mean, obviously lots of backgammon players do very similar things. But yeah, I tend to find, I've played a lot with him, that yeah. he makes similar plays. And the a, a reason I come out to the 18 is because I don't want to get stuck. Mm, yeah. But it's not even... You've got time. You're putting more pressure, like a little bit more pressure on that blot. You get returns when... When someone hits you from the bar, you know, like I think, but this is just thematically when you have a five prime, you love to, this 10 to seven is very nice because it attacks the ace when he enters and it also allows you to just make yeah, the bar point cool. have a single Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Honestly, I, I, I sometimes don't think about the fact that the, the man on the seven can be directed towards any man on the 24. Yeah. And that's yeah. a big deal. It is. It's I not tend like to focus to, on yeah. the one six. Mm -hmm. This ace seems fine. I don't think there's a big swing on the ace. I guess if you play... Five to four, you get double threes to close to. So there could be some tactical reason to do that. But oh, 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 okay. oh, 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 because he has to make the board. I mean, again, this is not a decision you want, but like a the classic dilemma. Oh, look at you this. You can I'm, hit twice. I'm never fine. Okay, I did see twice. this. I did see this play picking it up. If you hit twice, you have to pick it up. So how bad is just making it? I would instantly just be making it, and I was surprised to look at the top play and see the hitting twice. I forgot about the blot on it. <laughs> yeah, I That's saw amazing. It. Um, you do need this extra time, though, I guess. He's like... Uh, well, he see, when you don't hit two, it's the problem is that he hits you back with one, four, one, six, two, four, two, six, double two, double one. Mm -hmm. So you've got all that. But the computer thinks... It's not so many. It's like the play you want to make for like... To make to simplify the position is just to make the point. It makes it easier to play from there on in. Like yeah, when you hit sure. twice, you've got this gap on the four point. You're always like, yeah, how do we follow uphill. up on this? But I guess the actually the other part too is whenever he enters with an ace or deuce and he doesn't hit, he can clean up the blot on the bar too. So this guarantees a six shot next roll too, which is pretty huge for winning this game. I mean, really. So good I see play. the tactics of that. Really yeah, good play. Great find. I would have trouble with that. A cheeky point seven. Mm -hmm. At 0.7. And it's going to be tough to find a recube at this score. Does um, he get rewarded with a nice, this is difficult. Is he going to lift again, I presume? Uh, I wouldn't want he to started it. I wouldn't want to make this play. I would get this wrong. Well, if we got it right last time and found this theme of buying time to roll the six, then I think you'd have to do it again. This Why is... would you? What's changed? You don't like the fifth checker on the three? I, I mean, maybe I would make it, but I would be very, very uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. I don't like five checkers on the three point. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Looks nice. Effectively deployed to attack. The yeah, it's very nice. possible. I can make a big <laughs> blunder there. No, I think just, uh, of course, you have to respect the five-point board and being hit is just so costly. Um, this one's easier for me to find than the last one, for sure. Yeah, I think the, the key is to look at what, what numbers your opponent now has to hit you, and it's only double, like two, double one, mm -hmm. and double four. So it's like restricting his, his good numbers. Yeah. So look at it that way, then it makes it easier to... Oh, sixes is huge. So we're hitting for sure, and then do we yeah, make the now deuce with it, e or no? Now he gets an easy play. You know, you see X. Is this should... easy? Yeah, this yeah, is, yeah. There's so many. To the last one. I mean, you're going to make the deuce, right? I think so, but I don't know what the stack of three. That's confusing to me. And then you probably now we have a dead checker. You can either pay off to double one or not. I mean, I suppose yeah. you're going to play to the seven point. But I'm yeah, I don't. Sure. I think not paying off to the double one seems nice. The fourth checker, I don't know how much that's going to gain us. So I'm inclined to get off the eighteen. Yeah, that's and imagine. Yeah, I mean, there is sense to not being hit with. It's like the only number that. It's like two percent, two and a half, whatever. It's two point seven percent. It's not insignificant. <laughs> like big swing. Uh, did he just roll it? No. <laughs> Well, of course, okay. now, of course, you don't Arash roll basis. I'm sorry. So that's like that's an easy decision. We can agree on that. Oh, because you can make the point. You can deploy all the checkers. Interesting. No. I don't know if that would have been easy for me. I would have thought about hitting, but yeah. Oh, so he does it again. Okay. Eyes of Shiva forever. Um, I like 12 to 10, of course, to, to aim at the four point along with the hit. And then the last one, 15 to 16. I don't know. Oh, so 12, much. 11. Oh, you get double uh, sixes. the switch. Yeah. Oh, the switch. Okay, so you get. Do you really? He, I mean, I had an inkling that this guy plays. Like you can just see the last this these plays. He's nailed them all. He's Interesting. Played. Yeah, yeah. I believe that this is evidence, and it's sufficient evidence to show that he can play. Yeah. Really, really well. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, I wouldn't have found that switch. It seemed like we could get enough aimed at it otherwise. If you play 17, 16, and 11, 10, you get double sixes with that too, and you still have three aimed at it. So interesting. I did, but I, if you don't make it, it's nicer to have a, a higher point open. It'll eventually make this easier to clear too. So good find. So the thing is with, you know, with this format UBC or BMAP is that being on the bar is very much a mixed blessing because, you know, if you're not sure that you've made a, some good plays up to the point that you're on the bar, then it freezes yeah. you and you're frozen. Yeah, yeah. And like, you know, let's say you're on a four and a half and you're like not getting any decisions. And yeah. Seb is a very much bit tuned into that and he'll be thinking about that right now, the fact that he's not... Mm. getting any decisions and he doesn't know he's playing a one yeah and to be honest even if he knew he'd probably want to be playing a zero a zero yeah. point five that's how <laughs> uh i mean he's got high expectations he finds the pick and pass i think that makes a lot of sense here nice to prevent the anchor the four two can make it the distribution's a little off though six five sixes fives all even yeah, shot it's not, next a, it's not a given and so it actually was better i think the top you spot yeah. everything there we go. Well, it was clearing, just clear. I think clearing. eight to six, seven to three, is what it said? Oh, four, one, we clear now instead of coming in. Interesting. I would have just played in on this roll. Um, fine opportunity tactically, though, I think. I mean, I just played a match where I had so many decisions sort of like that. All sorts of, they were, every roll was a decision. I just <laughs> didn't have the time to, to yeah. think of it. And then you realize, like, oh, my God, my PR must be... Yeah. Unless I, you know, you, sometimes when you play speed, you luck out, but. That's the the solution to me is just always play speed. And like, sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't. Yeah. It's fine. This format doesn't really reward that though. That's it. <laughs> but sometimes there is something that you, you won't see if yeah. you just give it five seconds and it can be. Yeah, yeah. It can be sizable. Very true. 10% BG, did they say? Okay. I believe that. I didn't notice in the numbers. It's got to be high. BG for the match. That'd be painful. No, there's no, there's very few. Yeah. Uh, I, it's really, it's, it's good for the conversation. Five percent BG. Five percent. That's this. This effect. If he rips nothing. two, then he's up to six. It's so <laughs> I think he's actually going to consider so that too. To like, <laughs> to basically, back he needs yeah. to fan on the lot when the guy's down to a one point board. He needs to fan on a one point board, and then, even then, if you've got yeah. three checkers, we saw the last match. Shot. Um, Zdeniak and Michi ended at a six away, six away cubed backgammon. It was fun. That happens every now and then. Ah, uh, oh, right, okay. 2-1. <laughs> Gets us a roll closer to so take even off. So yeah. now... Yeah, it's still like 6%, very low. I just, I think the conversations with Seb afterward are much better if he loses the back here. <laughs> Yeah, when he rolled the, <laughs> that's my seventh pressure. <laughs> I wish I could do a better one, but it involves somehow. No, I mean, I'm not. The, the backhand's getting pretty thinks, likely here. I realize with impressions, one always thinks that one's impression is better, much better than. <laughs> is this how we get here? I, th I think. Oh, did, is it a fan? Uh, three one. I mean, gets. Uh, he needs a set to get off, right? So it's got to be fours. Yeah. Is night wait? Yeah, I don't see double. Ah, uh, twos gets off here. Threes gets off here. Yeah, you do get more off here. Okay, oh, so you got to take a checker out. Okay, yeah. So he finds the best play. What? He's gonna get backgammon for the match. Uh yeah. He reduced his backgammons to eighty-eight point four percent, though. That's it. He's just got to roll twos or better, man. Do you feel this is backgammon? I don't know. It feels. No, oh, he fought for it. Okay, so he played one point two. <laughs> Here's what I think goes through Seb's mind: is how like it's all pointless. There's too much. It's all luck and backgammon. You know, like you make good decisions and you just get yeah. backgammon. You'll never yeah, be yeah, in yeah. a situation again. I don't know I what think the point of be, this or life is. Somehow I lose the PR probably on one point four three, one point six. No, that God. was very precisely played by both of them. I would. Oh, have, that's I don't wild. Think it, I don't think it's it a really such, good match. I don't think it was like a difficult, difficult match. Yeah. Oh God. Um, All right, uh, Sub Zero with the is. life tilt. I got him. <laughs> here he is. Come tell us about it. I'll, I'll hug you while you talk. 
Well, I was I was thinking I might actually save the backgammon there at the end. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You got the extra roll, right? I or might two? Have been, extra I might two have been a favourite for a roll or two to, to <laughs> save. Yeah. I managed to get double yeah. two. Did you say that must have been a good play? <laughs> no, but I, I think we were talking about how it's, it's like 6%. It's so hard to win a backgammon here is what Simon was telling us. <laughs> and then also... <laughs> Isn't that what you said when I lost the backgammon <laughs> the last time? <laughs> I was like, okay, a bit of Crawford, love a bit of Cindy, then we're going to get, you know, we get some games in. <laughs> Right, you need you need more, to, yeah, because it impacts all the other decisions. Yeah. It's yeah. not just this match. And I knew that he was obviously making no mistakes because he just like forced to win. Yeah. I mean, yeah, <laughs> he was making some good plays in there, the for switches sure. and things like that too. Yeah, 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 for sure. He noticed that he had to hit and stack like the three point awkwardly. Couldn't let me yeah. enter and like yeah, hit the him and make the six prime. That was a very sharp. It looked play. ugly, but that was like effective. And yeah. Yeah, really well. I felt like the aces I would miss the two one after it's kind of more understandable once you've committed to that plan, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That was yeah, tough. Well, there you go. I liked I your cube in the match too. I think it was like a hair early, technically. <laughs> yeah, it felt a hair early. Then I yeah. felt like good pass. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And you very well might. at two nil down, I'm often surprised at how early you can give it compared to money. Yeah. Um, and he thought about it afterward too, you know. So maybe it was like. Right. Something there. I definitely have some market losers. Even after three one, it's still like a pass. Maybe that's what I thought. Yeah, I thought after you make the five back. point, that's good. And your structure is better, and it's hard to take it down in ten bips in a in a race when you have a single checker back. But yeah, great match. I think we'll drop off here. Um, I don't know if we'll do any official interviews, but tough luck. Yeah, yeah, he played great. Well done finding a back, Thanks. Evan. No, oh, I was so excited. I was like, great, I'll get to come on the earth board on the stream. Enjoy this. Soak up the experience. Hope it lasts a long time. Well, it's free till after lunch. So if you want to go two sit games? by for the next like two hours, you can, you can do that. <laughs> love <laughs> it. Love it. All right. Fair enough. All right. Thanks well, so much, Sam. The beautiful backgammon fans at home. I hope everyone's doing well and enjoying another magnificent day of streaming. Oh, nice. With the, with the big man, Nikki B. Blazer. We've maybe got here. plus plus confirmation of 1.8 to 0.75. Amazing match. I think that's the best one we've seen yeah, on the stream. Yeah, he did great. Crazy stuff. All right. Good stuff. All Take right. it easy. Sam. Take it easy, guys.
Hi, everybody. Again, with round 13, it is now coming up shortly. Uh, we've got a great matchup here in round 13. It's going to be Dirk Shiman and Kageyama playing. Uh, we've seen them on the stream already. So. We also have a leaderboard on uh, Catholic Technology right now. Um, and I'm really excited to see the final pairing for the last three matches of the qualifiers because just about everyone up in the top of that, that leaderboard is we got some great matchups. Um, in round 14, we're going to have Thomas Muir against Ali Chuti. Uh Thomas is trying to close up there. I think he was leading after day one, possibly. And Ali uh, playing under a two-point as of the end of day two. In the final close up round, round 15, will be Amur Ross, I think our current points leader. Under Lyloff, under Lyloff currently with just less PR than uh, the average PR race right now, 2.2 and 2.25. For this. Um, that's wild stuff. Um, we've seen some kind of higher averages across the board from some of the players that we've um, you know, kind of Other exciting thing for these last few matches, I have a ref over here too that's going to join me on uh, the room there. Um, it's been really fun to have all the uh, grandmasters playing on their place. Thomas, I would have to talk about this. Um, yeah, I'm getting really excited for. For the end of the qualifiers here. Um, that's right. I didn't get around to sharing during the last match that our. Well, I'm going to what does that mean? I don't know what that means. It seems like you guys are. Is it just not loud enough? Hello. Hmm. I can go check with the team to make sure it's okay, but I see all the. The audio working, I think. When does he say this? Moji well, said that, but maybe he's talking about the last one where, where we couldn't do one. I hope people can hear me. Let me know. We got 112 people in the chat for this already. Um, whatever. I'll just explain again to you if I got that wrong somehow. But yeah, so the, the format we've decided for the quarterfinals, semifinals, and finals now, I can share that with you as well. Probably post, we'll come up with a graphic to share so you guys can see that too. Um, but uh, we will begin with the quarterfinals tomorrow. The quarterfinals will be a best of two between the top eight. Um, they will start at 11 a.m. and 12.30 p.m. And so by lunch tomorrow here, we will have determined our semifinalists. After lunch, we'll play the semifinals. And that will be a best of two format again. Matches played at 3 p.m. Istanbul time and 4.30 p.m. And so by end of day on, on Thursday, we'll have determined our two finals. We're going to take off Friday, and then we'll have uh, the finals will be best of five format um, between those two players on Saturday. Uh, that's going to allow us to not be, you know, running into timing with the uh, with the uh, Istavdor tournament or anything like that. So, but yeah, I think it's working. It's going to work best with our schedule, and super excited for that. Uh, I'm going to take a, a quick break here and go see if Wilson has any ideas about the microphone if that's going on, and start the match very shortly. Of course, yeah. Uh, we stay together. Okay. Ready to roll the dice. Yeah. Okay. So, hello, Dirk. <laughs> hello, Michi. First time that we ever play against each other, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this great. is amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. After so many years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, how's it going? Yeah. So so. Still chances, but of course. it could have been better. <laughs> of course. You should be qualified. Yeah, I should. So that's even more pressure now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So 
Yeah, I think we can start. And we stay. Are you ready to roll the dice? Thank you very much. I want, to, I want you to say that. Are you ready to roll the dice again? Again? Yes. Okay. Are you ready to roll the dice? I want to ask that. And and the viewers too, maybe. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, so. Not yet. We are we are ready to. No, no, no. Just uh, thank you. Just in case maybe I get cold. Okay. Many formalities. And you send it to me, please, too. Yeah, amazing that we never ever played this. Not even online, not live. Never ever. Wow. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to believe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Uh, All right, we're back. I hope the, the microphone settings get better and we're not flickering through the whole thing, but we're about to get started here. Um, Michi and Yurk doing their introductions. Everyone wants to get a recording of Michi saying, are you ready to roll the dice now? So we got to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got it up with me here now. Uh, do you, what's, what are you on Galaxy now? You're way up there, right? Three. Three, okay. Yeah. And, uh, Number three, Galaxy. Yeah, um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, <laughs> Arif we're here. Yeah, I've joined uh, Nick to um, okay. do a commentary on Mitch. Fantastic players. Dirk and Michi, which um, I actually played both of these gentlemen in Venice um, a couple of weeks ago. So I pretty much know their scale and magnitude of their plays. And as Michi always says, are you ready to roll the dice? <laughs> so let's, see. let's see how it goes. Looks like they've started. Um, we obviously see the feed separates. So, yeah, I've got no vision of, of the actual board, but we're just waiting for that to, to pop up. This is good enough. It's pretty easy to see from, yeah. <laughs> from well, the just feed up. This we'll get feed. that corrected quickly. Uh, it's Ooh. standard standard fan on a one point board, and I don't think it's close to a cube. Not quite enough for me. Now he yet. has to hit. Okay, he has to protect yeah. that slotted point by hitting a second checker on the ace. Okay. Yeah, that's not intuitive to me. I was looking at coming around the bend, maybe. These all seem to be standard for these two guys. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I was having a chat with Dirk, and I think yeah, he automatically yeah, knows yeah, the best three, three plays. Um, but this is pretty impressive. Um, looks Desperately needs to hit one of them at least. That's oh, this is the okay. Looks like Dirk landed with five ace last yeah. row. Right, so he's thinking about the double. I think Michi already rolled the three one. I'm not sure. Yeah, he's just he gets so many double shots here. I think he can just hit and lose or make a point so he easily lose your market. Oh, okay. It I is think, uh, yeah. Dirk's roll. Okay. Yeah, yeah Dirk is not going to miss this one. I'm um, pretty sure he's going to ship the cube over. Very small cube here, too. Four checkers back. Yeah. yeah. Chance to send the fifth. Pointing on head is quite a bit. It's I'm just got you. The, you don't want to roll double three, double aces. Even ace, like ace six. Yeah. There's a lot um, of double hits that might lose what, your What do you right? do with five ace? You just do the double tiger. Um Mm. So there's like so many, so many market losers here. I'm surprised it's so small. Yeah. Um, yeah. It does have an anchor and no points, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's an issue. Dick. The bar Very point, I guess. Easy take from Michi. Yeah. Two now one. he's going to roll double three. Oh, three one. That was one of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if he, I guess if he anchors up on three, maybe that's a silly margin of take. Uh, it's three and ace. 
I think it's just going to hit. Yeah. Seems reasonable. Yeah, now that he's anchored, he's got some game. I guess having to go for it, making some structure makes some sense too. Of course, we don't have a timing for those two, and we are fairly committed to the back game. Yeah. Um, not a lot of pass to winning from there, so the hit makes sense to me. I think with the ace three anchor um, back game, you just need potentially quite a lot of time. Mm -hmm. So I think the priority is here is to recycle the checkers. And if he doesn't hit, he can make a valuable point. Mm -hmm. um, and then hop out with the sixes and, and vacate one of the anchors. So this is actually, I think this is actually good for Michi that they hits and potentially is forced to hit twice. Yeah, do you think he is? Is it better to just play 20 to 14 maybe to avoid that, that yeah, sequence? could be easy. Yeah. It looks how close they are. They're oh, yeah, super way. close. I would, I would have hit here twice. Um, again, if you're playing a counter back game, um, you really have to be aware of um, the, the timing zones. And um, so here, for example, for any deuce, uh, I'm pretty sure Dirk would have slots um, the four point mm -hmm. to then then counter um, the timing of, of Michi. But here, I think he realizes how close these, these plays are. Um, that's why he's playing, spending credit. Yeah, it's not clear. It's not a, the when you start sending checkers behind a decently formed prime in a back game like this, they don't necessarily function as timing. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Okay, you just, uh, I would have picked two, two to be honest. Um, right, yeah, four, three. Now with any deuce, he's gonna land on four, um, even six. Oh, look at that. Two of them, and for sure. I think he should come on the edge of the prime. Yeah, like this too. Entering sixes have to again mess with the timing battle and potentially make a six prime, mm -hmm. and then those checkers are locked up. So I'm pretty sure um, Derek didn't like that fan from yeah. Mochi. I think he is going to cover it, right? I think that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, better to not force the six to take timing away and just keep those checkers stranded. I think yeah. we'll have. Uh, a lot of trouble timing this game now, since Dirk still has the three checkers to bring around too. What do we have here? Oh, I don't know if you've noticed, but on the bottom and top of the board, there's these little dice boxes. Okay. You can see what the roll is. It's usually too much clear. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, so two two we have to play. Um, I guess we're just trying to bring checkers around somehow. I don't have a strong opinion about which ones are best. Um, I don't know. I would usually just leave shots everywhere here myself. Yeah, um, that makes sense. Try to mess with timing more. Yeah. So staying back on the 20 and 18 might actually be kind of a good thing here. This yeah, is that tactical opportunity. One of the reasons Dirk made uh, 16 point was to give him bad double fours. Um, mm. Catastrophic if he rolls double fours. And I'm pretty sure Dirk was thinking about that. Okay. Um, this is a 6-5 now. Yeah, but now he has to leave shot, I think. Hitting on the deuce seems okay here. Not, not on this roll, but in general, if we get... Yeah. Yeah. like a nine or something like that. I think Michi would be happy to advance to the 23 and 22 instead yeah, of the one three that he has. That's a much stronger back game. Um, yeah. 20, just a two, two, three back game rather than ace, mm -hmm. ace three. Right, he doesn't get an ace, which I'm pretty sure Michi is annoyed, annoyed about. Um, mm -hmm. I see pretty decent timing. Yeah, it's playable. Right, that's double aces, I think. He needs to get those extra checkers. Doesn't need six behind the prime, so he needs to start hopping out as soon as he gets the opportunity. So I think Dirk's going to keep that six prime as long as he can as well. Yeah. Try to buy time to crack Michi's front structure. Yeah. He just hope, he's just hoping Michi now rolls large sets, but obviously he's not going to do that. He immediately steps up with the ace, and that's what he was looking for all the past few rolls. Very nice, yeah. Um, right, what have we got here? Very soon it starts to force sixes to play behind as well, but a 4 1 just coming in, stepping up, sure. Seems yeah. reasonable. The 7 to 6 in, that's an interesting one. I guess we have a 6 for free, but it's nice to have the spare for now so that we're not breaking the point. Yeah. When we roll that 6 that's coming. That was a very good ace, uh, Michi played. There's no point of just hanging around there. Mm -hmm. um, what happens is when you keep the ace a blot around the corner in the back, then the opponent starts to hit loose. And then if you're unfortunate and hit back, you end up crunching your own position. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's why Michi lifted that to prevent that scenario. Nice play. Now, this is exactly what he didn't Oof. want to do. 
No dead checkers yet, though. Yeah. Well, it's but he's very completely likely. out of time. Yeah, yeah, it's very likely. And what is this? Is a three-two? I think we hold the prime and probably just play to the ace. It's, I think I think he can he can leave a shot. Uh, that's another way to deal with the timing. Yeah, I would just yeah I would I would do this just helping him to to hit and mm -hmm. um, not afraid of a of a board like that. I guess you lose on six four for example, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, what is this? Five three. Yeah, you still keep going to stick with that theme. Okay. Very good. Right. This is still kind of. It's recoverable for Michi, but it's not looking yeah. good, that's for sure. Uh, we have aces. aces now. Okay. He can keep the five prime again, but I guess he's probably going to keep looking for ways to to leave shots on exits. So look at this, yeah. he does break another point. It's funny, I would have played seven to five twice myself. Um, oh, that's but, another way to do it. Oh yeah, uh, it's again so close. Yeah. Fours, fives and sixes, but the fours out are nice. I think you actually, I would prefer not to, I mean, nine to five just looks so nice because I really want my opponent to have to just break their board more. Now yeah. they do hit us when they exit with sixes and fives, but what about like six, three, five, three, six, yeah. two, five, two. Now we're not burying more checkers, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, I just um, usually when I face a badly timed back game, oh, look, he's he's just going to leave a lot of. Uh, okay, that's one mm -hmm. way of doing it, which I'm not sure was correct, but yeah, I, think I would have just played seven to five, kill my sixes. Yeah, it looks like. Ah, uh, that was your idea with that. Yeah, point. just kill the sixes. sixes. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. It makes a lot of sense. Right, so now he wonders whether he has to hit or. No, I think he just leaves a checker on the deuce. That's a great place for it, yeah. <laughs> if you're right. Um, look, in, look how close you are, whether it's, you hit or not. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. What happens there? Apparently, you win more gammons if you hit. Okay. Yeah. I, uh, it's just a pawn and has lots of time with, with the other two checkers in the outfield. Um, yeah. So whether you hit or not, he, he's always going to make a few points on the six point and five point later. We're so late in the game now that it's kind of, you don't have another option, but splitting to 17 to 13, you don't really like to do here. You could end up in the air when all the shots show up, uh, which is unfortunate. The ace, I guess you might as well cover the deuce. You're not really using those checkers for anything else. Mm. Kind of like that. I, I don't think we're thinking so long-term that we want to be hit or hit Dirk and have him hit us on the deuce and then recycle that checker. <laughs> uh, kind of an unlikely scenario. But I guess this is the play to try for that, is to hit first with the four. Yeah, I think he, he's yeah. he's playing the ace first, and then yeah. he's thinking about his four. Um, I would have played four, four first, first. Yeah. <laughs> then think about my... Sure. My uh, nice. You'd miss out on the possibility of hitting 17 to 12, then. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, okay, and he does, okay, the forced, idea works, the yeah, two hits, yeah. Forced to hit. That's maybe an improvement for Michi. Yeah, so I think again he's just gonna hop out. Um yeah. Yeah. Has to hop Mobility out. is key here. Timing's too suspect. You don't care, you get hit. <laughs> but again, he I don't think Michi wants to face the scenario to have so many men in the back and on the move towards the homeboard that he just doesn't make when he in the in the likely event that he gets a shot, then he still don't have a he still doesn't have a very good board. Yeah, to to keep or to attack um, Dirk. So, mm -hmm. so I hitting just, here makes a lot of sense for that kind of yeah, tactical I reason. Think I think Dirk is just gonna if he fans. Okay, mm -hmm. I think with any three or four, he would have picked up all of those checkers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Making the seventeen is very good for Michi now. I think, or sorry for Dirk. Yeah, for Michi. Yeah, yeah. I understand people's names. <laughs> <laughs> So it's like he's going to hit. I'd expect, I don't think so. You just come past, don't you? And yeah, now yeah. you've done the best you can with your timing. It only hurts it to hit that checker, I think. I want to keep the point. That would be my idea. Yeah. Just wait it out. I would hit here because it's, it's just too, now it's too much timing on Mitch's side. Mm. Um, I would hit, get those three checkers in the back moving. He, he's going to come in likely and then next roll. I won't hit it if I mm. if I have a scenario. Mm. I think now, just just by feel and doing a rough pip count, you realize you, probably timing is a little bit too much uh, on the black side. 
So I would just hit hit it hit it to balance it out a little bit. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. I'd have a hard time finding that play. I'm hoping that he moves by and I move the 17 point checkers into range. And hopefully by the time I have a shot, I can make the six, but that's going to be hard to do. Right. So maybe yeah. you're right. Yeah. Maybe if I can see it that way. If he, yeah, that's reasonable for Michi. Nice. Now, now if, okay. <laughs> I was going to say, if he rolls like a six, four or something, then, then probably that's the time not to hit. <laughs> Cause then you have some time to bring your checkers around. Yeah. But, now Derek is going to pick up with any four. Yeah, What's that? The timing him six, six, I think. Okay, that's four spray. Yeah, and with two checkers on the bar, this is like the nice shot that you want to be ready for and yeah. just not trying to come in. So it's going to be very difficult for Michi to win this one. Yeah, with six, six, five open, it's, uh, it's a mission impossible, I think, for, <laughs> for Michi. And, and I think the disadvantage Michi has, in case he gets shot, is there are so many decisions coming up after you get a shot with all these checkers flying around <laughs> in the outfield. You have to try to optimize your doubles and yeah, um, do all kind of malarkey. So I'm, I'm pretty sure Michi hopes he does. He never gets a shot. Yeah. Pure containment games aren't so bad to me, yeah. but when you have the four three ace for your front position, yeah, yeah that's uh, I have no idea. Yeah, I get lost real fast and a but, dead checker already yeah. too. Look, I think now he has to yeah, make the deuce playable. Yep. Because um, the ace is, is not going to leave any shots. So that's two of them for sure. Mm -hmm. And he just has to play anything from the outfield. Yeah, it's better. You don't want to make the three playable as well by the same theory because then you can just yeah, lose that that's, point. That's a bit so too much. The, the, the contact for now tends to be right, I think. Yeah. And yeah, I agree. Uh, nothing particularly better than anything else in the outfield yeah. that I can see. Yeah. Still really wants you to play three to two to activate that checker, yeah. which I think yeah. makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So, you know, he sees the first two, mm -hmm. he makes his mind up, and then he realizes what whatever he plays in the outfield should be. Oh, look at that. Triple, Triple shot. shot. And he's going to miss. <laughs> he didn't. <laughs> now, the tough decisions come from... <laughs> now, this is the scenario I was talking about. Yeah. In a, in a format like UBC, you probably just pray you don't pick up that checker <laughs> because look at the decisions. Now Better to leave. Lose. <laughs> He's, he would have rather getting gammoned in this mm. than, than having this PR. It's going to look bad on three ply. Plus, plus, this is the kind of game that plus, plus is going to have strong opinions about, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. But so when he gets the opportunity to hit, he's going to. Oh, I so everything oh, oh double five five, five. and it's on the way okay so this is almost like a quadruple shot oh it's a killer that was six two all hit. six two so still mitch is is kind of like decisions of force for now <laughs> um oh my goodness you rolled the like sixes nice. hitting the same hey, oh, gonna, can you get back comments how many checkers he's, he's touching <laughs> his checkers just to give an indication to Michi that you can get back comments <laughs> um 5.7 percent is yeah. what i said yeah you always can i've seen two matches uh, in a row end in backgammon so i kind of expect it at this point uh, this side seems this is to too be big unlikely, cross yeah. yeah so what is what's the gentleman's agreement uh are they going to carry on um and keep a keep a plot in in that home board until yeah it's not part of the rules okay I guess, so potentially i don't know we'll see what they do okay he just okay, resigned yeah. okay yeah that's, that's appreciate that nice. yeah <laughs> It says, I've seen so many players keeping it blood um, in in opponent's home board when when the gammon is guaranteed. Yeah. To then count all of those <laughs> moves as as a decision. Sure. So uh, it's kind of a cheeky way of bringing your PR down. It's a clever trick for sure, given the format. But I mean, it's more fun. There's not really a great way to remove it other than that rule set. I guess you know, I, it's not so hard. But yeah. what can you do? PR is imperfect, right? <laughs> Trailing, right. I like the hidden down for the cover for sure. Yeah. So these are all the standard stuff that these guys are pretty, pretty rough. Mm -hmm. uh, all robotic. Ooh, this looks strong. You got to yeah. get the checker off the 24, right? Last one is to the 23, yeah. I think. I don't think you hit twice here. You just make the five and the split. Yeah, he's going to think about it. Yeah. 
And he could be approaching a cube pretty quickly at this score. Um, uh, this will kick yeah, it off for sure. I think, I think he's With the board good. advantage Yo. and three blots around, things can happen. Yeah, I think he, I think Mitch is still a yeah, few, two, at least a good few rolls away. <laughs> two six is pretty weak. Oh, look at that. Okay. That's going to keep him. I certainly agree now. <laughs> Um, do we really want to shift uh, eight to seven I here? I think I would just yeah clear. I don't you know, with the clean on board. I don't want to get get hit in the outfields near my. Yeah, uh, we have the checkers back advantage. So yeah. Let's do something to keep it. Okay, yeah. that's a good theme. I was looking for. We already have threes duplicated in the board in the outfield. Yeah. Um, either of those feel fine to shift to. I prefer shifting a checker anywhere else. I just think the the eight blocking point against the 23 feels very strong. Yeah, yeah. But this blocks the, the blot on the 24, so there is merit. Um, no, Dirk is looking at it, but I'm pretty sure he's going to lift it, um, mm -hmm. knowing him. Oh, okay, he goes for okay. it. Yeah. That's reasonable, I think. He, pretty close. Yeah. Now he's going to hit twice. Yeah, we had threes duplicated, so this must be good, yeah. right? <laughs> and then, obviously, the last one steps up. It's like a solid point. Right, so he is going to get to the cube uh, if he doesn't get hit. Right, Ooh, so now cube there. is going to be right on Derek's head. And it's a yeah. yeah, barely a cube. You just have to, you can't, uh, this is a score you can't faff about, faff about and yeah. hope for. And Small advantage, yeah. lots of gammas, lots as, of volatility yeah. on this roll. You as soon as you sniff it, it, you have to ship the cube over. Yeah. This is the, I call it, point of desperation. Yeah, everyone's yeah. asking who's on here. It is still a ref folly pour of me. Did yeah. I pronounce that even close to right? I, I don't know how to say yeah, that's name. RF. 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 Yes. Not a ref. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, someone was asking too. I was talking about format and uh, logistics of the quarters. I'll get to all that again. I'll repeat it for sure. Maybe on a break like this, we can talk about it a little bit. But so, yeah, so top six points. And after that, top two PRs overall across the 15 matches will advance to tomorrow's game. Um, quarterfinals are going to start tomorrow at 11 a.m. and 12.30. And it's going to be a best of two. Uh, so that'll be resolved by lunchtime. After lunch, we'll play the semifinals, another best of two at uh, 3 p.m. and 4.30 p.m. And so by the end of tomorrow, we'll know who the finalists are. We're going to take Friday off and then play a best of five on Saturday. And that's going to allow us to all be involved in the day one of Estavder on Friday and not be getting in the way of that tournament. So I think with the schedule, that's going to work out really well. I'm excited for it. And we've got... You've been seeing the stats as of yesterday too. It's uh, all most of the matches coming up involve people in that top right now. We've got Sander in the round 15. I think uh, I can't remember if Umur is 14 or 15, but he's in there too. Um, Thomas Mears coming up. Lots of great names and just pick those all by chance, just to give everyone a shot to be yeah. on stream. And it ends up being all like the people that are in the mix. So it's it's cool stuff. I'm and, uh, Okay, Dirk's having a hard time with this one, huh? Or is Michi well, still thinking Michi, about the cube? I'm, I'm amazed. Uh, oh, he's thinking he's about it. Thinking it. He, must be, he must be feeling he has to throw this cube because yeah. things in swing. Look at he's got four blots flying around the board. Mm -hmm. You just don't, don't want to regret. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, he's rolling. Okay. I guess he's probably not clear that he's winning, basically. Yeah. You know, he's got four checkers back behind yeah. structure and only has two of Dirks right now. Yeah, this uh, this is scored. If he, now he's just going to yeah. switch the five or, or the six. I think he just has to count which double five is better or double six. Wow, I'm not sure I'd find this. He plays like this, but yeah, with only uh, eight in the zone, this is a little strange. Yeah. But there just isn't anything else to do, and it's so yeah. important to buy time to attack those checkers in the outfield, yeah. I think and this is this is pretty much. Yeah. I bet he's feeling good about not sending the cube now, though. Uh, yeah, like, <laughs> like I said, I would have just I would have even wasted a second thinking about it. I would just cube over. Yeah. Um, yes, it's easy take, but you know you can't bluff players like like Derek or yeah. Okay, you found the best play. Well done. Mm -hmm. Um. 
Dublin window. So right, that's a hitter outside. Oh, enter with yours. I think you hit outside for sure. Yeah. Yeah, instead of preventing Then again, it, he's here. in the zone. Yeah, but it, on a six yeah, would be tough. Now it's, oh. he, he is still off the Dublin window because he doesn't have a six point. Yeah. That's, what a nightmare position. This is a pretty sick, sick position so. not, not to continue yeah. without a six point. Well, I guess you have to try to get the six point, don't you? Uh, I would just immediately be yeah. playing 13 to six, but it's not even. It's it's almost a blunder, it looks like, on this yeah. level of analysis. Just start advancing to so, the back. Like, okay. Positions like this, between yeah. the choice of vacating my six points or five points, I, I always pick five because I don't know how to play <laughs> when I don't have my six points. Yeah. So I just make this game a little bit simpler going forward. I might give up a, a bit of a quiz here, way, but at least I know I have an easier time later. <laughs> but playing without... To six points, but this is stage of the game is pretty pretty much a pain in the in the neck. Yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure Mitch has got a lot more difficult um, decisions than Derek. This one looks pretty natural. Very simple stuff, and then just I clean up a just block, I guess. Up, not? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right now, Mitch went miles off the doubling window, so. I think in the foreseeable future, we're not going to see a cube action. Yeah, it's going to be tough to get it down to below 10% winning chances, right? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. It's still centered cube. I was thinking recube. Yeah, it's okay. centered cube. Yeah, three away, seven away. It's probably going to still feels like it's going to be too good very yeah. often before yeah. you get to like a yeah. real window. Right. Oh, six point mates. Oh, brilliant. Now, um, that's a lifesaver. Yeah, he's still, I feel like he's a silly. Yeah, he doesn't have the cube yet. He's miles off. Um, now he's going. Of course, he has to hit. I think so, even though you don't have the cover. Yeah. He sees that's his three. Uh, uh, he's yeah. thinking of hopping out, but I think hit is sure essential enough. to prevent him um, anchoring on the four point. And if you get hit, you can always anchor up and go to a bad game if you want. Yeah, it does seem like it plays both ways, but with so many checkers locked behind, or locked behind structure, he chooses the, yeah. the mobility play. I think dirk has got an option to hit, but I think making the anchor makes a lot yeah. of sense, yeah. So that's, I think that's exactly what Dirk wanted, to have that four-point anchor. Yeah, I think cleaning up the blot and advancing feels worth more than making the 10. I don't want to give up my midpoint quite yet. It would be a nice point to have in front of that 21 point anchor. Yeah. Five four is just going to hit loose in the board. Okay. Okay. Right. What is that? Two ace. <laughs> okay. I think he's a seal away from, from doubling this. Um, what do we do here? <laughs> Looks like we can just link up with the mid. Come off the 21. Anchoring's kind of nice too, though. Oh, I didn't even see. Yeah, I think I would just play from the bat. From the... Oh, you, you hop see out the, the six instead? and then you yeah. think about the deuce. But I think to improve the connectivity, yeah, you should do yeah. this. Um, yeah, White isn't so excited to hit from the midpoint either. I didn't notice that. Yeah. So maybe it's not so urgent to clean that blot up. Okay. Mm -hmm. The six says he's going to get another anchor. And we're like, getting again, somewhere. He's, yeah, he's, he's, a cube a, action. he's thinking about the cube, but he realizes he's a silly little bit off. Um, I keep wanting to just link things up, but making the 10, okay. Yeah, that's reasonable. I was thinking 15 and 17. Right. But yeah, this. Is, is he going to hit loose or switch or calm down? Hmm. I didn't even see the play to play to come down. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah. What? Well, how does? I guess thirteen eleven's value is mainly that it just doesn't hit, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you'd rather have it. So, so I think he. Very strange. Yeah, that was uh, that was an interesting play. I think Dick played it quite fast. Um, yeah. If he 
quickly countered the pips, I think he would have been able to find that. But I think I would have made the same mistake as, as Dirk did. Hmm. That was a that was a tough play. So you got you have to hop out surely from anchor. <laughs> that must be it. Yeah. Again, bar to eighteen is quite close. Yeah. But yeah, I think this is just a, a lot more flexible. Moves better from there. I guess you'd prefer not to be hit on the bar so that he might make that point. Yeah. Now again, and you're very likely yeah. to be able to make a second anchor on the ace or the deuce if you do get hit here. Yeah. I think um, the Dick, one of the uh, one of his observations between the two plays was, how am I going to convince Michi not to chip the cube over? <laughs> but I think yeah. it's very likely he, he sends it out here, although it's Oh, look, it's again a borderline one. Yeah. yeah. The position, it's starting to get easier to see, though. We're in more of a defined state yeah. than we were before. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You can kind of see, well, now he has a bunch of checkers back, and I don't. I have that advanced anchor. I have threats. It's Yeah, he's got race. He's got see. a reasonably better button. Um, I remember Falafel was always saying, and you've got a four-point or a three-point anchor, don't hesitate to take. Just mm. take. Yeah, <laughs> it's always a take at any score. So, I think Dirk finds this pretty much a reasonable take. So two hits and probably just either flies up or... Continuing to the six looks nice. I don't know yeah. why we want to strip the midpoint. Yeah, I would just... Yeah. Uh, for some reason... No, they're very close. Okay. Okay. I think... Might help um, us make the bar to keep it out there, okay. I think Fine. XG wants to just have another blocking number with such a stripped structure from um, mm -hmm. from Dirk. Well done to Michi finding that player. I think the idea is to just have another blocking point. Sure, sure. And uh, kind of jeopardize some of those points made in the outer fields um, by Dirk. It's a lot of pressure on this out with a six play too. Mm. I really don't know how to choose between these two, 17 or 18. I think this is the safest bet. Yeah. Um, you don't want to get hit on there. <laughs> I guess we would enjoy making the bar point, but it seems pretty yeah. loose here. Oh, this I hits. Think, yeah, that That's probably pretty hit. good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if he fans, I think, yeah, he didn't. I think if he was fanning, then I think Michi would have enjoyed um, the moment he shipped the cube over. Oh, it's gone already. But yeah. He got it over now. Now he's just going to uh, chair up. Yeah. Having that anchor, when you have these bluffs around his back, again, you can eat yeah. that um, kind of 17 point anchor. It, you, you always use that as a bridge um, within the prime of, of your opponent to just escape with the, the back checkers. Mm -hmm. So he's not going to vacate it anytime soon with the, until he clears the checkers behind. Yeah. He had due to hit previously, but yeah. still might like giving it up. Five still feels like it hits. I don't think this is too loose. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Don't move back. Yeah, you just we'll keep the checkers moving around. Sure, less plots. And now Dirk has the back game? Okay. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's not, going he's not going to, I'm pretty sure. But, okay, he said, computer says hits. Um, well, look, it's such an open game, this is now. Yeah. It's a lot of blots. Right. Now, I think he definitely Michi prefers a six, something to remake the anchor. <laughs> Blocking point is nice too. So that tidies up things. Three, and then we can see the light with 24 to 22. Yeah. Uh, this, okay, this hops out twice. I, I see. Maybe a nicer anchor to make later too. Is that double five? Oh my God. I believe it is. What a devastating roll that was. Uh, is it the five primer? Or do we hit the second checker? I think. I think you got to get a checker moving, don't you? Uh, yeah, I think you hit, you hit. Obviously, you hit in the. Yeah, you hit twice, yeah. don't you? 
He almost missed it, though. Okay. I, mean, <laughs> I was, I was just looking. Yeah. Where, is, is there something like... Well, because he else? can make a five prime. It does right. look pretty good. Right? But <laughs> I, think, I don't know if he's seeing picking up... A, I don't think he's seeking, he's seeing he can pick up a second checker. Yeah, I wonder. Um, if he sees that, I'm pretty, it's like, this is automatic for Dirk. Okay. Seems he's, just, he's just teasing decision. Michi. Oh, okay. He's teasing <laughs> Michi. <laughs> right. Okay, okay. I think Michi is a seal that's got a lot of winning chances with those four shakers back from Dirk. Um, right, is that 6-3? So you just vacate the back anchor. That's your safest time to do it now, now that he's on the bar. Hmm. Yeah. 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 I like that play. Yeah. Now that you have this structure in front, not a lot of other options. Slotting the back is reasonable too, but mm, feels better. That's, to... that's dangerous. The stuff at four nail up and the cube in hand, <laughs> potential gammon chances here. Yeah. So I think I just very cautiously. Better to slot the back of a uh, five prime than a four in general too. This is another. This is an interesting play. Oh. Sees the most freedom, I think. We yeah. got a real clear bridge out of all the structure that Michi's got there. Yeah. Kind it's like fascinating it. how how Dirk sees all of these plays. Um, I usually just go for my gut gut play, and I was just going to always leave that back anchor. Yeah. But he sees he sees things, which is uh, which I always admire about Dirk. He never panics, or you can see he's in in full charge now. Yeah. Three four is a nice mobile play. Very good. Staying on the bar is not going right. to help Michi out much here. Now with this position, um, I don't. The doubling window for Dirk becomes so narrow. Yeah. That I don't think he'll ever find um, the redouble because of gammon potentials. Yeah. But in the in the unlikely events that let's say Michi comes in, anchors up uh, for whatever reason, he crunches his board, and then. Dirk would be thinking whether he has 9%, yeah. whether Michi has 9% to, to ship the cube over or not. I think slotting the back still is just a little, it's eight numbers. It's more than it usually would be, but he, he goes for it. The 3, 5, 3, 6, 2, 6, 1, 6. Um, just stepping up from the, from the 24 was worth a little more there. Anything? Right. Uh, but he's happy now to have made yeah. it, and slotting the back of the 5 prime feels great. He'd be happy to do that. He's certainly in the driving seat. Um, Dirk, what a strong position to be in. 3-5, and Michi has too many points to deal with and is going to have to break one here. Is this the best to give up? Sure. Yeah. That's another devastating. Double that's, fives, okay. Yes. Yeah, yep. prevent all these advanced anchors. And the 24 is going to be Michi's last chance. Okay, yeah, he makes it. Up. Okay, helpful. Right. And he should have timing and enough structure to to be able to deal with a late game hit. Yeah. So looking it's reasonable good. at least. Yeah. Ace point, ace point anchor gives him 20, 22 percent. With a good timing. What's the percentage? Yeah, 80 percent favorite. Okay. I'm glad I got that one right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I don't think Dirk will ever find a redouble. But let's see. This all seems pretty standard stuff. And Dirk always goes through counting shots and how easy he can. Uh, he can... Yeah, while well, he's on the bar, it's time to go for this. That seems quite reasonable to me. He's just afraid of double aces. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He knows. Uh, even that you can survive though here, yeah, you know, I think. more important that you don't find some crazy cracking number or if he does enter with aces, you're still sad to have the bar, you know. Mm. What was that? Okay, okay. Uh, makes the... Do you need the bar there? I don't know if you need I it. I wonder. Yeah. <laughs> You'll have to clear, clear it at some point, uh, <laughs> particularly with this timing, I wouldn't have made the bar. I tend to err on that side too, but I mean, I don't know. It's nice to have while you're still bringing checkers around, right? Look, that I mean, last six he played, he wants to yeah. kill his sixes. 
Um, okay, so he wants an opportunity to break timing or something like this. That's yeah. interesting. I wouldn't have thought that way either. Yeah. I think I would still be looking for an opportunity to clear it soon. Yeah, now he, now he wants to suck them up on the bar point to kill his sixes. Mm -hmm. uh, what that is, is a 4-3? Looks like it. Right. I would maybe duplicate the... F sure, we could come up with some Close. reasons to leave a different one back. But this is going to get to freedom most often. Yeah. Either oh, should be okay. It's still going to take a small miracle for Michi. This one. Yeah. yeah. He still thinks about stacking them up, but I think it's now it's time to have a better distribution. <laughs> um, yeah, I think this is a point. Michi is just um, kind of praying for small rolls. Two aces, yeah. two aces. <laughs> Eventually, you can root for double sixes. Yeah. Even they should be just fine for. So, like here, I actually. No, no, maybe no. He should in. have killed his sixes. Yeah. I think he should have killed his sixes. I think he played that fast. Oh, and well, five leaves a is. shot right away, though. So now he's happy about that decision. Oh. And four hits. Oh, of with course. the six, too. Of wow. Course. Of course. That's a beauty. Dirk is just crashing his head. Yeah. What's that? Dirk's goal the whole time, I think, was just to save the gamut. Yeah. He's accomplished that, <laughs> so he's, he's happy. He's in you good shape. You always get to these positions <laughs> and you start fighting you because <laughs> reviewing whether you could have done anything better bearing in those bloody checkers. But this is inevitable. It's like almost guaranteed. You always leave a shot <laughs> and you get hit back. Yeah. That's the way. Right. Uh, Reroll, ace up, aces. Yeah, oh, okay, that's, that's actually okay. pretty good. Of all your entries. There were some some scary ones for sure. Yeah, this one helps. Yeah, Hopefully, okay, we don't have to release another. Look at that. Uh, game over. Oh, brilliant. Did he check it? Did he take anything off at all? Or? Uh, Dirk did, yeah. At okay, least one check. Save the gun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's not putting him in the trays to help us out. Very rude. That's usually when you uh, when you get hit with those kind of situations when you're not yeah, thinking about the stream yeah. with the checkers, you know. Cruel justice. Yeah, I think he rolled double five. Yes. Yeah, maybe maybe two and then peeled yeah. off two. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Five three. Okay. So yeah, Michi's just trying to come around, get spares in place to hit loose on the ace, and close the board. Roll the prime home. Simple stuff. Yep, people asking who we are again. This yes. is still Nick. I got a ref. I got a ref. Uh, Do yes. I have a British accent? Someone asked if we're it's, seven. Tim, uh, I, I shouldn't be confused with them, I don't think. I don't, I don't even I don't know. know what my accent is. Uh, I don't know. I'm, 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 I would have called it British, but yeah. I'm terrible at deciding <laughs> them. <laughs> I don't think they call it British, but in the UK. Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. My, my accent is a bit of a shamble of uh, of different things. I, I got gotcha. so my, my background is Iranian, and, huh. and having lived in the UK for for quite a while, um, obviously you pick up a few words and accents. But yeah, miles off, miles off a British accent. <laughs> I guess that's the way a lot of people. I met someone who learned English, like yeah. British English, and so they, yeah. you know, like you don't have to be from there to have that accent. Yeah. You assume that they're going to learn the yeah. in America yeah. that you would learn the yeah, yeah. English accent, of course, right? <laughs> so, yes. Or the American That's accent. <laughs> yeah, so that seems like a chin win for Michi. I'm actually quite happy uh, from. Neutral perspective, Mitch is going to win this game, hopefully, and then we, we can have a a longer match and uh, maybe a bit more complicated positions uh, for both of these guys, top players, obviously. Um, I always get fascinated by, by uh, Mitch. Oh, yeah. Matches so much to learn from these guys. More backgammon is good. People are remembering uh, Michi doing turnarounds like this in previous semifinals or quarterfinals or something like that. I don't know if I remember that match, but I remember the time that Michi did this to me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think it was a Crawford game where something like this happened, and we basically down to like less than 1% match equity. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. Have you seen uh, Michi, Michi recently has picked up this habit that he 
before you start the match with, with him, he takes a photo of you. And I said, you remind me of Dexter, who was keeping a trophy from his victims <laughs> in his gadget box. <laughs> He's just like a serial killer and <laughs> taking trophies. <laughs> but he, yeah, I guess he just keeps like a record of, uh, of people he's played, which I think is pretty nice. I hope so. Yeah, I uh, saw in his hotel room. It's just all like candles and pentagrams. Yeah, and, you know, yeah, pictures of, of previous opponents. Yeah. <laughs> Picture of his victims. <laughs> no but lights. He's, uh, yeah, he's such a nice guy, though. <laughs> like great ambassador for the game. Oh, he is for sure. He's a coffee fan with me too. Uh, is he going to resign after this roll? Yeah. Okay. So One, yeah, two, that's, three that's rolls. It. He needs. Uh, so yeah. Deer can still get off in two. I guess technically this. enough ones will do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's important if you're going to do the gentleman thing that you don't resign any equity by mistake. Yeah. You know that costs you on the PR. Right, we've got 1.2 versus 3.98. Um, <laughs> I can't remember when Dirk made that checker blunder. Yeah, nothing coming to mind for me either. Maybe that double two he played was a bit was a bit of a. Funny move, but anyhow. 6 2. Trailing, we're more inclined. I think we hit no matter what yeah. to fight for a point. Then yeah, the we just come okay. down. Yeah. Interesting. Desperate in this score again. You just have a lot of. I don't know what they're oh, talking he, about. Is this, I think this is a cube. Uh, Already at 5 away, 3 away. Oh, look, again, another borderline. I will shift the cube. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch is feeling it. Yeah, there we go. This is kind of small error to double, but I think that was my change is mine. I'm surprised to see hitting loose on the ace up there too. I guess it fits the blitzing theme, but last pair on the six, it's hard to use that way. But the five down really just isn't very productive yeah. either. So sure, okay. Okay. Now I think uh, Mitch desperately wants an ace or six. Yeah, okay. Oh, here we go. He was going to cover the bar, <laughs> and then he realized, oh, I actually have a better option, yeah. Three checkers back is better, yeah. Okay, this looks like Nice response from Dirk. Hitting bats. Very likely Dirk is going to anchor up either on bar or... Yeah. Oh, no way. Yeah. Well, I think I heard him through the wall laughing. Oh, well. <laughs> I think he's going to just anchor up on... Evans, yeah, and slot. No, he's just a slot the five. Yeah, yeah, not a lot of other options. Yeah, the bar is last spare on the eight. Interesting, is, right? So, oh, that we can cover makes the, bar. the bar, yeah, yeah. Hey, a little bit for everybody in this game. Yeah, this is some if he oh, he doesn't want him to look of at course, this, he doesn't want him to to make the five points so he's looking at it i would have just automatically made the bar i think so too but um coming out on top on the lower ply of analysis too yeah it's this tempo hit it's easy to miss plays like this yeah. for sure so they're, all, they're all very close look at this three one oh that's a beauty. that's that's always a danger a little bit but i guess like you're still behind in this score so yeah. I'll just make the bar later Six four. Is that four three or six four? That's four three. Oh, okay. Dice are hard to see. My bad. You just go up. There's nothing else. He's obviously thinking about his. Does he have the race uh, right now too? Yeah, yeah he's, he's playing quiet. Okay, advanced he's anchor. Sure. Yeah. Picks up. Yeah, White's ready to play a simple game here. I think. Now, yeah, boring stuff. And Michi would like to maybe advance his anchor. I don't think he had much to do that there. Yeah. Could have made the 22 along with the 23, which is... Yeah, with any... Yeah, I was going to say, with any deuce, he's going to split it. 
be split the anchor on 23. Mm -hmm. uh, looks like he's still is reasonably fine. Now you just hop out and come down. Oh, well, of course, you can just uh, meet the anchor outside. Yeah, advancing it against only four in the zone or eight in yeah. the zone. Green does not really want to attack right now so much. Yeah, it is. You've got a lot of stronger boats, so you can you can afford to vacate the anchor now. And you're by not covering it, you're leaving an outfield double shot, supply shots here. There's yeah. it's yeah. quite punishing to be hit on these, but I mean I understand how you end up making this play instead. Yeah. It feels very unnatural, like the thing you saw the first time. Yeah. That was that was different. Very difficult move. Um, I'm not sure why we wouldn't clean up a bot instead. I guess doesn't want to break the mid, so maybe aces that hit aren't so bad. I feel like the checker on the seven is just as good, though. So I don't know why I'd give him the option. Just a few shots. Yeah, pretty close. But okay. he also is thinking if he wants to hit with the aces, then he has to leave ace two shots. No, people noticing Dirk never uses the tray. Yeah, I think that is what happened in the finals too, unfortunately. <laughs> I forgot to use the tray for the stream. And, and we all know how that went for him. <laughs> I'm gonna go give him that tip. That's, he knows so much about backgammon, but he doesn't, what is the doesn't tray? know that he has to use the bear off tray for the uh, Okay, yeah, You can see how many checkers are off. The dice gods punish you if you don't. Yeah. <laughs> so. Of course, of course. We, I don't know if you saw, we have printed off cups for everyone. These little, like, UBC brand yeah. things with their names on them. Yeah. For a, a friend of mine in my hometown actually makes these um, cups and boards, um, M Gammon. Oh, cool. Yeah. One, three, yeah, stepping up. We still really would like to make 21 point instead of the 23. Yes. Another very strange position. They're getting into some complicated games here. Late in the weekend, too. This must hurt <laughs> yeah. to play these out. Uh, yeah, I think I like the distribution yeah. ace. I'm not sure if there's oh fives are nicely duplicated yeah. as a uh, yeah, yeah. by chance too. A little secondary, but still nice to have. Yeah, it's, it's just such a bad road for Michi. This is doesn't do anything. Oof, absolutely doesn't do anything. Uh, yeah, what can you do? You can't. You can. Can you duplicate anything with the sixes, threes? You Four. can't even duplicate things. Tough here. Yeah, it's either you leave an ace uh, with the 14 to 10, or you leave a three, both are, well, ace is duplicated. Yeah, okay, that's yeah. probably why we like 14 to 10 then. Um, but we can't touch the inner board points. The four point is nice to have. Uh, playing, we're just, there's gonna be a lot of contact in this game. Can't afford to give up that, that more pure point. Yeah. I think I would have just kept the the anchor in the back, maybe. Um, that's also nice. Any of those, I think, is reasonable. Mm -hmm. well, yes, in this. the longer term, he blocks double fours from escaping. If he doesn't come better. in. Wow, look at that. That's a pretty good enter. It is indeed. Um, uh, I is think he against a four point. Lift? I would lift it against a four point board, but. Of course, it would be nice for the long term to make that yeah, play too, yeah. but a little risky. Against that board, I think you're transferring. Now, uh, yeah, we want to enter high, but we don't get to clean up when we do that. Um, yeah. I've known that before. Seems acceptable. Four three is a great shot. Great shot. Maybe prefer to hit, but uh, making a form primes got to be at least second best. Oh, look at this! And okay. yeah, by keeping it slotted, he's yeah. made a nice five prime now too. Five four yeah. makes a new point. Nothing destructive yet. Dirk, of course, yeah, yeah hopping to the outfield is fantastic. Um, oh yeah, staying further back for containment is kind of nice, but I don't know if we can afford the six four flexibility in case we're hitting things like that. Can have timing issues as a result. Also, you don't want to give a mega of the sixes away. Mm. That's that double six. He's gonna roll the next round. It's, you don't want to give that checker better up. <laughs> I guess it happening. is a little bit better after yeah. after that. Sixes is pretty good either way. Uh, double twos, not a good roll. Nothing productive to do with it. I think this is least destructive. Double fives. Okay, he's just gonna go he's around. He's good in the race, right? Yeah. yeah. 
can even link up with one of the bots, or he can clean both bots up. Okay, that's yeah. probably a little better. I think after this roll, he may be thinking about the cube. Oh, yeah, even uh, better is linking 15 to 10 and 12 to 7, because you're not in range with that 15 check. Yeah, and we're a little bit closer to clearing that. Yeah. That yeah. 15, in case he hops out with a 6, he can park on the 17 with yeah. a 6 if we don't leave pressure like this. Nice find. A little tactical now, things. I think um, Derek is going to spend time on the cube, and I think I would ship it over with the, the pip count of 30. 16 percent ish yeah there's yeah, not a ton of gammons here he's nowhere near take pretty sure Dick is not going to miss this yeah he knows all of these equities and it is i mean i don't know if that's a too good or just no volatility kind of thing but it, it's not an error to miss this cube I don't know, almost anything. Uh, okay. zero, zero, two. So i think yeah, the decision is wrong or not yeah i would have cube to you Maybe it's uh, nice to have the decisions in this format in this particular yeah. kind of situation too. It kind of uh, maybe you decide. Maybe he knows it's borderline, and he wants to just wants to give it if give a harder decision to, to yeah. Michi. Uh, this feels uh, clearly too good after making the six point or prime though. Unless there's some cracker that I'm not seeing six five. Oh six five. No six five is okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think there's any risk on this next roll, so must have to play. Yeah, he just throws on. Mm. Depending on what Michi rolls, maybe he considers. This feels worth cubing. I mean, I don't yeah, know. You don't There's wanna... very low gammons, and clearly we yeah. have some bad rolls. So I think he's going to ship it here. Yeah. He, he don't want to do the 6-5 here. Yeah. You don't want to do the 5-5. Five, five. Do the 6-5. Five. Five. Even 5-5 five, five is all about you. You just don't want to roll the 6-5. Yeah. I guess the 5-4 is okay. Cheat yourself. Yeah. This is, I think he's just going to cash this. What does 5-3 do? That lives too. Okay. 6-3. Six, six, oh, 6-3. Yeah. <laughs> That's not a good one either. Those are fun. Yeah, I did say six, three. <laughs> that, that makes this even a larger. Yeah. Oh, what was he doing? Oh, a pump pick. Yeah, okay. I, I figured he's got to pass this. Okay, on to Crawford. Oh, someone's asking if I can explain how the winner of the tournament is decided. There are five rounds of matches, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Each of them get a buy, so 14 matches total. For an available 28 points each, you get one point in each match for winning the game and one point for playing the better PR, which currently in this match looks like Michi's winning that point. Um, so whoever has the most points, top six players will advance. And after that, of the remaining players, the top two average PRs across all 14 games uh, will advance to the quarterfinals as well. So that's our UBC format come kind of standard now. 5-5 um, five, five does after running. Yeah. yeah. Know. Even he DMP. I mean, I think it's closer DMP, but you just miss this. It's interesting how close of a choice it is to just play 13 to 3 twice. Usually yeah. with those opening yeah. fives. You go it's through not this that structure rather to, than to blitz, yeah. I think he has to slots. I would slot here and just do something productive, to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. He decides to run forward. Okay. Split seems good. Yeah, DMP2, you don't mind getting hit again. It's okay. Right. Now we can't even hit. So. You just make the five and hope, hope he doesn't make the bar point. <laughs> yeah, he just, I don't think you can, afford, it's just too many shots return and he, you're outboarded. Yeah. Uh, he's looking at it, but I don't, knowing much, yeah, he's going to make the five point. He's too good to make errors like this. Yep. When in doubt. That's a difficult play, though. Now the four, it just has to come down. Interesting. He's enough ahead in the race that I guess thinking about six to two is an option. But oh, yeah, if you got to leave a shot anyway, then you can think about 13 to four. Um, but you might get away with only having one checker back if you try the 18 to nine. So I see a little more upside there than this play. Yeah. And dumping to the deuce, safe for now, but doesn't deal with the stack on the 13. Interesting. Yeah. There's a problem with um, 
going to fall point from midpoint, and that's in the events that he hits you on the bar, then you get some return shots, mm. and then you don't want to have that blood yeah. hanging about in your board. That must That's be, why I think yeah. um, Mitch just, um, Dick just ru- ruled that one out. Um, I don't know if he has ruled it out yet, but he's working on it. Oh, I didn't even see uh, 18, 14, 13, 8. It was kind of an yeah. option, I guess. Interesting. But so he goes with this two behind. Similar issue where you're likely to have fly shots or maybe attacks on the board and you're sat about a lot behind. Yeah. Still have this stack on the 13. To be honest, I think I would have played like Dick here. Um, look at that. That was three. Yeah, we got. Double three. All right. It just says. Um, I just have to come down with <laughs> with two checkers that blocks some stuff. This is very difficult over three. Okay, cover and then two down. Yeah. I would have I would have stepped up and then think about how my last three would be. Um yeah. Yeah. But this is definitely the idea is to is to have a bit of a stronger outfield. Helps you build the four mm. point two. You got some four bad four sixes for. Mm-hmm. Did you press the clock? Okay, he did. He does find this good. Very good play. find. That was master cross from Dirk. Yeah, we got more people asking about the the format of the quarters and semis again. Two match, best of two matches. Tie breaks are always decided by uh, DMP sudden death. So they'll play a uh, one point match, and first person to be able to win the match and the PR in a DMP will decide the tie break if they do have a 2-2 scoreline. Right, so, oh God, choices okay. like this. I think we have to goes, first. Okay. goes to ace here. Yeah, this looks, there's no ace, so hitting looks natural. Yeah, with these, in these positions, you just do safe stuff. You don't uh, leave any oh. shots. 37 pips, yeah. You're so ahead in the race, you just play safe. Doesn't feel like backgammon, but I see it. Yeah, it, it <laughs> is very ugly, but what can go wrong? All the, all your other roles play reasonably okay, uh-huh. apart from your 6-3, but he, this is just far. Um, it's too much to compromise at this point that you, you're 30-odd yeah. pips ahead. I imagine any normal score we're doing that because it wins so many more gamins. Yeah. yeah. Increases them by almost twice as much. Yeah. Uh, but this play wins about 2% or more of the time. So yeah. DMP oddity. And these can be hard to find for that reason. Yeah. You know, I don't think we tend to practice DMP as much. And so, yeah, he finds the, wow. the regular money play. Not too that surprising. Was, uh, they found. Right. This should be an easy. R- <laughs> of course, it's not an easy ride up. Is he ready to lift yet? He is, has to lift. Yeah, it's like, okay. 10 to 8, then, of course, with this. Unless he just wants to prioritize building, but I just, why Why do we want to leave so many five hmm. shots? This is a lot. 5, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 4, 6, 5, 6. Okay, a few of them are sets. But I, it's the gain, I'm not sure, is enough. We get a couple numbers that make yeah. the five point, but maybe we don't need to make the five point to win this game, you know? We got picking passes to come. Yeah, just uh, his his tactic. I think is just picking and passing. He doesn't need any of the far. Well, obviously it's nice to have them, but on the long run, he's counting the shots and realizes it's just too a bit too many. Yeah. <laughs> right. Five six. Michi's going to stay back for contact. Of course, so far down in the race. Uh, six five plays the deuce. Okay. Just hoping for a lucky ride home now. Uh, I feel like we've seen Michi win less likely games than this, right? I, yeah, I think he, <laughs> I think Black has uh, Michi's got a reasonable reasonable amount of winning chances here. Contact values, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, he's got some funny numbers coming in. Um, six three being one. Do Four that? two looks safe. Gets Four rid of the two. eight point. And we need a set to clear the midpoint safely. Fours is a funny one. Yeah, I don't think he wants to roll an ace here. 
<laughs> is that an eight? Also kind of <laughs> any okay, eight. play safe. This is there's a safe eight. Yeah. Okay, that was. I think he's going to have to do that. Yeah. That wasn't the eight I was talking about. Yeah. <laughs> you want to roll six two, and then you wonder whether you have to come down with two or hit. <laughs> All right. And Michi's okay. pretty ready for the contact. Yeah. Here. So let's. Okay. Two one. Okay. Let's Delay it one more ready. roll. It's being stubborn here. Huh. Yeah. Great PRs for both of them here. It's, it's tough to play under a three and lose the PR battle for sure. Yeah, but see, after 12, I was talking to one of these guys that were all saying their brains are fried. Yeah. Um, it's a pretty tough job to still generate these PRs after 12 consecutive. That's typically the feedback people played the tournament before. Three straight days of five matches yeah. with so much pressure on those matches too. Here we go. Yeah. We got the yeah. hit. I mean, is it all over now or is it possible that Dirk rolls a three? I, I don't really know. Mitchie's hot, hot favorite. Three up. Oh. What's the what's the what's is the other roll? Oh, that's three, three. three. <laughs> that's a pretty good three. Is that a three four? <laughs> oh, and of fan. course he fans. Okay, of okay. course, of course. Dirk doing his part. Of course, he also doesn't come out. <laughs> it's all. Oh, why did he re-roll? I thought it was a four three. Might have been cocked. I didn't see that thing. I would have before it stopped spinning. You just grab it and say cocked. <laughs> she would be like, no, 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 no. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, everyone who's played this before, I mean, grueling three days for sure. Yeah. And I've been curious too, you know, there's uh, plenty of players in the field that I don't think have played one of these events before. Yeah, yeah. Um, you might not know what's coming yeah. if you haven't done three days like that before, you know? So yeah, I'm sure people like Michi and Dirk are prepared to feel exactly like this on day three. Yeah, yeah. yeah doing everything they can to manage that. All right. 4-1 okay. enters, misses. Uh, I guess, yeah, I think this makes sense. We don't uh, let uh, Dirk buy time in the outfield, and we've got yeah. great coverage back with that split. Uh, the split is exactly 11 and 12 away, almost ideal distribution. Yeah. So looking pretty good. Uh, double twos, OK. Dirk has the option of clearing two more checkers from the three point and staying out of direct range for a seven or eight to hit, most like a direct. Yes. 12 numbers or something. Oh, Ooh, and misses. Okay. I think just both from the 12 makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And if Dirk can leap it, he's going to be in good shape to win this match. Of course. What does he hear? Is that double four? Double four? Oh, and hits on the way? Okay. Yeah, that's, that's over. Yeah, this is going to be tough one for Michi now. <laughs> Most likely. I mean, of course, plus plus can change things quite a bit. Oh, okay. Dirk offers his hand. <laughs> oh, it's getting harder. You needed an ace there. I think so. I can never tell. Is it 100%? Yeah, I think she says 100. Probably. I'd make him roll it. Okay, he resorts. <laughs> oh, what an exciting one. We've got a lot of just uh, top notch competition at the end here. What a, what a battle that was in all those games, too. A lot of very difficult games, and somehow they kept it under, under a under three, three and almost a two, one. Yeah. Just <laughs> wild stuff. And like, way at the top end of your range on, on the games, I think. Um, so coming up next in round 14, we're going to have Thomas Meir, who's always a contender to make it to the finals. I think he's a little bit out after the two. And Ali Chatin Bidlin, who is uh, second place in the field in the PR with like a five, I think. And getting in on points anyway, just having uh, the tournament. Outstanding. Um, so very excited to see them on stream at 4.30, 20 minutes from now. Uh, we've been Nick Blazer here with the ref, our ref. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> we, should, we should be. <laughs> we'll be back soon. Yeah. Uh, I will be sure to join me some more. Maybe yeah. I'll come help out. Take yeah. Yeah. Bye, everybody. We'll be back soon.
the 6-5, the ball was forced. There was a forced move. Uh -huh. uh, for maybe, sure. maybe two or three or five. Yeah.
The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app is coming soon. Star membership, high analysis, blunder database, private games, coin games, rating games, and much, much more. The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app is coming soon. Star membership, high analysis, blunder database, private games, coin games, rating games, and much, much more. The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app is coming soon. Star membership, high analysis, blunder database, private games, coin games, rating games, and much, much more. The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app is coming soon. Star membership, high analysis, blunder database, private games, coin games, rating games, and much, much more. The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app is coming soon. Star membership, high analysis, blunder database, private games, coin games, rating games, and much, much more. The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app is coming soon. Star membership, 
high analysis, blunder database, private games, coin games, rating games, and much, much more. Hi everyone, so I'm going to play uh, Ali Belen 
who's a, an extremely strong player. I already met him uh, twice in Marbella. I played really well in those two matches. I lost anyway on the PR. So I'm expecting an extremely tough match. Um, it has really been a great tournament. I love the UBC format. Uh, it's a competition on skills, you could say, and a little bit of luck also due to the fact that you also have to need some wins to qualify. So the streaming has been absolutely perfect during UBC. Uh, I must really say that you have done a great job. Um, so, but now I'm looking forward to play. Me too. And uh, hi, everybody. Uh, of course, it's an amazing tournament uh, so far and uh, stuff and uh, uh, all kinds of things is uh, perfect here. Uh, we love uh, UBC format, uh, as Thomas said. Uh, skills is important uh, for me, uh, not winning the matches. Uh, I'm so satisfied with my uh, PR so far. I hope uh, I will finish it uh, in the uh, top, ter, top three uh, players range. Uh, let's see, we, we had a great uh, memories in Marbella. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, so I heard uh, you are, uh, from the players that they, they are saying that you are the best in Turkey. So uh, what do you think about the UBC in Istanbul? Uh, of course, it's a great opportunity for our community and I forced my uh, close friends uh, to join here. Uh, some of them is now in the uh, first aid. I'm happy uh, for them as well. Uh, especially uh, Umur, Junaid, Ibrahim uh, are my uh, training uh, partners. Uh, so I'm very happy for them uh, also. And to thank you guys. It's an amazing uh, tournament. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I could, I could add that uh, I've been extremely surprised how many really good Turkish players I have met uh, during this tournament. So I didn't know that there existed so many really top class Turkish players. So uh, I was, I've been really happy to play against uh, some really, really good Turkish players. So and now my final Turkish player in, <laughs> <laughs> in this UBC format, so yeah. Your final, so yeah. you're not expecting to... Oh, the, the, I have one match left. Um, yeah. In the first series, he wants to meet. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, thank you. <laughs>
Hey everybody, Nick Blazer back here, and we're about to get started with Ali Chatin Malin, one of the top performers in the tournament right now. Thomas Muir from Denmark, always favorite to make it into the quarterfinals. I'm gonna have RF Keen on commentary with me, whichever whoever wants to. <laughs> yeah, whatever. We'll get one of them. Um, yeah, we'll get kicked off shortly here. Excited for this match for sure. <laughs> yeah, we're going, Wilson. Or maybe I'll get neither of them. They're, they're going to be polite to each other the entire time, and I'll just talk about backgammon. It's cool. <laughs> uh, six o'clock is the next round, RF. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Come join me, Keith. Yeah, yeah. You get this headset reel here. You have to... <laughs> nice. Oh, yeah, you can wave to us if you have thoughts. Just give us the signal from the board, you know, and we'll, we'll know. It'll be cool. <laughs> Sweet. So I got Keen Marin here from, with me from, from Madison, Wisconsin via Scotland. Is that how that works? <laughs> All right. In town for the Estavder tournament. Uh, did you think about playing the UBC or not? <laughs> this sounds familiar i think this was rf's excuse too um you know it's just nice to find out where people's priorities are i guess you know that's something <laughs> but uh you went and checked out the tournament two room already too huh it's pretty wild in there i can't believe how big that is <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so Keen uh, runs the Madison back Evan Club, Madison, Wisconsin, where I am now. And what's your name on Galaxy too? Kilted. Okay. Okay. I always get confused because there's like a Keen to learn guy. That's like someone else. Yeah. It's uh, I don't know. There's impersonators all over the place, man. Imposters. Kilted. You can get some from Kilted. I think we hang around in similar spots on the leaderboard, typically. So. I think so. <laughs> oh, yeah? yeah. Uh-oh. That doesn't sound good. Oh, a new, like, a new user, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Why do I think I heard, uh, I saw something in the blacklist about a Joe Rogan on there. Of course, this is how it has to go. Yeah. Well, cool. This should be a great match. Do you are you familiar with either of these players, Keen? Uh, no. Oh, some streams. My bad. I had you muted that entire time. Oh my god. So, uh, <laughs> we got Keen Marin with here. I don't know how much you heard of that. Uh, six one point open. Did you say you weren't familiar with either of these players? No, but I've been watching some of the streams. Okay. So, uh, but yeah. Super strong player, and he's having like the PR results of his life basically on this right now. I think he's averaging a 2.25 after day two. Uh, pretty wild stuff. I, yeah, I got him, Wilson. Thank you. <laughs> I realized it when they told us in the chat. Um, Thomas, I think, is doing his usual stuff, uh, which is often enough to get him into the finals. You know, Thomas Beer is always a strong player. Uh, what is it? He has a. Okay. So, yeah, after the two down, he has to cover and slot the bar instead of splitting into all this structure in front. Uh, slightly ahead in the race, so the, the priming choice is the better one. That's that's kind of a tricky find already. Okay, okay. Both playing really clean so far. 3-1, I guess. If he wasn't splitting last time, it's getting more reasonable now. Yeah, you got to split the back. Uh, slightly better on 2-ply to play 6-5, it says. But last time he had that option with the ace and slotted instead, and I'm not... I guess the building potential was so strong that he maybe there is duplication probably. And just need a board of his own. This time, splitting is a reasonable progression of the position. Um, behind a prime, yeah, just running here makes a lot of sense. Out of time on the midpoint, too. Everything else is going to be destructive, too. 4 3, what a shot. Uh, oh, which way is it a great shot, though? Yeah. <laughs> this is the three. Anchor. Yeah. Two down. What is it? This Both is, are so oh, strong. So oh, I'm looking at this side of the board at uh, his, his back checker side. I didn't think about the 13 to 9, but that's, that's something to consider, too. Um, yeah. Uh, second checker behind the prime, and you're half escapes. He has to break the midpoint to hit you. 
Uh, it's hard to pass up on the anchor, but I'm just looking at all the, the plus side of hitting here, too. Yeah, it does look good. I mean, I, I think I'd naturally prefer making the anchor. Just mm -hmm. It's so clean, and your opponent's already made his four points. So mm -hmm. getting ahead of that's always a good thing. I think it's probably too aggressive just to play two down and hit that checker on the nine. Yeah, it doesn't do anything about your back checkers and disconnects yeah. them while they're primed. So we have to play back here, I think. But he's going to look at all the numbers and how it progresses. The, the, the only tricky part, we have a clear advantage if we make the anchor, but I don't see how I'm about to win the game either from here. You know, um, I think maybe there's sequences after the hit where I, I feel it feels more dominating somehow, you know? Could be. Yeah. But they're, very, of course, very close. 2 6, yeah, links up with our, our new outfield anchor. Nice, easy shot for Ali. 6 5. I don't think something from the front's got to go. We definitely need to keep our anchor in this position. We like the contact on the mid. Hate yeah. making a deep point like the two, but I I don't see many other options. Oh, yeah, I, I think I'd be inclined just to make the two. I suppose the other one is to slot both checkers off the eight point to the, mm. three and the two. Um, but certainly keeping the anchor, no flinching there. Mm -hmm. Keeping the midpoint, <laughs> you need that while you've got that anchor in the five point. So something like 8382 or 2 point i don't mind yeah when you leave the midpoint here too you do give your opponent quite a bit of potential to prime you actually on that 20 point um this is a place where it does kind of matter to have some presence up there i think not always the case when it's stripped like this true yeah who's going to pick between those options both pretty good though he can be pretty deliberate and get in some time trouble as a result. <laughs> and he's definitely one that starts to feel tired by the third day. I mean, uh, sees a lot in the game, you know, and it's hard to keep doing that day after day in a row. Um, everyone's feeling a lot of fatigue kind of at this point. If you, I don't know if you've had a chance to talk to the players at all, but. Uh, Just wanted to. Simon was, uh, I talked to Simon, Simon a little bit and he said he was going off to his room for a rest. He was tired. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, and he finds the clearing the midpoint, just can't bring himself to make the impure points. I, I understand that for sure. Small mistake here. Uh, who is doing commentary here? It's Keen Marin here with uh, with me, Nick Blazier, your usual guy. Oh, yeah. oh, you oh, you've got the chat on the phone. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You can check check it whenever you want. I don't have the earbud or something. Is that what <laughs> okay, and not really punished for leaving the midpoint. I doubt he regrets it too much. Um, five, three makes a point in the board. Oh, we can start to clear the rear here, I guess. Um, interesting. I, I don't think I would have found that, but nice tactical opportunity with the two blots on board. The six, five is no longer going to hit where it might leave some fly shots in the outfield later. That's the kind of feel, uh, play I'd find if I was leading the race more, but given how even it is, it's a little confusing here. That race looks so close. It is very I, close. I don't, I, I don't find the... The 16 to 8 play, I don't think. I guess the issue with 8 to 3, 6 to 3, is that you have no spares and you're going to leave something next roll. Oh, yeah. Uh, so you're out of time. Um, but And he spots it. That's very good. I guess the 8 to 3 variant can't be much different than the, than the 13 to 8. 4 to, what is this? I presume we're playing down from the mid then now. Yeah, I think 13 to oh. 7 looks pretty... Oh, that's a nice little, I like the 16 to 12 idea so that we um, get still leaving an indirect with those three blots on the board, but we get a little closer to safety so we don't risk leaving that outfield blot stranded once Thomas does make his board. Yeah. Um, very close plays, though. That's that's the interesting thing when you have those kind of uh, three half made points in your home board, it converts so quickly. Yeah. So, you know, for Ali to uh, find just a quick quick moment to clear those checkers when he can. It's a good idea. And this should develop pretty simply like a usual holding game. If Ali can get a significant racing lead, of course, the cube will be coming, but it's way too close for now. Oh, yeah. And Thomas, that clearing the mid is hurting his PR in this game so far, but otherwise pretty clean game. That'll come down as he gets more decisions, of course. Double fives, that could do it. We're going to, I guess he's going to quickly check in on the race, make sure that that running home and breaking contact entirely is the right idea. Once he sees that, it's going to be easy to the three, and Thomas is going to have to roll something decent to stay in this game. 
Yep. Um, looks like he's got to find himself. Where I guess does he always have a take? Is 2-1, yeah, is like down 12 pips after the roll, so maybe that's still takeable with the anchor. It should be a cube. But he's going to need uh, something. Yeah. So I think one of the things there is that you don't really want to go odd at the back just in case mm -hmm. you roll those sixes. Yeah. So quite often you'll, you'll try and find a play that leaves you with an even number. And Thomas spots this quickly too, that uh, the race is close and burying to the ace. You can only hold that for one roll anyway, and it's bad for the close race. So this capitalizes most on it. Five pips isn't going to be enough to see the cube anyway. Um, so good heads up play to play both out. Yep, definitely agree. The thing is, is you, you go into deep wastage as soon as you stay. So yeah. you realize you have to go with at least one and you have to go with two. Yeah. Uh, oh, and the cube decision is actually pretty close there. That's interesting to see. Nice. Someone in the chat says Ali is the best Turkish commentator, Turkish commentator, Turkish player. Yeah, as soon as someone else proves to be better in the UBC, I'll buy otherwise. But but he's got my vote for now. Nice roll for Thomas here. Yeah. Someone asks if a player can move a checker while thinking about the cube. All these weird rule things, man. I don't know how people come up with them. I don't know. I, I hope they don't. <laughs> That's how I feel about it. It's a clever one. I bet there's not a rule against it explicitly, though. Probably not. Yeah. That's just a goofy thing. You know what there, I don't think there's a rule against is like throwing the table. <laughs> I really think you shouldn't do it, but. Uh... I, I've heard of stories. <laughs> Fast, yeah. Where tables of chairs. Oh. Saying uh, six three and doesn't understand the play that was made, so I think he's gonna find out as a four six and get that real quick. Get caught up on transcription. Maybe the hardest job in here. I guess playing under a three pretty tough. I might give that away <laughs> the five matches, but second hardest has to be transcription, live transcription. You can't miss anything, and as soon as you do, like the the match has to pause and you feel bad. Like ruining their flow and everything. It's it's just tough work. Oh yeah. The uh those guys, I mean, they are just on the computer. They're absolutely focused all the time. It's pretty crazy, pretty hard work. Gotta appreciate their efforts really. Can you dive and thinking about lunch? That is impressively unintelligible. I like that. Dive and thinking about lunch. It's a really good I don't know. Okay, we got to yeah. a cube. Oh. <laughs> What do we got here? We got seven pips. How much wastage? A little oh. bit. Maybe punish one on the three. Is it same checkers off? Oh, he's not using the tray. Oh, Thomas isn't. Okay. Thomas gets punished. So one extra. So maybe it's like 45 sending six pips. Maybe we take off five. Point of last take should be around five. So it looks like close to the pass borderline. I guess the distribution's a little worse than it looks to, to uh, get the EPC to balance out somewhere where we're in take range for Thomas. Uh, easy decision for Ali, though. He must be close to the, the market loss, so he sends it and makes a problem for Thomas to figure out. What kind of racing formula do you have for this one? Do you have something that tells you it's a take? Um, I tend to just, I'll count the gaps. I use the raw race and I'll count the gaps, penalize a pip here, gain a pip there. How many extras on this? How many Thomas passes it. I would have found a pass too, but I don't know. Do you, did it look like a take to you or did you bother no, to count I, <laughs> I was leaning towards pass myself. Yeah. And I can see there that it's a small error, but, mm -hmm. um, but uh, no, the distribution was nice. Mm -hmm. Seven pips for me, it just at that, at that race, mm -hmm. that was just a little bit on the high end, I felt. But Someone again, says throwing the tables in a legal play, which if I understand the rules correctly, is on your opponent to notice and correct. So um, <laughs> as long as you both catch that that occurred, you just resolve it okay. reset the board. Okay. <laughs> I don't make sense that. to me, yeah. Next time I feel like throwing a table, <laughs> <laughs> my opponent has to pick it up. Got it. Okay, what is this? It's like 4-4. Four, four. And uh, he hates stripping the mid. That looks best. It's hard to develop from there. I don't think 6-2 to two just thematically doesn't make any sense. So maybe the other option is continuing to the 16, but I think, yeah, it's constructive. 13-9 to nine makes plenty of sense to me. Giving up the midpoint is going to be okay now that you have the 22. Yep. Uh, yeah, we're covering, and then best five is down. Really needs to 
Oh, eight to three. Okay, so he should just leave the blot and focus on splitting against this priming structure. That's pretty interesting. Would have regretted it for sure, too. Um, fives, yeah, we're going to run to a race. The five prime, okay. Hasn't made a point yet, but is going to have a cube decision potentially anyway. Oh, this, this ought to freeze it. Oh, this, um, yeah. We do have to come up to the edge of the prime, right? This is one of those funky ones where obviously we have better contact if we stay back. Um, so it's not always super instant that you should be moving up in a losing race like this, but I, I think his building roles are going to be too good if we don't put some pressure on those outside points. Um, maybe I'd think about freezing at the 22 and see if I can find something there. I'd, I'd be leaning more yeah. there, but, you know. Yeah, because, um, I mean, here, most roles that build the five or the four should leave us a direct shot anyway. We're down in the race. I, I like the contact idea here. Um, I'm not really sure how to pick the 24 to 20. Of course, it's the first place you see it, play you see, but it feels like we might be taking a, a pretty challenging cube shortly after making a play like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so when you're down in the race, the idea is to stay back normally, mm -hmm. right? But here, um, you want to, you're down in the race, you want to maintain a degree of contact, which is why I think uh, mm -hmm. uh, Thomas is sitting looking at that 22 point. And I mean, that's, that's where I would start going to, but I mean, clearly we can see here that the, uh, this play makes a lot there. of sense to me. I'll be interested to see if plus plus changes it. Yeah. Um, but Ali sees, he thinks, okay. So if, if Ali is correct, that there's a cube action immediately after this, then that, that explains why it's not such a great play. Right. <laughs> I don't think he quite had a cube yet. Yeah. He comes up and makes the 20. Um, but I guess this just rates to develop as a race so well. And he's kind of stuck behind it, has no double six outs or anything like that. So yeah. a couple of small swings like that. Um, but it does seem like a complicated game for for Ali to navigate now. 3-1, yes. doesn't get to make a point. Still kind of awkward here, waiting for yeah. some nice roll to do that. He's, he's got to get good numbers to make those, the, the five point, the four point, or he's got to shoot past to, to the back. There. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a big question of timing this one. That's real sharp from Ali, though. Like, I guess he can be thinking about it. Thomas is making his play, but just instantly sent that cube. That was oh, yeah. not a clear cube decision to me. <laughs> so. Well, he'd rolled double fours. He'd rolled double fives. Sure, sure. So he knows he's about 15, 20 pips up in the race. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And at this length, at this uh, length, I don't know, you... I would take a minute to count the race myself, but... Well, cool. We got someone checking plays, too, and 24-20 was best by 122. That's a hard, very understandable mistake thematically to me. Oh, yeah, I definitely. trouble with that one. Uh, you heard I wasn't inclined to go there. <laughs> so I'm also making that 122 error. Unless I'm playing speed game, and then I might find the 24-20. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, do we have another transcription moment here? Oh, we got to check the stream for this one. Uh oh. I got him the coffee before this. I thought he'd be good to go. You know, <laughs> that's, that should be enough. It's the energy juice. We'll see. I'm not sure what he missed here. The six, for some reason, the six five is giving him trouble. He's got that okay. And then we roll, uh, must have been uh, five four one to make the five point. And now it is, what happened after that? Almost double fives. Double fives is next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we've got Ali with the four two to play that he got to think about a bunch. No, okay. <laughs> Gonna reroll. I think this just clears from the back. Uh, oh, we have a six prime, so we can just slot. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Good find. And you're not gonna be overly worried about slotting here either. Yeah, a little bit because I mean there is counter prime potential if you get hit. It's you can get stuck back there and crack, and now Thomas has some game. But I, I still, what you're really worried about is not making the force. Yeah. Yeah. What is this six one? Yep. So yep. make it. I'd be inclined to leave that last check of where he is. Five to four. Yeah. Seems fine. Yeah, leaves you a six to play next roll that doesn't crack to prime. So. Holding that for a little while while Thomas uh, cracks his position seems kind of nice. Thomas is leading the race now, so um, we're inclined towards priming. Yeah, yeah, that is a good find from Ali. I might have thought about six to five as well, just to try to keep myself a six to keep that prime a little longer. Um, this is just crossover 
better distribution, all these things. Double sixes is going to help fix the race, okay? But he could have trouble clearing now. Autopilot that. Yep. Nothing six silly. one, six two are the nightmares next time, right? He's forced to run out there. Four or five six, one, makes six, two. Okay. going to pick and pass. They play a little better now. <laughs> it's six five, I guess. Six four is a little different. Yep. Turns into the new nightmare. Not really a nightmare, but you know. But it's winnable yeah. from Thomas. Just needs to hit oh, one yeah. shot. Hit the shot and go. Yeah. Okay. Five minus two hits on the three. <laughs> Six three cleans up beautifully. Okay, oh, yeah. some edge gammons here, probably less than ten percent, but uh, Ollie pretty in the clear, even being odd on the outside. I think he's going to bear off pretty aggressively to try to increase those chances. Um, nothing to do with that here. Maybe three to two feels technically better, but can't tell. Was that Ollie's first point oh oh six mistake? I think he just jumped up to point one one. Yeah. Wow, really off his game on that one. I, know, <laughs> I don't know yeah. how he didn't find that distribution play. <laughs> this is pretty wild stuff from Ali. Having a great tournament. I'm excited for him. What is this? Something that clears safely? 5-3. Yeah. Did you notice the dice on there? I don't remember if I pointed that out to you. Um, I, have, the bottom of the I board. have noticed them, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It helps. The glare kind of keeps you from seeing the dice a lot of times. 4-1, nice safe play. Yeah. Looking good. Gammons are going up here. We're getting closer. Um, One more fan. Okay. I wonder what percentage they're up to now. Maybe getting in like the 20 range. 15, 20% maybe. Double twos, I think. We're going to take at least one off, I guess, right? And then do we have to safety up for all our sets or go for the gammon is the idea again. It but doesn't get us a, a you checker closer. You get any extra. Yeah, so I think... You still, I mean, yeah. you got six checkers off instead of five. It's still a, an odd number, right? Yeah, still nine left, which is still... Uh, same number of rolls, so yeah. I, I would have been inclined to play safe. Um, it looks like that was correct, though, according to XG. So Ali knows something, but I don't. Know. I don't. Yeah. yeah, I was noticing that with these players this weekend. They know, a lot of <laughs> they things we know these things yeah. that I don't know. Yeah, I don't <laughs> understand it. Okay, so we're looking for something silly here for Ali mm -hmm. to get that gammon. Just one set, I think, is yeah. all it takes. It's kind of close. Very close. Five, oh, five is good anymore. enough to save it. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thomas is going to be pretty happy with that. And going to resign the single game. Okay. And four away, seven away. What a fun score. I don't think I've seen that all weekend yet. Um, that's the nice leading score. The one where you still get to be aggressive with the cube. If you get in gammonish positions, don't have to worry about that so much. Yeah, I'm a big fan of those. I like those five-way scores as well. I know a lot of people don't, but... Yeah, they're silly. Five-way scores are no fun. <laughs> oh, I, I like them a lot. <laughs> I think Michi specifically says it's a stupid score. Well, you know. <laughs> what does Michi know, right? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> as I retire to my room to read his books. Right? Um, I think I want to see him go in the Estabda room empty and yell are you ready to roll the dice as loud as you can <laughs> i think that'd be a good video give him that idea we got a five two okay yeah hops out makes the 11 looks nice and that's a, that's always one of those where you you make the 11 first and then you find your, your best five afterwards yeah. and this is interesting okay with the better board if he's down in the race the splitting play becomes more viable running it was still my instinct here but uh very sharp to be looking at this of course i love it know that 6-5 doesn't just leap to the oh, yeah. mid. There's other options. Yeah, I tried to make contact. Yep. He wants a contact-based game here. Yeah, and still, uh, so only a head three after the goal with the better board. More pressure on that outfield block to get home to safety, which uh, Ali rolls a nice roll to do that anyway. But oh, double four is always nice. Yeah, is this going to make the nine or there. the two? Probably the two yeah. a little better here. Yeah. Okay, actually, actually, slightly favors the nine. I'd be thinking about the board as well. Um, two more in the zone is kind of nice with the nine two, and it does communicate with the prime, so both have merit. Well, uh, it's, it's like a six three. It's part of Thomas's game plan, isn't it? He wants to, to yeah. get a fast, hard board so that he can activate that cube early with a high number of gammons rather than just it converting into a holding or a running game. 
This is a fun little backgammon decision here. Do we want to make the five point hit run all our things that we were thinking about doing, I think? Oh, down in the race, I guess Ali is not inclined to run anymore. So we're thinking about the other two. Yep. Um, yeah, there's there's not really a good three after hitting, and we don't have any board yet. Our opponent is a four point board. So I think making the fives there. I think so look at them all. There's, there's, I don't think there's any good logical reason to hit. He must need to count the race to know that this is wrong. He might not realize that he's down already. I think once he sees that, it'll be a pretty easy decision. Um, this play, though, I bet brings a cube. Being uh, ahead in the race, outboarding for Thomas, like uh, in trailing in the match. Um, any excuse at this point. Yeah. Any excuse. Mm -hmm. You see, you see a block that you can fire at, and yeah. it's in direct range. Then get that cube flipped over there. He's got all the variables yeah. in play. He's got a great board. Yeah. He's got a, uh, a nice little race lead. And to be perfectly honest, I'm I'm more wondering about the, the take pass at the other end of it. So I think if he's missed, he has a very good game and Thomas still has two checkers to get around. I don't actually know if I would consider doubling this for money after this one. If I would, then you have to think about passing at the score, but I don't think it's that sensitive. So we'll see though. Yeah. Um that is a pretty reasonable question. I think when he makes the five point though, I think it's I don't see any reason to cube from there. Um, Which, maybe, maybe leading in the race, making using a six to make the anchor. That could be a market loser, actually. So the cube's coming either way. We'll see. We'll see what Thomas thinks of this position. That piece of board is just really quite a big improvement, I think, with those two checkers back. That's most of your game right now. You don't have any offensive structure, so you get to start with some of that. Um, okay. Yeah, it's going back to the five point here. Hitting is not an option, apparently. Okay. Sharp. Yeah. Finds best play. Thomas is not going to consider the cube. I do, I, I have, I wonder if making the bar is enough to lose your market there. Kind of curious. Um, yeah, lifting the blot seems strong. Making the eight is less valuable when you have the two already. Six, four, he's going to get to think about running again, but I think we're making the bar I point a little bit. Too good here. Yeah. And you want to catch a prime. Well, it's getting really close now. Now that uh, he's escaped the unchecker completely, almost an even race after he runs. Um, once those checkers start to come to the outfield, he's pretty quickly, but super okay. Plus, actually, brings it down quite a bit. It feels like quite a bit better to make the bar. I was a, <laughs> I was a little bit surprised to see the running was so close on the. Three five. So I think you do have to see the light. It's scary to do so with that stack on this. Though. He really wants to unload on you, and you give him the opportunity to do it. Um, I think you have to though. Yeah, definitely. And hopping out just gives more shots with no, you know, clean no up reward. tactically cleaning up the blot seals. Nice. You don't particularly want the eight, but uh, what is this? Four two is amazing. Well, to, yeah. And. Ali, in this kind of game, could get to a cube pretty easily. There's going to be serious gammon threat if Thomas doesn't perform here. I think he's still behind a little bit too much structure, but it's getting close fast. Yeah. That fan was painful. Um, this is the kind of cube where it it might probably plays a lot like money. Um, of course, the re-cube really hurts you. You hate that. But the gammon value goes up so much. And definitely gammons in this position. Uh, you don't want to lose your chance to to earn on them. Uh, so it definitely makes a lot of sense to spend some time on this one. And so close to you know, that it's going to be tough to know uh, what the correct decision is. And rolling, okay. Yeah. Decision. Oh, we get to cover and step up. This is often a market loser. Market losing sequence. I'm surprised he finds this six to four. It makes sense for the gammons, I but I like to step up and have more numbers out. 22 is a little better place to be right now. I would have hated being hit with that five though. <laughs> <laughs> so what do I know? Uh, what is this now? Now this feels like we've got market loss for sure, um, but that doesn't mean that it's become a cube. Um, okay, it's gotten worse. Close. Yeah, I mean, typically when, when I find myself in these you know, cube, no cube decisions. I'll look at the race and if it's, if it's close, then I'll probably lean towards more, no double, but certainly structure is important. So. Yeah. The interesting thing here. Okay. He's, I mean, it's hard not to send the cube when your, your intention is to hit loose like this, the next play. 
Um, and when it works, you're clearly going to win. And yeah. when it doesn't, you're you're gonna you know you want to take advantage of those upswings. Um, Thirteen to eleven. Wow. How I'm never finding that with this. I play twenty four to twenty. Um, this just feels a little awkward, but okay. Yeah. Uh, avoids the fives from the bar again. How do we find thirteen to eleven? I don't know. How do you find thirteen to eleven? That's there. a weird one. Okay. Three four. So three in. I guess four down. Although that does duplicate a covering six out there, so maybe yeah. eight to four would be better. Eight to four looks like don't no need to play with an extra blot. Okay. Okay. Ali says no problem. A little bit punished for that. Mm -hmm. And again, we're in the likely cube territory. Never mind. Thomas fixes some problems with that anchor. I think. Yeah, this is of course still got very good structure too. But if Ali enters and can make some headway here, the five prime in front of the 22 can be enough to send the cube a lot of the time too. Uh, now Thomas with the initiative trailing the match wants to think about the cube, but behind is a five prime. I can't see it. Two checkers behind there and his sixes are duplicated. He needs that six yeah. to make them. So I think it's some priorities around a little bit there. 13, nine is a great shot that uh, blocks the 22 entry the two point and helps uh make the two point well it's a really nice asset to have in this particular position yeah another fan yeah. just and i really this is the kind of thing where i think if you if you were to like make the three point i don't know where that would double threes we'll go with that maybe that's what he does with that um if we have that threatening of a board then maybe it's enough to send a cube when you're behind the prime but look at this these numbers trailing in the match He's not going to get recubed ever, and he might be about to lose his market somehow. So it's important to get it in in time when you're trailing seven away, four away, and we are pretty close to a cube here too. Yeah, for me the the thing is the duplication of those sixes. You need to get you need to clear those out, get rid of them. Maybe you switch your no maybe ace point of course. Oh, double yeah. fours, yeah, yeah. So sometimes you blitz like this just to allow yourself time to escape. Uh, we'll see what Ali plays in. So this is the kind of sequence I was talking about where I can find a cube here now, I think, because a six feels like a pretty big market loser. Uh, entering one might be enough to fend it off, but I think I want to send now. I mean, look at these gamins. This is another feature of this is, is when this works in this position, you win a gammon just so often. Yep. Um, okay, if this works, we're getting maybe closer to the cash side of the cube now. Um, but Ali performs, okay. And now the cube should be a long way off. Oh, yeah. Three checkers behind a five prime is tough. Ali might even be able to think about it real soon here. Um, he's got real, entering with a three is probably a market loser. And look at that. Yeah. It's, what is Thomas's follow up to? He really needs that deuce before the six, doesn't have any time to do it, needs three sixes totally. And so a lot of the market losing sequences are going to be when Thomas just cracks. Um, even if Ali doesn't enter. So fairly easy cube for him to find and still at the score and for money, really. This is just a, a take type of position. Um, you have the anchor. It's hard to find these. It feels like a priming game, but it's important to remember that it is also a 22 point holding game where you're doing well in the race. So um, I don't know, they, they play quite a bit like that, you know, if you yeah. can make them. It's, he's got challenges to do that. But you do have that alternative game plan of pointing on Ali's head, crashing your board while you try to roll the six, and yeah. you might just stay in the air, you know? So when you can blitz through in a priming position, you're a lot extra big, too. Yes, you do. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we'll finding see. the take here, though, this, you know, because Thomas's position is going to crumble if he doesn't immediately perform. It is certainly a very uncomfortable take. I think I expect oh, yeah. most people to pass these. I think I like to take these even when they're 200 errors. I like. <laughs> <laughs> See how you can do this. The justification I always use is it's really hard to cube from the bar. <laughs> Must be a take. Yeah, yeah. Um, so especially against a five-point board like that. Yeah. That's a great find, though. Great mm -hmm. find. And I don't know. Can we find a take here? Yeah. Maybe Ali knows he isn't clear on whether it would be a take or not and makes a really easy cube for him. It did seem like he just whipped it immediately. Yeah, I'd love to see the summary again. I think Ali is still playing like a, 
Um, I think we need two decimal places to understand what PRE is playing. Otherwise, it's just a zero. Yeah, it's yeah, it's <laughs> it was point one something. Yeah, that's sharp stuff. Yeah, yeah. Those Not mochi numbers right there. Completely <laughs> trivial decisions either. Yeah, I'll be excited to talk to him. I don't know if he's like studying different or really working on his game lately. But I mean, of course, very strong player. Um, just okay. He's playing a one point three nine now. Okay, okay. That's like almost human. <laughs> really good stuff. Really good stuff. Yeah, it felt like Thomas was leading him past, didn't it? Yeah. That's understandable. Quite understandable. Yeah, it requires that immediate performance of immediate six really to get out. He's getting really tough decisions and kind of getting punished being on the wrong side of a lot of them here. I, I don't feel like he's playing poorly or anything like that, but his PR is definitely less than he wants it to be in this match. Yeah, that, that, that one for me is very forgivable. Yeah. Uh, really exciting matches toward the end here. 6-5, this time it just runs. It's always fun to look how close the split is in all those, though. Only 0.029 off. Yeah. It's a good option. But, you know, a point you made earlier as well, this, this is day three. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And these are intense matches. For yeah. everybody that's playing. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if ever you guys have been doing, but at tournaments, I find on day three, you know, I've got to be well rested to be able to handle these <laughs> things. Yeah. So yeah. That for these and the level of going on here is definitely, this is hard mentally and physically. Well, you maybe made a potentially made a small mistake there. I'm really surprised it's a 6 5. Instead of making the five point, you should run 24 to 13. Uh, I'm never finding that. No, I'm, I'm making the five point. Either. I'm going to make the five point two. I've seen it before, and I'm still just like, nope, I don't want to learn that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to make the five point. That's fine. Tricky technical things. Four six. I think he's going to run this time. Consolidating the race feels pretty nice. I guess it could be a slightly score induced thing too. Uh, his preferred game type is a simple race, probably. Don't want to get into any complicated gammonish cube kind of situations where where Thomas can leverage his trailing score. Oh yeah, so Ali is certainly looking to have simple positions, simple structures, simple games, and so you know that type of running maneuver or play it becomes more clear, especially when you're leading a match like that too. This is an interesting find here. I wouldn't think about Slip coming under five. the gun Come on. with the worst uh, with the worst board, with a weaker board. But I guess um, I think the theme here must be that the blot on the 14 doesn't always come home safely. It puts more pressure on it to do that when you step up and cover the outfit. Uh, Ali gets to play like this now, where he would have to just play 14 to 8. So some upside for sure. Oh, yeah. Double five is gonna make two home board points. Yeah, I'll stack that six. Thomas is gonna be looking to escape. Ali looking to make the bar point here to start to contain trailing in the race now. Five three looks like right. Yeah, just gonna make a board point. Yeah, three point it is. I mean, ideally he wants to make the four, then the bar, then the three. But you know, if the three is all you got, then so I'm probably gonna make the five. Oh, and leaving the race, you could think about coming up. Okay, interesting. Better distribution or something. I think he just finds that know, pretty quickly. When the race is close enough, you just don't want to step under the gun. You don't yeah. want to give your your opponent that opportunity yeah. to go smack it on you. Very true. What is Four, three. Yeah, two down. You don't really love to have the nine along with the three points, but the two point isn't so desirable. Makes the eight weaker. Makes your distribution pretty weak for making the points you want. So makes sense to me. Um, yeah, I think Thomas is happy to make the five point board with the deuce point though. Oh yeah, I think so. And Ali's still hoping to make some blocking points. The race feels closer than it was. So I guess just two down here, just make it nice and easy and clean. Yeah, five three is awkward. It's nice to have that. The 10 communicates nicely with the open four points. So it is really nice to make that it just feels like you should be able to do something more with this yeah, one position I, than, so, than make the 10 points. So. Yeah, the alternative there is this, uh, which is structurally, it's just unsound. You, you're, you've lost flexibility. 
no longer have any opportunity to to move freely in the outfield. So yeah, I think two down, even though you know he's behind in the race, you don't really want to break the contact. Mm -hmm. Um but two down is just I think most future flexibility, I think. Yeah. And this punished way, on six four, six five, six six. Sad about those for sure. Um but yeah, long term Ali's next role is gonna play a lot smoother when he doesn't make something like this. Yeah. Nice and natural. There you go. There's no. a runner right there. I guess 6-5 I mentioned is one is the where he escapes with no contact, but I mean, it was going to land on the midpoint anyways. Not really lost there. Yeah. So he's going to fill in the four point and only training six pips. It might be a Q, but he's still in take territory for I sure. Think it's, I think it's close, but not there yet. So Yeah, 9-10, a little bit of wastage. Um, feels early, but your opponent's never going to send it back. So you can send it a little bit earlier or safe. To, you know, it's it, it hurts when you lose your marker. It does too. You know, in a position. It is fine. No errors whatever, here. Whatever you send that you definitely do you take. You're not trying to eke out one point. You want to get two out of this. Mm -hmm. So this is just a little bit early. I think it's the strong. You know, if we had a little better spread at the back there. Uh, yeah, the wastage costs. Yeah. Notice for like the money numbers too. Usually you want to be in the low 70s to be sending a cube. Here we're at 65 and it's almost a break even decision. Yeah. So and this is like sending early. Much score. Yeah. So. Oh, and that's easy to down. Mm -hmm. Every pip counts now for the next few rolls. Ali gains a little bit, so we're going to enough. No, he's just looking to create one of those triangle structures. Yeah. Are they efficient? As well. Maybe 10 to 4. Yeah. 13 to no. 6, though. Okay. Just Favorite bot play. Okay, what do we have here? 4 1, it looks like. Four. We're going to get one. Okay. So Thomas could gain the race this time. Gain three, lost two, advanced. Kind of has to be a cube now, doesn't it? Oh, I we're like break even. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it feels like he's in first. Uh, six pips ahead again, but we're in a shorter race, right? So, um, race. right now, I mean, I guess Thomas, I mean, he needs to check around that five point. Yeah, very likely to get yeah. it on this next roll. Again, I feel like it's structure. Yeah. Um, if you insert the shape a little bit, you know, maybe not two checkers. Yeah. Um, right in that zone. Um, you're in your happy place there, but, you know. Yeah. Just a little improvement elsewhere. Yeah, we can shift the checker on the ace back to the five and then cross those two on the bar to the front. Same count. Yep. Clear clear. And clear. Yes. Who is the co commentator, Mochi? I don't know if you met him. Uh, Keen Marin. He lives in Madison, Wisconsin with me, all the way here in Istanbul. Uh, kilted on Backgammon Galaxy. I don't know if you guys met at a tournament, Keen. Uh, I think we've played maybe once or twice. <laughs> once at least, because I remember I lost. You know, it was one of those things. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's most people's memories. <laughs> Two in here, and last roll is 4 1, so we're not any better in the race. Okay, yeah, still rolling on. Yeah. Look at that. Doesn't fix the distribution, but 12 pips isn't checker off is oh, nice. 12 pips is fabulous. Uh, five pips. Okay, I think this has to, oh. this has to be it. There's no, that's no, seven. Yeah. Unfortunate to have gotten to a place where he lost his market for sure. But he's yeah. gonna gain the dread at one point. <laughs> no. I don't know, for me, I mean, a really good job, Thomas, not uh, holding back on those really marginal positions. Mm. Um, so good job on that. But yeah, unfortunately, he's found a pass here. So, 
taken, though. You never know. Tends to evaluate those pretty well. Um, Ollie seems to take a little bit of time to count the pips and kind of evaluate the wastage. I think he's just been slow on that. I imagine once he gets to some number that he'll have. Unless he miscounts. <laughs> that can yeah. happen this late in the game for sure, or this late in the in the weekend. Yeah. Tired, you're tired. These are easy. <laughs> says John Connery is my commentator. That's good. Got any 007 lives <laughs> Of course. It's money penny. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> There's other Scottish phrases I could use. Not really. <laughs> They're not going to help the back end. Never know. <laughs> we'll see, right? <laughs> yeah. So, 4 1. Yeah, six away, three away. All these six away scores are just weird. I don't know what their special thing is at all. Just hope that they're enough like a five away score to play like that. I guess the thing is, I'm starting to connect with that idea that you really want to get to four away, don't want to get to five away, so you want to send the cube a little bit earlier, and your opponent should like to pass a little bit more. Yeah. Um, well, but very small adjustments. Yeah. That's the the artifact of the five away score. Yes. Yeah. 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 Because stupid. <laughs> I like them still. <laughs> so you should like the cube just like normal. You can, oh yeah. Uh, try yeah. to get the pass. Get the five away. It's perfect. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, 2 1, we're entering, and then do we want to fight for that high point? Um, anchoring and being primed here seems a little too weak. Yeah. Even leading score, I think you got to go for it. Yeah. Uh, is, is this enough volatility to cube already? Wow. Uh, I wouldn't have necessarily thought, but he finds it pretty quick. Seems reasonable now that he's looking at it. Yeah. That's a good cube here. Right yeah. on the borderline. Great well done. Volatile. Okay, enters and hit. Uh, there could be big trouble if there's a fan. Noticing Thomas's clock, he's already down to three minutes. Very true. He is deliberate and plays slow and gets in time pressure like more matches than not. Mm -hmm. Is that like the the Scandinavian way? I don't know. I know a lot of them that do that a lot. Thomas Christensen, I think Thomas Denlin is always in tr time trouble. <laughs> Uh, entered with the four, six to play. This, oh, nice! This is this is a nice this this is nice, but it's it's maintaining high volatility. I don't know. Um, I think I'm more inclined yeah. just to, to hop out. That feels like the natural thing. Coming yeah. out to the bar is going to get double hit more often. So playing offensively, fours and twos duplicates the attackers on that anchor points. And when you do get hit on the bar, you're likely to make an anchor somewhere. So, okay, I can see some merit to it. Um, maybe I would find 13 to 7 with three checkers back already. And he's going to find the best six here. Very and good. holding a two cube. It's a yeah. brave play. Yeah. Uh, someone in the chat already calling for the, the backgammon to win the match again. I think uh, most matches today have ended in a backgammon um, on a cube to win. Oh, Either really? Either a five way or a six way. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's the theme. Uh, look at this, the, the five to hit to buy time to clean up that checker. Okay, that's a tricky tempo for me to find. But all entering numbers are nice for Ali, and that was kind of the plan last time. This is going to be oh, perfect. Oh, wow, yeah, I'm almost instantly this. making the anchor, but he finds this better play. Still has three feet on the ground to make <laughs> anchors later, even if he's hit. So. Oh, this is an exciting game, this one. Look at this. Yeah, 75% of the time he makes an anchor, the other 25% in a lot of trouble. Uh, ace three, I think it, it advances. Yeah. Yeah, this time we're not getting the second checker in the air and buying time no. to make the five points so we don't hit loose. Asset, we need an asset at this point. Could have had the asset last time, but things have changed. Uh, lifting 10 to eight. Uh, the other, okay, yeah, he could have kept the goalkeeper deeper and played 10 to six, but this yeah. helps make the bar points. Five four. This probably just comes from the twenty three to keep your your position moving the way you need to. You're getting stripped. Six two is going to hit. That's a great response. And the same theme for Thomas. Yeah. Needs to get that checker moving. Everything's getting kind of stripped. We have here this ace five. Ace five. 
Uh, so no. no. Yeah. 13 to 8 seems reasonable, too. Of course, we're not touching the back checkers. Yeah. But this is awkward. We're not going to have the time to play a double anchor game. So I think he's looking for a 3 or a 6 to pop out from the 24, ideally. And again, keep his position moving the way he needs it to. That would be the theme. You keep the high anchor here and try and run the last guy. What do you have? 3 2? We'll find out. So I think probably 13. And making the boards here. a little bit better here. Interesting. Okay. I was thinking I would like oh, wow. I'm almost that. instantly playing 24 to 21. Um, he's going to think about other options of keeping it. Okay. Does this hold off for one roll? I guess. Because your two is going to be really awkward or leave a shot could be part of why maybe there's other threes that would step up, but this one is not the greatest. Okay. Uh, can afford to leave the six that might have made the bar anyway. Okay. And this is going to be a tough game for for Ali to survive. Need to generate timing somehow in this. Uh, what does he have double fours? That's not the way to do it. No. This is called crash written all over it, doesn't it? Yeah. Got to put sixes in the cup for Thomas. That's probably a bit rich. Maybe 13, uh, 13 eight. XG likes it. This oh, is, uh, they're all very close okay. though. Yeah. Uh, two blots behind. Yeah, it's a nice little opportunity to do that. Uh, it's not like he can point on you. Yeah. This, this play here is the one I would not be looking at. I would not be dumping into the, that two point. There's just no value. Hmm. But what are you achieving there? You're, you're playing checkers behind the point you want to yeah. You want to make. No, he's just don't go there. Sometimes it's it's safe to do and you want to fill it in against that 24 point eventually anyway. Um, I, I doubt that there's any rolls where Ali is going to want to use the ace to hit on this turn. Um, eventually might be the case. Fours is a nightmare. Oh, Oof. Oof. yeah, that's the kind of board, board position I find myself. Yeah. I think this is the way that you this is a trap, potentially yeah. lose a backgammon for the match. Oh. Yeah, fours come out now. Okay. Fours are going to break yep. something disastrous regardless. I guess the three, four can come from the back if he wants. Very tough. I think I'd Doesn't mind that. being hit on the four either. Okay. Yeah. I four one I'd... gets a little better, but. Hmm. I think I'm, I'm definitely preferring eight to six as the two. Yeah. It's just, it, it kills the checker temporarily is I think what he's thinking about. It's nice to play pure in positions like this and keep everything active and building in front of the anchors, but I don't think he needs to prime those checkers so much, you know? So I think it's just the wrong theme in this position. Uh, can't be too bad, I don't think. Oh, six, one wrong, okay. Yeah. Batman is a great commentator. I wonder which one of us is Batman. Is Batman Scottish? I don't know. No, I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> Must Who be knows? you. I mean, you're the great commentator, right? Uh, I don't know. Well, yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, one five. Okay. That and kid, instead of coming off the anchor, we just cover. Sure, sure. Uh, Thomas okay. is going to send another checker back. So, this is not a timing issue. This is just uh, winning more gammons and back gammon. So hits, and okay. then I guess just continue, probably. Sure, I think I need to. Yeah. Must be I'm not sure who they were referring to, but I think someone called Sebastian Wilkinson and I yesterday Beavis and Butthead. We both oh, enjoyed nice. that quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> were you yeah. doing the cackles? I guess so. I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> we were trying to, oh, that was two days ago. I think we were trying to do two person commentary before we'd figured out how to route two uh, microphones into the same laptop. And it just ah. wasn't working. They could only hear one of us, but we were both laughing a lot. So. Um, okay, so he doesn't want to make the eight point, even though it's an option, because he wants fours to force uh, Ali off the anchor. So if he's going to go for that, he needs checkers that are ready to pounce on that point, and also ready checkers that are ready to uh, scoop up the blot that leaves. Oh, is this double three? Oh, and yes. ooh, that's oh. that saves quite a bit. Um, yeah, I think the third one. Don't. There's no reason to get attacked back there, and we can just. No. This saves the back gammons and maybe all the gammons too. You can start throwing checkers out to the outfield. Very, very nice shot for Ali. Of course, uh, Thomas is going to hang back. He wants to capture anything that runs out. So <laughs> uh, 
he's definitely going to be looking for that. Well, someone said it was at 2.2% BG. Oh, and there's a miss. So certainly, I think he doesn't I feel like you make the ace point here, maybe. Hmm. Clear point already. Um, it's tough to do much with the check around the 14. Yeah, that actually does look kind of reasonable now. Maybe I can't decide if I want to keep my checker on the 20 if I have the option or not to potentially gobble up another blot, put pressure there. Uh, yeah. Actually, making the 14 has some value, though, because, I mean, what about those other two checkers on the anchor that want to leave? I think just having some outfield presence feels really nice, but, okay, I can see XG likes your play here, so 371, get ready for the contact. Okay, and he goes with this and is feeling the time pressure down to 41 seconds. So I had to make oh, wow. something with it pretty quick. Okay. Is this double fives? Uh, it is double fives. Look at that. Well, wow. I guess all four have to come out then, don't they? Uh, nearly forced. Yeah. The three of them for sure. Yeah. And it's tough to find you, staying with one after can, this. Can Why do you, you want contact? Yeah, <laughs> so, you, you can't. If you. Yeah. If you're going to do that, you must come out. And also, yeah. hey, this is a five-way hold. Yeah. This would be an interesting way to win a race. Quite a bit to make up. But he's made up most of it. You know, he's done all the hard part. Oh, yeah. It's a set yeah. of sixes, and he's it's right in there. Okay. Two, four comes around. And I think Thomas is pretty safe to break contact anyway instead of destroying his board or anything like that. Like, I think here he should just go. Um. So just before just Ali maybe it. has something yeah. to punish, yeah. Fives, I mean, maybe 5-1 and 5-3 hit. 5-5, um, five, five, I guess, as well. Sometimes you just have to ones commit to yeah. break the contact, get out of there. Let's yeah. remove future problems. If he covers with an ace or a three, then it gets a lot easier to hit. So I think now's the time, too. Yeah. Still has a leading race, too. Okay, so I'd come closer, duplicate one of those covers. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. I like it. Gets by faster next time. That's why the duplication is a good reason not to advance to the 11. 5-4 could just break contact, but I mean, this is really good for the race this way too, so probably a little more efficient. Don't think he needs to break contact exactly because Thomas should do that for him most of the time. Yeah. And he does. Yeah. Also, you know, hey, on the edge cases where you don't get past, yeah. you like that, so... Okay, so six four. Just run the last guy. They want you to shout justice when something crazy happens. I, I justice. Don't understand. Yeah. Okay. You have your instructions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> no need to ask for for more. <laughs> right. What do we have here then? Oh. Yeah. Four is our problem. Four. Yeah. We've got some distribution issue. Uh, Ali can turn this around. Tough to find a recube when the take point's all the way up by, I think, it, like, is it 18% something at this score? Okay. This is the oh, yeah, it's... three sets deep in the catch up. Well, the, I mean, Ali is Just certainly making one more good set. <laughs> well, he's up in the race. He might have this game. Yeah. Yeah. So 6 4 is very good. Okay. Another great shake. Thomas is going to have to roll some sixes. Just naturally made up 60 pips or whatever it was. That's pretty impressive. Well, yeah. I guess those fives helped somewhat. But... <sighs> what is this? 3-1, okay. One yeah. off. You're in Thomas Mir is always in time trouble, so he's a speed damn expert. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird to be both, like, I don't know, I guess... If you're so comfortable with speed gammon that you find yourself in speed gammon positions a lot, but it just feels like, how would you find a way to play slowly then? You know, is, does he just wait and like is it run the of, clock off? Yeah, to is, it, is it some kind of overcompensated? Thing? You know, <laughs> early on you think I've got all this time, I can take my time. Over lots of time. Look at this. Oh, what is the take point here? Am I crazy about the? Oh yeah, it's like eleven percent. Okay, um, I said eighteen earlier, and I was thinking about four away, one away, I guess. But this is six away, one Pat's away. Score. This is a recube, so. and he's already to eighty-five yeah. percent. So not quite a recube, but very close. Yeah, and he's Let's starting to think there. about it. Uh, this is not a good number for that though i guess if if thomas oh. also whiffs then it can be okay okay um yeah, do we fill the ace or do we okay actually playing off the six and trying to keep a five is a little more. Pretty close. 
Uh, still in that 85% range. Okay. These are tough to evaluate though. When you're in just clear money pass position, how much better am I? And yeah. exactly by 11%, it's, uh, gets harder and harder to adjust, uh, the lower your opponent's winning chances get. Yeah. I mean, so this is something that, that Mark, that Mark talks about in his book, adjusting based on this one feels pretty clear. Oh, I think yeah. we done lost our market. Yep. A roll behind in a two roll position, two roll plus a little bit, of course. Uh, two aces could miss, but unlikely sequence. And if that happens, Thomas has to catch up with a set. So, we're gonna go to Crawford, okay. And an even away score means that we'll to do, he's gonna be playing, Gammons are gonna count. Closer. Yep. They're gonna lose a gamut. That's the key to success, really, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> when leading when the Crawford game, you'll find that things go much better for you. Taking a short break here. Someone says five to one was under and he followed up with what was the role? Did it punish him? Uh you're on the six. That was the four three because it hit both the holes. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, that, I think that was one of those situations. <laughs> there, there's always going to be at least horror numbers. Yeah, yeah. Just hope you don't roll it. That's, <laughs> that's what it comes down to. You're probably picking on rolling with high numbers and not the low ones. Yeah. Gaining yourself an ace is worth very much in like that, that far behind. But of course, all five, you want to be able to take a checker off. And that would that, that becomes part of your game plan, right? It's it, you, you no longer think about, well, I need to roll this or that. Maybe you just, well, in order for me to win this, I have to be rolling at least like a five-two minimum every time, or six-one. Yeah. Just expect that that happens. Wilson's given our chat permission to take a five, uh, three-minute toilet break. Uh, don't. Ask that, be back to the action quickly. Oh, you're free to. Coffee, where do we find coffee around here? Okay, I make the best stuff in my room, but I think you can purchase some right out here, or out in the okay. bar. I probably um, don't have enough time to run up to your room. I don't think I'm going to be able to make it <laughs> in the three minutes. All right, well, he I'll said toilet, not two. coffee. Okay, we'll see you soon. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, is it flashing? Then yeah. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Turkey power indeed. Ali is just crushing it. It looks like Thomas is back. Uh, oh, maybe the transcriber had a restroom break or something too. Oh no, transcriber is back on. Oh, we're back in under three minutes. Apologies. Hope you don't miss too much. <laughs> oh, we're back already, of course. Uh, three, two, two down. Yeah, this is gonna be the gammon play. So making the right a score adjustment, uh, double fives is going to make a point. Very solid. That idea. Uh, interesting with the double threes. You can remake the eight, but probably making the three is a little bit better here. Feels gammonish and primey and all these things. One five, I think after double fives, it's time to split. Um, he's going to think about He's going to slot instead. OK, he's just too afraid, afraid of the blitzing potential. Um, we'll see how, how XG likes that play. I didn't get to see the analysis because we had the one six in instead. And of course, Thomas is playing hyper like fast here as well. Five three is just going to slot. OK, the blot. Makes some sense. Punish, yeah, this running six. six. Three, yeah. Oh, six three. OK. Hit and cover, perfect. Uh, one four. Ooh, yeah, enter high and break this the eight, I think. I, you can't afford to have the third checker on the R. Of course, keeping the point is so good that it's close to reasonable here, but it's still a little bit better to enter high. Yeah, the, that's kind of one of the golden rules is that never have three on the ace. Yeah. Anything but that. Oh, no, my voice is cutting in and out again. That's annoying. What can I do? Oh, well. Probably the internet on one side or what they're doing on the computer. I don't know. Uh, 
far, okay, he can split to try to find an anchor is the idea, I guess. Interesting, four, six, you're gonna get hit now. Yeah, only stripped midpoint by your opponent too, I think you have to go. Yep, yep. Gammons, yep. Not so afraid of Gammons. Four, six hits, great shot for Thomas. Good for the Gammon if he can uh, fade the anchor here. And 5 1. Wrong anchor. Okay. So he feels Gammon ish. And do we clean up 13 8? I think that's think so better than uh, all these shots. So 6 1. 6 1 does nothing as well. I guess it comes out to the 12, cleans up the direction. Ali trying to save the gamut would love to advance the pickers on the 24 and make the anchor. So much so that he's willing to. That's what I would expect would be 6 2. Yeah, that seems pretty scary and rich. I, I would have trouble finding that. But he looks at it very quickly. If I'm going to do that, I'm playing 6 2 with it. I have a hard time finding 21 to 17. That's weird. And he just finds the best play. Wow. That's, that's impressive. I don't know how he does that. Is there a 5-4 duplication that points or something? I don't see this one. 3-6. Lack of options. He finds a hit. More gamut. Don't know what else I would do with it. Four, this is strange. I guess we must have to get the 17 point check. No. Um, yeah, I mean, I... It's scary world, position, you'd, though. You'd love to get that spare on the five point, but yeah, it's just I'm not sure it does a whole lot here. Uh, two six can hit and cover. He's going to cover first and think about which hit, I guess, but I was thinking the outfield, of course. Um, a fan is devastating. It would be a huge favorite. Four six, much better. The game. That. Yeah, eight to two. Okay, I I might have just tried to get the back running, put the pressure on everything. Um, I had to come out too, so yeah. that that was where my head was at. Um, yeah. so four two, just make make it twice. Should be hit on the two point for staying back there. That's very interesting. Okay. Covers the point. Okay. Yeah. And now Ali's in the kind of game at a Gavin saving score. And he's uh, looking to play six to two. Wow, he finds this very quickly. Uh, Thirteen to five is very close. I would be thinking about keeping my anchor, not well, not running quite yet. But okay, you can't really. I mean, you give up the outfield if you, leave, if mm, you don't leave. That's so a pretty you good have deal to here. Do something there, and it can be hard to do. Yeah. Not. I'd spend longer looking at it, that's for sure. <laughs> well, he's playing speed gammon, so he can't, only has 13. Yeah, this is the test of, of Thomas's instant, right? Yeah, for sure. 5 3. I mean, we must be playing the 5 from 21, right? Or we can just clear the point? Wow. Okay. It's very hard for me not to so how, do you, how do you win the most games, right? So you don't get hit. Hmm. So don't don't leap out into the outfield. Mm -hmm. um, is there any value in keeping the eight point? Is oh, hopping out in the outfield wins the most games. It just doesn't lose as many gamins. <laughs> or loses so more gamins. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the score. Um, so one of these funky score plays, uh, probably correct to just hop out uh, at normal scores. Uh, he's going to spend some time thinking about what he wants to prioritize. Getting down close to two minutes, too. I don't know if Ali tends to be in time pressure or struggles with that at all, but um, has plenty to sort through this game. He, he's got time. He, he can use some of his clock. He's earned the right to use this clock time, <laughs> right? So, yeah, this could be an important one. Yeah. Ali's still down in the low ones. Very good stuff. Oh, that's fantastic. And he finds this clear the eight play too. Mm -hmm. Very impressive stuff. This is three one. Okay, so. Closer. Check in. Nice and easy. Oh, he's just getting closer to home too. Okay. Both both seem fine. Yeah, Fly shots so. aren't supposed to get. What is this? Three two or three three? Three three, three, three is not his okay. best. <laughs> and pick up the six point. Yeah. Yeah. 
that's another thing too. Yeah, fair. We don't want to leave an out or hit an outfield shot, something like that. But really, he's just trying to run off the, the 21 with something. Five threes finally going to let him do it, right? Yeah, I think so. I think you're required now. I think you have to go all the way. Yeah, yeah I don't see. I guess the three cleans up the blot like you were talking about. But I want to do it last time. Seems less desirable here. Yeah. Uh, stays connected to the anchor, though. So when he gets hit, he might get a return shot, something like that. Probably doesn't quite work that way, though. 2-1, okay. I think we're going to make the ace. Yeah. Yep. Good chance of uh, remaking a five-point board here, too. So, not too bad. The only thing we're going, there's going to be a fly shot. So. Oh, with the blot and board, we should take the opportunity to to split the 13. That's interesting. Might not have found that. Um, I might have just cleared the seven, really. But he finds the seven to eight, or whatever this was, six days. Yeah. And okay, six to four, three to one should both be pretty similar. Okay, so what six is this? One. Six one, come on in, leaving a fly shot while well, there's still a blot on board. Not so bad. And just six four ball. is going to run around yeah. the bend. Uh, tough to lose a gammon now that you've gained all these pips. So that's kind of nice. Mm -hmm. Maybe the game plan is, is just to win this one racing. That would be nice if it worked out that way. He gets hit, stuck on the bar. Okay, what is this, 5-4? Five, 5-4 four. Five, okay. four can't cover after the hit, okay. No. Just gotta bring two in. Okay. And Ali's gonna get another shot at a four, misses again. And this should be, could still be tough to clean up. 5-3, okay, it's gonna bury it to so the ace. Just clean, yeah. yeah. I'm not sure actually if there are any rolls that didn't. Six three must then two, right? I guess like a six four or five four kind of combos. Oh no, because then you can peel off a four. Maybe they're all safe. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so any comes. I don't want to say very loud, but you all know what it is, right? <laughs> That's not it. Good, good, good. We love saying the number out loud on commentary, I think. Uh, two one, yeah. I think we're gonna stay back for the five one six one four one. Okay. See if we can do it. Or two one, okay. Yeah. Delays it for one roll. Of course. Ali might have to leave too. Six five. Good. No, it depends. Is this four two? Um, yeah, he can stay yeah. for one more time. And it's getting close because of how important it is to just save the gammon. Okay, and he's gonna go for that. Just save the gammon. Hard to win anyway. Um, when you do get the shot, not so likely. Getting in that territory where it definitely is going to cost you something to stay. Yeah, it's a fine balance. Between those, isn't yeah. it? You want to stay as long as is possible, but you also want to get off of that gamut and just ease ease yourself out of it and make mm -hmm. it easy. Four two into the five. Okay, and it's look like looking like we're going to go to post Crawford here. Uh, the Ottawa variety. I guess for PR, you're supposed to wait on the queue, play the trick for a while. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sit there. Have I cruised past 50% yet? Yeah. When do I queue this? Dirk actually pointed out an interesting one uh, yesterday where I guess if you get the the automatic recube kind of scenario where someone offers to play for the match, you can wait to send that recube too and get decisions. That didn't occur to me before. Oh. Yeah. If that makes sense. Three, two down, gonna play yep. for Gammons. Gammons are worthwhile, sure. That makes sense. Make the aggressive. And play. he's just gonna yeah. send the cube and not mess around with the trick. Uh probably with his time situation makes sense. Um okay, cover the point and split. This makes sense. Yep. And yeah, 12 seconds on the clock. Okay. Everyone's saying no way time's out. Um, but having to consider it and play quickly. And he's got the experience not to time out, doesn't mean it doesn't change his plays a little bit, you know. So um, five, like five one, maybe yeah. slot. Yeah, yeah. This feels a little bit scary, but in the speed gammon sense, sure. Why not? Feels DMP. Well, the trailer is actively pursuing. Yeah. Um, more contact. More. Five Ali. I like to hit on the. Oh, you can point on head. Okay, sure. This is good. Uh, my instinct is to hit on the five, but uh, different when you're okay. Fans and Ali in the driver's seat here. Most numbers should hit something. 
three, I think, is going to hit loose, and then so, we're going to bring some sticks down for covers. Yeah. Sure, either one's fine. I prefer this to the other one. Yeah. Okay. Might make a nicer point that you want to. So it's another fan. Another it's, fan. It's wow. So. Yeah. And Ali looking like a strong favorite to finish this match out at a at maybe a one, maybe under a one, and win the the points. Um, already. Huge favorite to make it into the quarterfinals and just cementing that. Having a so exciting to see someone have this this great of a performance. Um, we can make the eight, might help somehow, but so, this is fine too for attacking the ace. Go yeah, ahead. The, there's there's always a question when you when you're the aggressor in this kind type of position. You know, when do you start moving the back check around? Mm. And I think one of the key things, and we're seeing it here, uh, is that. Right now, Ali just wants to make his board. He wants to finish this off. And so he's not going to move from the back until that happens. Yeah, that's the priority. Yeah. There might have been a nice place to do it, but he chooses actually to still bring in cover into range instead. Yeah. Focus on making the ace. And now, yeah, the, the most wins for Thomas are going to come from making the 23-point anchor somehow. So he just desperately wants to prevent that. Yeah. So this should be five down. Potentially, but he is starting to reach for the back checker now. And if he did, I think it would continue out to the 18. So small error now, starting to get worried about it. Oh. <laughs> We've all been there, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, is this okay? Double fives. He oh. is definitely happy he got moving. <laughs> Very nice to be moving from the bar point now instead. I, I don't know exactly how it looked, but it probably would have been awkward. Yeah, double fives more or less cemented this. Mm -hmm. I guess 13-11. All, all the players are going to be pretty small at this point. Yeah. Provided you're maximizing your builders for the two-point. Thomas pretty much needing a set of twos to stay alive. Yeah. And I guess there could be something goofy that comes up, like double fours, where you want to switch off the six. Nieces, so there yeah. You can open shift. high point. Very move, nice. Move the hole backwards. Yep. Now, if you can't fill it, it's less risk. Um, yeah, this is a fine idea, too. Creating more ways to close the deuce point is a fine way yeah. to uh, mitigate risk here, too. But good find. Nice play. Technicality. Like yeah. Yeah, he's really playing sharp, not missing anything. I mean, we've been getting to watch it back in my master class here. This yeah, is yeah. just fantastic. Uh, the sixes are a problem. Well, and he gets off him. Okay. <laughs> <Yep. laughs> Easy problems. Of course, closing the point is better. Right, so um, clear the yeah. Oh, clear the pre-clear. The pre-clear. Right? Pre so I would naturally probably play four to two two here because you're pre-clearing points. Interesting. And th this is getting a little bit technical and goofy, and a lot of you folks will just be yeah, just bring it in, bring it home. I would probably just come in. And take a checker off. Yeah, I don't think I'd be thinking about pre cleared at all. Good find. So there we go. You gotta get even at the back. Doesn't I never care find about those taking those checkers anymore. Yeah. We've got all the grandmasters in the chat, so they know these plays keen. Don't oh. worry about that. They're trying to shave the, the equity off for sure. <laughs> this is what happens. I'm not looking at the chat. Uh, actually, I don't know if they're in right now. Typically, Thomas Tenlin's been keeping up with a lot of it. Mochi's been in there helping us out. Cool. Yep. Aces, okay. Fan in some more. Really needs Ali to roll an ace of himself to, to get awkward, then stay on the bar for the shot. And as soon as he enters, it's going to be over. Doesn't, though. Fan it off one more time. How about a big set would get him closer to something? 2-1. Two, one. Two, one. Oh, it's Just even up there. there. I didn't yeah. even realize it. Okay. Yeah, just let him in. And threes enters, and that's going to be a good match for Ali. Okay. Taking two points, PR and match points. We'll see what the plus-plus rollout takes him to. 1.4 could shift, of course, but looking pretty clear to, to win the point there anyway. And wow, he is uh, in God mode this weekend, yeah, you know, we'll this week. Really amazing stuff. Uh, that was hard not to root for that. Um, <laughs> So of course, he has to play another match, but maybe we'll get an interview afterward. Thanks so much, Kate. We'll be back 
in five minutes with the next match, I guess? Yeah, ideally. So, so it's probably going to take a little longer because I was going to long, but we'll be back as soon as we can with the last match of the qualifier rounds. Um, and that is, let me remind you who it is real quick. It is Umar Aras, who's leading the points race. Lander Lyloff, who's played an incredible 2.2 all tournament so far, playing out of his mind as well. So that should be a really exciting one. Uh, don't go anywhere. We'll be back real soon. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.
All right, I've unmuted my microphone. I think I'm live on the stream here. We're gonna get going in five minutes at the least. So we don't have to talk through all of that, but um, uh, we're gonna have Umura Ross and Sander Lilach. Super exciting match. I wonder if they're gonna stream the interview or any interview with it uh, beforehand. Mark is still sick as a dog. He's texting me to let me know that he can't even watch the stream. <laughs> it's fucking bad, <laughs> unfortunate. Um, yeah, excited for this one. We're having to, we've got, everyone's starting to show up for a Stavder too. So it's getting super noisy out there. And we're having to protect the room a little bit to keep it calm for the players. Funny stuff. I wonder, I don't know when Wilson will play that, but we have an interview with Ali after the match, as well as Thomas Muir, I believe. Fun stuff. Um, looks like Ali played some miraculous stuff. Uh... Plus match, yeah. One point. <laughs> uh, on the plus plus rollout, it was one point one one. I think it looked like one point three on the stream. That's according to the chat. We'll see what we come with our specific spe uh, settings and everything. Oh, yeah, I see those as always. Uh... Yeah. Oh yeah, we can talk about the format a little bit. People are talking about tomorrow. The top six points race players are going to move on, as well as the top two PRs after that for the quarterfinals, which is going to be a best of two. Um, uh, actually, it was a hard game to me as well, like Thomas. Uh, he spent too much time and uh, I'm sure he cannot handle the rest of the game if he carry on. So I'm very relaxed at that moment. Uh, the first, uh, at 4-0 score, the cube was very hard uh, and the 3-0 score is also very hard for me as well. I'm very curious about that positions. Uh, that's all I think. It's always uh, fun to play uh, with Thomas. Uh, I like his playing style. Uh, yeah, good match. <laughs> yeah, I want to say congratulations to Ali for achieving a really great match. I knew it was going to be tough and he beat me both on PR and in the match. I think that was, yeah, that was a kind of a, a key moment where I was not completely sure at 3-0. It was a kind of a match cube that uh, Ali sent me. Uh, I was behind, three men behind the prime, but he was on a bar against my five-point board. Uh, it seemed that my timing was too much off, even though you can take quite deep in that specific type with, uh, with uh, four away, seven away. But it seemed that I just needed the six immediately. And if uh, Ali got the three, it was like I was already dead. So I decided to drop that cube. But I'm also interested. I don't know the result of it. So I'm, I'm quite interested to see uh, what the correct cube action was in that situation. Me neither. Me neither. <laughs> My feelings uh, is, is take, uh, I guess. Yeah, I'm very happy yeah. when you drop it. Because I don't want to play it actually. Ah, okay, yeah. Uh, somewhere maybe you, I have to t t think about the fur cube, you know. Yeah. Gamish position. It's yeah. Uh, obviously, I'm I'm almost going to recube you at yeah. two four at at the. Uh, I know. Uh, I know. I, yeah. I, I I was happy when you dropped it. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, but we will see the analysis yeah, uh, afterwards. Sure. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. So Ali, uh, yeah. In pretty well so far yeah and uh, I want to ask you is there any strategy specific strategy for this tournament or no you just uh, no strategy to too this? many too many hard work uh, we have a very uh, a strong uh, player my friends we have a nice group uh, Yasin Okal is missed here because he's a lawyer and he have to work some court uh, Umur Aras, uh, he was playing in the UBC as well. Uh, Ibrahim Karaja, Junaid Argun Genç, uh, uh, and uh, some others. 
uh, they are strong players and uh, we have too many time to practice before UBC. Uh, every Wednesday and Sunday are practice days and uh, we add more days, uh, more weeks, uh, too many weeks, we add more uh, practice days. Uh, so that's that's my uh, uh, story, yeah. Perfect, thank you. Okay. <laughs> um, oh, they're going to do the pre-med.
Hello, backgammon uh, fans of aficionado, aficionados and uh, enthusiasts. We uh, we are here um, playing at Istanbul. Last game of the day, last game of day three. I'm playing against uh, Umur, and uh, it's going to be a good game. It's been so much fun playing here. The hotel is nice. Everybody is nice. The staff is uh, is doing a great job. You know, um, so. We're definitely going to have a good match now. I hope that we're both qualified for the last eight, yeah, more or less. Yeah, <laughs> hope it's. <laughs> and you? Uh, for uh, I, guess, I guess it will be a good match. Uh, this is the first time we met each other, and hope it, the match will be good. And I, I know uh, Sander. <laughs> you don't, of course, you don't know me. Uh, he's a very tough player. Uh, I will do my best. <laughs> I need, I need uh, some luck. <laughs> ah, well, good match, my good friend. Good match. So, Sander, uh, you've been uh, in the final of the first UBC in 2018. Oh, and yes. Are you, uh, do you think uh, you're going to make it again? Oh, was that 2018? <laughs> 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 Time flies. Uh, I would love to uh, to have another go at it, you know, and, and play with, with Mochi again. Uh, really, but you know, anything can happen. There are a lot of good players here, and uh, actually, uh, there's a lot of very good Turkish players. And you know, basically, I, I think I'm qualified for the, for the last eight. But um, there's so many good players, and anything can happen. You know. <laughs> Perfect. And you uh, for me, this is a, this is for my first UBC tournament, and at the beginning of this tournament, uh, my aim was. Uh, in B to be in the eighth last eight. Uh, now I don't know if I'm uh, qualified, uh, but I'm close. Hope uh, it will continue. <laughs> Perfect. Good match, Bob. Thank you, Hussein. Thank you. All right, everybody. Hope you enjoyed that pre-match interview with Sander and Umar. I'm super excited for this final round of the, the qualifiers. Day three, match or round 15, match 14 for both of these players. Um, yeah, sorry. We were talking about the, the format and finals and everything like that. And I uh, got cut off a little bit. So yeah, I hear people talking about, I guess, I think the, the format has always been this way where the quarterfinals and semifinals are a little shorter. We've varied between two matches and three matches over the years. Uh, it's, it's always been a scheduling thing that more than anything, but it's hard to play enough backgammon to make sure the like skill, I don't know, we'd have to play forever to make sure that we got the absolute best people. So there's always a trade off with uh, going down a little bit. It feels like there's a lot more luck, I agree, in those quarterfinals and semifinals, but something about that feels more like backgammon to me. It would be a little frustrating if, if there wasn't any chance anymore, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I like it. It's a good balance to me. I think we always, once we have those, those eight players in the finals, are going to be very strong. I don't think you can get to that final eight without being one of the best in the room for sure. A little bit of chance who the finalist is, and of course we got a nice uh, five round match to, to hopefully get time there. Um, also, I, I think thinking about it too, I think the difference between two match best of two and best of three is not that different. I don't know. I've, have you thought about the format at all, Arif? No. To be honest, like I said, <laughs> yeah. any, any sort of format, there's yeah. always that. So my favorite is um, mm -hmm. about it. So mm -hmm. I, I think just players are happy to just play and, yeah. And, uh, and then obviously the PR and, and a good luck. Yeah. Well, uh, obviously the format is, is to minimize the, the luck factor, but yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, Sander does have a beer there. That seems like his style. Uh, why why wouldn't you have a beer? <laughs> yes, it's, it's close to dinner time. I'm surprised <laughs> it doesn't have wine, but maybe it's starting with beer and then... <laughs> Just make sure you don't shake that and throw it on the board instead of the cup. That happens every now and then. Yeah. Standard opening. Oh, thanks for the tip on the, the Zoom microphone thing. I'll try that out. Try the auto. That, that setting was on and I flipped it off. Maybe my mic will get better now. That would be cool. I don't know what I'm doing. All right, so far, it seems like pretty much interesting stuff. Any three and ace with hits? Uh, yeah. Definitely choose to understack the heavy point and not come in on the 24 there. 
Um, two four is going to hit again. Okay. Yeah. And rating to be a complicated game to start off. Yeah. Four checkers back already. That's exciting. Right. That looks like it's a hopper, and he's just going to yeah. come out. Um, Not allowed to leave the third checker on the twenty-four. Boom. That's the avalanche. Yeah, this makes two board points, right? I yeah. guess we have two options, and he's going to look at hitting on the bar first. Well, I think, um, yeah, I think he has close. to hit on the three first and make yeah. it. And he's going to make this play instead. Yeah. Okay, interesting, interesting. Really wants those two checker in the two checkers in the air. And this looks pretty dominating. I think probably Cuban coming. And what is Sander going to yeah. do with it? Is it too early to let this go? Um, I guess it's only the three point made. We still have a lot of life and a lot of play. Um, yeah, it's just ton, tons of game. Oh, so he didn't find the cube here. Okay, which, uh, not a big mistake, uh, but um, I think he's very likely losing his market after this roll. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, four uh, three. This is yeah, that's the market loss. Yeah, three two would have been pretty nice and playable. Yeah, um, yeah stepping up, it just feels like you have to reach for the the twenty four point with the three. Yeah, um, but of course, if you're passing after all iterations, doesn't matter too much. Yeah. Question is, I mean, none of them are going to make you too good. I'm like, I think that's more the question for him. Or can he afford to take a roll? Uh, he's going to send it this down. is going to be an easy pass. Yep. That's the trouble with playing top players because Sander knows already he missed the cube. <laughs> and he knows just with the next variation and the sequence, he already knows he's in the past territory. So he just didn't even waste a second. Yeah, yeah. Quickly. Sander is such a natural player. Yeah, it's very fun to watch uh, exactly that, a natural player. The people that make the plays quickly and just kind of know where they're at all the time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Of course, you know, in this kind of format, it benefits a lot calculating when you need to, but there's something to that. Just yeah. they, they're at it. You can see their understanding of the game when yeah. they play like that. Yeah, it, it does help a lot when you realize as, a, as an opponent or the receiver of the cube that your opponent misses. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of know the next sequence is very, very likely to be a pass. Interesting decision between the two plays there. I would assume that it's that uh, the play made was correct, but hitting on the 20 was slightly favored by the lower ply analysis. Yeah. I don't know my references for those. Happens more often than I would think, but I tend to just make the bar point and not worry about it too much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this looks like... Oh, it hits. Okay. Uh, any First thing I saw was anchoring, of course. Potentially will be coming. Okay. Yeah. Three checkers back. I think it's still playable for sure. And then five point made. So it could be a cube, but it must still be yeah. a take for him. Or, um, this is not going to be enough, I don't think. I don't uh, think so. The four doesn't go anywhere productive, though. So I guess out to the bar to distract. Sure. Okay. Sure. I keep uh, him busy doing something. Duplicate some sixes. Mm hmm. Now that hits outside. Yeah, it gets a back checker moving too. That's really big for Sander. And now this is looking uh, pretty nice on a fan, I think, here. Yeah. Uh, three, five hits, though. Great shot. Yeah. Which hit he's going to think about. I think you have to get the back checker moving, but unstacking the mid actually looks really attractive too. Yeah, I think. Um, interesting. Challenge that stripped midpoint too. Total okay. aces. So that's that. Three of them, and then he has to think. Okay. That was all four. Oh, that was four of them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Interesting. Staying split and unstacking the six to five is fine. Only seven in the zone, so it's not yeah. that important to have an anchor yet. Um, the risk is more priming. This doesn't necessarily help you against that, but I do like that. Again, the natural play, <laughs> just doing things quickly. Yeah. I think uh, he just he just has to hit there because he cannot afford to stack them up. Yeah, this is interesting. Why does he want to start by stacking with the four yeah. and then think about it? Maybe he's just trying to find the race, but um, I feel like you have to start by hitting with the five. You're outboarded there. Yeah, I, okay. think, I think you hit with the five first and then think about your four. Yeah. Um, uh, this is just too passive. What are you going to do with your next rolls? Your five mm -hmm. fours, your four threes. You're just going to end up stacking the motor on your six. But you just get losing yeah. a lot of momentum. I think the thought must be that we have we can have one checker back to yeah. to three that we're outboarded, so we don't really love giving him a chance to hit from the bar. It's just, um, it's just too much. Okay, yeah, right. and so this is why I guess the stacking eighteen to thirteen was or what was it down with yeah. it or something? I can't remember what the other option was. Never mind. <laughs> right. Best play, I think. So 
That's four three. What a good roll. Oh beauty. Yeah, so. and it's still he's gotta get the twenty-four point moving, yeah. I think, to really have something here. Um, is this, this is, the kind of position where Umar wants to split though? I think you just uh, go out all the way. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, okay. this is, uh, you duplicate the sixes. If he decides to hit you, he has to lose the midpoint, which is an important yeah. um, item when you have a back game in play. So sure. He just, he has to distract him by coming out. So now. scary against a four point board, but I, I thought yeah. about the split at least because there's only nine in the zone. Yeah. It doesn't look yeah. like a blitzy kind of position. Yeah. He has to split first and then find the five. Yeah. 13 to eight would have been my intuition, but with all the reasons given this, this looks great. Yeah. I think sixes are just so much stronger coming out from the rear. Yeah. Um, okay. Under, I, hard to uh fault being a little nervous there i mean sure like probably uh four two gains or something like that when he uh yeah, no, 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 there's no, no, numbers no. that are going to indirectly hit on the bar point that yeah. you don't like you don't do this kind of stuff <laughs> he just splits and then i don't really mind if if he decides to come down obviously there are some pegs um about coming down because it gives you more builders to make your four point yeah but this is this is definitely the play well done he's a good player good fun oh well. Wow, cool. William in the chat fixed my mic. Thank you. Yeah. You're the best, man. They help us out a lot. 3 1 is uh, one of his best. I guess maybe running from the back is better, escaping yeah. a checker, but advancing the anchor is huge. And okay, Umar is going to try to figure out how much of an advantage he has. I think board's too good. Anchor <laughs> is kind of long term. Race is super close. You might not, without counting it, see that the race is this close, though, with four checkers back to basically one and a half. Yeah. So good time to pause and think about it. Still feels like even if you're leading 20, 30 pips in the race that you've got too much work to do to think about sending yet. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's more of uh, how much work am I going to do to get my checkers home? Yeah. Um, Six, two is a beauty though. Yeah. And four, two, not so strong. I think, again, this double anchor game is going to keep him playing, but he's yeah, out of time. He's, he's Next roll could be very bad for him. So... I think with any any six or five, he has to vacate one of those. Okay. Um, and we're going to find the cube. This, okay. That was a very good cube. Wow, right on the borderline. I'm, I'm surprised, yeah. but it is, I think, the most... The, Interesting. Making 3 one four, two kind of rolls that restrict movement could be really big, but it's more on Sanders' side. Like, cracking rolls are definitely about to happen, and he could lose yeah. his market dramatically. Uh, so yeah. good find with that cube. So this, is, this is a critical roll. Uh, yeah. He's going to get moving with the six, I think. Is yeah. it a six four? Six five? Six five. So he just oh. has to move all the way. Uh, well, oh. he can think about this, right? Double about just making the 16. Um, <laughs> Double Falcon. You have the better board. The race is kind of close. It probably generates the most mobility. Yeah. So it's it's an interesting idea. It's pretty close there. He decides to move on, playing near perfect. Yeah. So that's a uh, point yeah. there. The double falcon hurts a little bit when you get pointed on like this puts a lot of pressure um fours uh, is not going to be his best um so you get yeah. a six to two with it okay yeah just look how quickly he finds he finds the yeah. the fourth one <laughs> then he plays the the second and the third <laughs> yeah yeah very nice six two i guess we're going to release the mid right pretty simple I don't really see why we would prefer 11 over seven to five. So bring a checker in, get closer to bearing off. Uh, I think. Oh, Hussein's gonna steal those uh, cups from him. Okay. <laughs> get those out of the way. Got it. Right, they must okay. be using the, the printed galaxy cups or something. Okay. Yeah, safe, still enough sure. racing. Yeah. But he needs to be careful here. It's gotten pretty awkward for Sander though. So that leaves. But he's making it work. Fine. Releases contact. Okay. Fly shots are nice, like a six five. Five four. What do we do with this? Do we come out to a double shot or do we just have to uh, conserve think, the race yeah. more? You just okay. wait, wait for the race. Wait yeah. for the big sixes. Doesn't yeah. feel very good to just put the checkers on the four and the five and kind of release give up yeah. on the contact game that way. That's one yeah. dead checker at least and three dillied for sure. To be honest, it uh, looks like the, the best place is going to the ace, but I would have just played two in. Um, 
just for race mm. efficiency, but I guess. Oh yeah, that does avoid killing the checker. Okay. Um, uh, I'm thinking about fly shots and kind of worried about having that liability when I come out next. Yeah, week. yeah. I was uh, more looking at it because the race is so close. Um, after the roll, I'm just thinking if I roll a large set or a six fiver to just run around, am I gonna? Regret wasting my checkers on the ice, but obviously Sander finds the best way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I imagine he was thinking about whether or not he wanted to come out first, but yeah. and still hoping mm -hmm. ten or better would be nice to get a back checker moving. Yeah, Nine is going to be frozen again this time. Now he out with the six. It. Yeah, not a double shot. Oh, he can cover the okay. ace too and make the five point yeah. board. That's a nice little asset. Oh. Three is perfect. I think we stack up on the bar point probably right. Yes, so you got a clear lead in the pip count, so you don't need that point anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's just a point to clear. I uh, can't make a board point. Uh, actually, we could. We could stay on the 10. It would leave shots from the bar is the issue, but you could make yeah. the two here. That's that's a reasonable alternative. Yeah, I think leaving any shot here it will be devastating yeah. if, you, if you get hit. Yeah, I mean, uh, thinking to the future, though, you can easily roll a 6-1 or something on this roll. Um, there's some... Aces and deuces that don't play so nice. Uh, five two, I think, is okay, but well, already feeling a little saves. awkward. So I think he's going forward. Uh, three six. Is he just coming out from the back? It feels like more of a liability to me. He decides that that's going yeah. for sure. If you do that, I aren't I you going to anchor for sure? You yeah. <laughs> if you try to do that, then you surely anchor up to yeah. prevent gamuts. Yeah, you could just play yeah. nine to three and he think knows. about it, but okay. He's going to pretend like the six is four. He, so know, like it. he knows this. <laughs> I think it's too good to leave double fours, maybe, I think. Uh, okay, I'll have Right. What are we talking about, double fours? This looks good to me. Just clear yeah, up and try to okay. race. Yeah. Oh, I was you thinking don't want to give away the race. I got it. I was yeah. thinking of ace Either. and deuce. Yeah. That, that looks like it's a 40 hour. He's counting the race, I think, now. Uh, but yeah. I guess the, the, the margin is quite healthy that you can you can give away. Yeah, you're still winning after six yeah. or after four or four runs. Good heads up observation, though. Right. Six one. Uh, three to two. Uh, anything. <laughs> <laughs> These are the sort of plays that. Uh, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, I guess you this makes your sixes work. Yeah, I don't think you do that, though. <laughs> it looks really weird to make like, a stack of six. For distribution, sure, so. I think you just want to, yeah, yeah, I didn't do that. Okay, does he need to save a six to not run off the anchor? I would just come in. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. I know. Right, okay. Looks like... Uh, I think he has to pop out for the... Yeah, there's no point of staying here. He's not going to leave a shot at all. Right, looks like a single. Um, Maybe at that wonderful four away scoreline. Right, yes. So, on the uh, four of A. Um, so, you're kind of pretty aggressive with the cube, even though you're, you're leading in the score. Yeah. It's a nice leading score. Yeah. Friendly one. And then you have to be very conservative with taking the cube, <laughs> even though you're you're trailing in the match massively. Yeah. I think you often still take just hoping to uh ends up similar to money. It balances out yeah. because your recube big so good. Whenever you turn around, you are gonna cancel those gammons, yeah. but like you said, still need to be aggressive as the sender for sure. That can be hard to evaluate which side of the your money reference the double is on, though. Is this mm. because it's a lot of gammons or a lot of wins? Yeah. Uh, matters a lot at those scores. Right. So, looks, looks like, like a good start. Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah, one of the points I would do. I think I'm. Yeah, making the four either way seems pretty nice. Yeah. 
And then after you make the four, it feels like six to two is always very tempting, but unstacking the mid is great. I mean, they must be both very good, very close. Hard to say. Uh, this is an interesting variant, but that is, that is out of the choices for sure. <laughs> I like plays like that, and I learn better just the, the front-loadedness of it, right? It's the real problem. Is that a two ace? Uh, three one, three it looks ace. like. Okay, so we could... I think he just goes to five and then move the... This is going to be maybe interesting cube decisions even. I think it's a little early, but humans feel high, and umar has got a advantage for sure. Um, probably, I mean, sixes feel a little duplicated and we're ready to to run so maybe you're inclined to stay there but yeah the natural thought is to get off of that advance the checker maybe escape it um spend some time looking at it and I'm, I'm not sure i think it said making 10 was the best play yeah yeah he won actually wants to have maximized the contact because you're mm -hmm. you're out both and also you're behind in the race so two four is kind of a nice example where just uh, advancing to the bar points kind of the nicest thing to do with this position since we're so out of time on the front. Um, My goodness, Sander is going to struggle a lot in this game. Uh, what is this? Uh, 11 and 5. Yeah, it seems like it makes a lot of sense. And the pressure on that single checker back with a racing lead, there's going to be some cube decisions here for sure. Uh, this is hitting it. Look at this. Has to. I wouldn't even think a second. Yeah. Wow. Okay. He's, surely you hit because if he doesn't, I feel like board. he's thinking about the score and thinking he's leading and needs to do something more conservative and doesn't realize the the gammon punishment here. Yeah, it's just uh, yeah. when he fans, you're, you're probably cashing, I guess. Are you? You um, might keep playing. I think if he fans, it's a it's a cash. I think. Tempting to play on if he fans. It's, uh, what is the market regain going to be when you have a checker all the way out there? Um, you still have a checker hanging out in the back, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Things mm -hmm. can change very, very quickly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, fixes an illegal position for him. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and both of them are all playing really great. For his double threes. Uh, uh, double four fan. Fans. We'll see if uh, you're, you're right you here. has to come. Uh, it's a small pass. pass, okay. No, it's a big or, pass. Sorry, small, small cube is what I meant, but uh, yeah. nearly too good, yeah. Yeah, it's a cash. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, blue buy is marked by quite a bit, though. I think that Sander is going to pass. I think this fits the bill of uh, inefficient by, by Dirk's book. Yeah. <laughs> Could be. I think that's probably what he's thinking about there. Is maybe you can creep to something better, but yeah. No, it's just uh, the idea of caching is just uh, uh, you cube because gammons take you to the, to winning the match, and then again gammons can can cost you losing the whole match. So you just pass that, even though you've got considerable wins. I'm surprised uh, Sanders spending time thinking about taking this. This uh, does seem like a fairly clear pass to me. He got time, I guess. Uh, yeah. I'm pretty sure he's gonna pass it. I've barely, I've barely seen Sander making mistakes on these type of cubes. I guess you can see that there's still work to do for the win. So you can kind of feel that, like the um, high 20s win chances are probably there, but, but I mean, you have to also understand the 30% the gammon you can feel too, right? When it goes right, he's going to pour a beer. Think yeah, about he's, it. Having a, he's having a He's just feeling sorry with. for himself a little bit, I think, you know, and take a sip before moving on to the next game. But you know, some I think eventually he'll, he'll pass this. But sometimes you see the opponent is in is in is on roll and he's just keep keep on rolling. It's sometimes players just to stop and even think a little bit over an obvious moves just to just to drop him off that momentum and, <laughs> and put him off a little bit. A nice mind game. But, this would be a surprising, like, playing a tournament at a 2.2 .2 or whatever, like, uh, full two days and then finding it surprising for sure. Yeah. Uh, maybe the beer can have uh, <laughs> some, trying some to find negative impact. He took it. And he takes it. Wow. Okay. My goodness. Really too good, and he wants to play it. So I think 
Just something he's missing about the score here. Yeah, um, it's been a long time player. I don't know how much he like studies these kinds of things yeah, day in match plays. So. That's gonna kill him. That's for sure. Only takes it up to a six, so he can still grind it down. Okay, it's not like so crazy bad. Uh, one three. Okay, that's a pretty um, good response. Now you have to hit, of course, because you don't have anything else. Well, yeah, I'm not certain about the 13 to 10 quiet, but there's nothing so productive. He'll get a checker free. You're outboarded, so it's scary too. Like you said, you don't want to lose a gammon for the match, but. but yeah, you see, it's like now, you, now that you've taken the cube, you may as well go and try, try, try to win. Yeah. That was, uh, I'm quite surprised Sander took that cube. Yeah. It's a beer take, the chat says. It's a beer take. Yeah. <laughs> Easy to call, see the counter. We call like these we takes beer about. takes from yeah. now on. <laughs> beer takes. Um, so he gets hit back, okay, and cleans up the plot. All uh, right, now I think Sander is thinking, why did I take that? Yeah. Um, I think I'm with Thomas Tenland in the chat that I, I think he thinks he can take deeper than for money. That's the idea. Probably just thinking about that trailing kind of thing and not aware of the gammon situation, but who knows? Yeah, it's just like a pretty, pretty comfortable ride for um, Omar to get home. I think he, he, he can't even make any, any check of error. So mm -hmm. I think yeah. that's gonna like two, two points is, is in the back. Having been points lead after after day two, getting, yeah. I mean, this game is likely a gammon win on this. Uh, Going to have the PR race after that take two, likely coasting to two more points, which should get him into the quarters. He anchored up on, on deuce. That saves a lot. Yeah, that saves, that saves so many. Wow, this is a difficult play to find. I guess the five two is just so passive uh, anyway that going with the hit. Yeah. to try to buy time yeah. it's kind of your only option um but it doesn't feel comfortable to do yeah and he's he's approaching the position right he plays the deuce he knows the deuce is there and then he's thinking about the five yeah very good play um uh good find double oh, aces okay oh and then now gotta... he's Oh, instantly whoa, whoa, whoa. up to the edge and i think i think this is going to be right because you want to hit the second checker to buy time to roll sixes probably i think here yeah. the priority is to hit the second rather than making the four yeah. and then just, just hope you roll a few sixes yeah well, i the only reason i know this now is because we just saw it on the stream recently where i would have instantly made the board point and didn't even notice that i hit on the 12. um but opponent found yeah. it i'm trying to think of uh uh, what match that was, but it was a really good one. Bought him enough time to come around and survived. Yeah. yeah. So now I think, not obviously knowing Sander, he's thinking about if he doesn't anchor a three points, am I going to ship a cube and kill his kill his uh, gammons and go for the match? Or shall I wait for a six and then ship the cube over? I'm pretty sure he's thinking about it now. Yeah, is there real market loss here, though? No, not yet, but he he's just desperate to get to that point. I think... Yeah. He, Ooh, is this the nine or the two? Right, I think... It's a lot of fly uh, shots when we make the nine, but I don't know. I guess maybe it's not that many. You have to count them, right? This is uh, four, five, yeah. four, six. Yeah, I think they're kind of well duplicated here, and it's just those big numbers. Yeah. Um, this is a blunder, though. Okay, taking away yeah. half a roll is important. I think you also don't want him to anchor up on your four point or, or mm. bar point. That's does that's it actually so uh, the bar point it keeps him from doing. That's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, he could just fail. Yeah. Yeah. Nine rolls right there. You must not the the upside just yeah. isn't there here either. This certainly looks like that you put the checkers where they belong. <laughs> Giving up the midpoint though is a big deal when you're trying to contain checkers back like this. The deuce is just still in here. Yeah. It's required here. This one is tough. I would have a hard time right here over the board, I have to say. Yeah, yeah, for sure. He's just so ugly, you know, when you when you have all these points outside and then you have a deuce point. Yeah. Interesting. It, People just... in the chat too saying like they doubt Sanders studies much match play theory. How do you play a 2.2? 
just yeah. on backgammon understanding and not match yeah. understanding. That's pretty wild. Right, he uh, ends up he ends yeah. up making them nine. Okay. So That's understandable, I guess. Very understandable. It's now look, is he going to hop out to the bar point or this is confusing. If you make the twenty two, you're voluntarily primed. You don't have a great four. I, I feel like you have to go for mobility, I guess. Um you, you so if the four yeah. comes out, the, the deuce is unclear to me. I think what he's missing is he has to play his four first mm. and then deuce will become easy. Yeah, choose which four you want, I guess, um, right? Uh, is that true, though? So after you play 22 to 18, is it clear to whether you want to play up to the 22 or the 21? I guess you'd rather not be attacked. Uh, yeah, it's a bit, you keep them a little bit further out. Feels uh, like, like there's some duplication in the 21, though, since... Uh, maybe not, though. I guess in general, he's going to hit with the six and continue. Uh, Sander's thinking about it. He's just started to think about it. Wow, and this is pretty close. The yeah. gammon killing, and he's... Uh, it's, yeah, well, that's the, the idea. Loser, though. Is it? So you get, you get sixes. That can easily be your market losers. Mm. Um, those subsequences can, can turn this round quite rapidly. The thing about sixes, though, is you still have three checkers behind a five yeah. Um that you need to deal with, and you're likely to hit on the bar point instead, right? I don't think we're using a six to escape here, so that problem's going to stay. Uh, even if we make a... But if you make a yeah. point, he finds... Sure. I think that I'll, I'll be struggling to know. That's a, that's a pass fake, but he's... Yeah. Oh, here we go. He's shipped it over. I don't blame him, to be honest. He's, yeah. He feels like this is something he can build some momentum on. Now you hit twice on this. There's oh, else. okay. Nine to seven first. Yeah. I saw 13 to seven. Um and couldn't find any playing yeah. numbers, but okay, yeah, again, I, tactically, by the time to escape. I quite like, I don't know, it's, despite the fact that it's 50 error, uh, I think if I was Sander, maybe... Yeah, very I would. I would have probably thought a bit more about it, but he certainly can't blame him for sending it over. Yeah. There's, there's so many, so many things that can go either way now. That's not one of them. Yeah. <laughs> and... Yeah, it feels pretty impossible to have that level of granularity in such a yeah. one-off situation, you know? This is pretty much... It's interesting to switch to the double hit after making them the nine, though. you like, thematically different, you know? Yeah. That's one, two. Um, oh, just coming into the seven then, right? What yeah. else? Exactly. What do we have? Oh, you can play 11 to 5 instead of stacking them up there, keep some flexibility, okay? Oh, he hops out now. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. This is the only play, even though it leaves yeah. a thousand shots. <laughs> what misses? <laughs> Some three three. Uh, that, that could be one miss. No, that hits. That hits twice. That hits twice <laughs> to prevent the back game. Or it uh, makes the ace, but I think it hits twice. Yeah. Hit twice and then the eighth and the ace. Yeah. To stop him playing back game. Just think. Um, I would have just played three and then think about the last ace, but this is obviously another way of looking at it. You play <laughs> the ace, yeah, and then you think about making the ace or sure, just hopping out. And and look at that, making the ace is really close. So I think um, at this score, I guess it makes some sense. Too. It's a little so more. <laughs> Sander is praying for the dice guts. <laughs> to, to <roll laughs> Double ace. What is this? Two three. Yes, two three. There's one. That's unfortunate. Can never make the ace now. Oh, without some help. Oh, now we get to cover. Sure. Oh, but he could hit. Okay. I think. Yeah. Um, which is I the think I would. I would certainly hit. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then think. Okay. I yeah, think, I'm pretty sure. You yeah, there's no. Hits. Well, once you hit, you do create the back game. I've seen yeah. a lot of these thematically where it's just uh, he doesn't have a foot down on the ground, so I guess you're less worried about it. Yeah, okay. Looks okay. like a pretty natural hit, and he's gonna find that too. I think actually, um, okay, probably not now, but maybe almost prefers him to. 
Sander helps him put a checker on the bar. Yeah. <laughs> nice guy. Not mm. typical tournament etiquette. Nah. <laughs> I hate it when my opponents do that. <laughs> Absolutely pisses me off. Uh, doesn't mind leaving like, the day six. My, I've earned to pick up that check here. Don't take, <laughs> don't take the pleasure of it. I've earned to pick it up myself. I <laughs> uh, asked to decide if he wants another checker back. I guess at some point when you're just playing DMP, yeah, it's just is. timing to allow your opponent to possibly hit you later in the game. So yeah. not clear, but the five deep is pretty bad too. Uh, they're pretty close though. Interesting. Yeah, no, it doesn't matter much from now on. You got yeah. three, two on the bar. He's just gonna keep on rolling. Yeah. He just has to be careful, almost with the distribution over the board. So that's a very good start. Now this could technically be the third match of the day that ends in a backgammon. Yeah. Not okay. a relevant one, perhaps. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> some of the players I was talking to, they were obviously players at this level don't mourn a loss of past luck, but I've heard quite a few bad beat stories, uh, even from grandmasters. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it happens more when you're playing grandmasters as a yeah. thing too, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I guess we're all susceptible. We're just not used to playing, <laughs> playing people that do it to us, huh? That seems reasonable. Um, sometimes actually these kind of positions suggest to clear the six earlier than you bring your checkers inside. Mm, yeah. But, uh, I have trouble finding those. Like, it looks forced. Yeah. Distribution's looking pretty good. Fading the six four right now. Yeah, barring six four. Yeah, okay, that's clear another point. Reasonable. It's going to be a long time until we have problems now, yeah. I think. I don't know, I guess. Oh, what a, what a quick... Uh, I call these quick kills. What is this? Uh, the three comes off, I think, and then we don't play checkers to the ace, so sure, we can just play five to three. That looks good. Yeah. Play the three off, then think about your foot. It's tempting to uh, not create the six five shot, but I mean, it's just a little bit worse. It's so permanent when you put the yeah. checker on the ace. Just costs you a lot in these uh, deuce point games. Okay, he knows he has to take the three off. Yeah. Yeah, this just turns that clearing um, strategy a bit of a longer pain. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But this is just, this is fine. Yeah, I never mind having the three checkers on the five in general. It's only the six five, you know. So, and this one also, like, I think double threes are a bit ugly in this way. Yeah, mm. seems fine. Threes can be okay. Yeah, but Season there we go. fours, okay. Um, one's coming off the four for sure, and then we're clearing. Yeah, I guess don't leave a gap. Yeah, DMP. Yeah. I mean, it's always tempting to just rip four. Not too far off yet. I kind of hate not peeling. I know it's right. And a lot of times yeah. I just won't do it. <laughs> <laughs> right, this. Okay, we're like... just going to roll sets home in the backgammon as promised. Yeah, like... <laughs> it's going to need an ace soon. Fantasy stuff. Oh, four is okay, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to call that a resigned backgammon, okay? Three on the day. Four matches than not. Well be. Wow. Really played well by Umur. Uh, <laughs> other two points in the race is uh, maybe his average PR in the tournament is coming down even. Um, with, with 13 matches, or sorry, nine matches already at a 2.2, I, I doubt this is going to be the end of the world for for the PR point for, for Sander. Yeah. But of course, 2.2 is going to be at the high end of his range, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think it, it, it's so natural to have these sorts of fluctuations in your yeah. performance. Yeah, um, well, short match too, of course. They, yeah. they've have... No, I don't know, I've lost... 15th <laughs> round, this one? 15th round, this 14th match. Incredible. Yeah. It does wear you out, no matter who you are. Grueling, um, yeah. It does fry your brain. Yeah, yeah. 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 
as a hard match, but <laughs> <laughs> I guess for 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 someone like Sander, he can afford to really um, give away errors like this because he's already through, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, both of these guys are already through. Uh, probably, I guess we don't know for certain till probably tomorrow morning. It takes okay. a while to, uh, to do the transcribe the matches and send them and roll them through plus plus and get them all accumulated okay. into a spreadsheet. Yeah. Um, but he was looking good after day two for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it'd be. Inter- I wish I could have heard the audio over the board of what he if he was talking at all during that take. You know, yeah. Just one blunder on the match, two sizable one, and otherwise played really clean. You know, yeah. so. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it does happen. It does happen. Yeah, of course. Um, a lot of people think if you're, uh, if you've got an average of two point five, three, three point two, or whatever, you you're immune to making a sizable blunder like three hundred or two hundred fifty. Right, right. I've seen so, including myself, so many other players make some some errors that just is either the results of fatigue. Um, you overthink a position. There's so many factors coming in play. You yeah. can't always perform. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was thinking about that. I was going to say everyone does it. And I mean, I, I'm curious, actually, what's the what's the highest PR match you can remember recently that you've had to suffer through, you know? I've, I've played um, six or seven. Yeah. Um, yeah, people think that to average, like, I mean, mostly it's true those to average in like the three range or something yeah. like that but i think it occurs yeah. still you know yeah. Yeah. um yeah. yeah you get you get easy runs not not no complex positions and uh, mm-hmm. and then uh, the range is there yeah you know i was thinking about though is there anyone that doesn't and I, i'm not sure i've ever seen mochi play a six or a seven he might be the exception no yeah he could be and and i think michi Michi the, really the gets up suspects there. Yeah. usually uh, pretty consistent. There's some people that have the consistency down yeah. for sure, but um, yeah, I see a lot more of like really deeply understanding the game and having high like possibility of playing under a two, right? Yeah. But occasionally you just get off a little bit, and I think that comes with the territory. But all right, well, this there has been go. super fun, RF. We're gonna oh, I think stream ended already. Maybe they should stop. Yeah. Good night, everybody. Be back tomorrow morning at eleven. Bye bye. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Thanks, man. The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app is coming soon. Star membership, high analysis, blunder database, private games, coin games, rating games, and much, much more.
The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app is coming soon. Star membership, high analysis, blunder database, private games, coin games, rating games, and much, much more. The Backgammon Galaxy mobile app is coming soon. Star membership, high analysis, blunder database, private games, coin games, rating games, and much, much more.